He's in, stops on backhand, and he scores! Uh, I was screaming when I scored the goal. The game winning goal! How are you feeling? I'm ecstatic. Go ahead. 
Hello and welcome to day two of the group stage for the 2023 IIHF E World Championship presented by our amazing sponsors in Skoda and Strauss. We had amazing action in Group C and D yesterday, and we have doozies of games here for Group A and Group B. Latvia and Finland, the semifinal rematch from 2022 later on today. And lastly, for our featured matchup, U.S. versus Canada, the stellar a group B matchup that everyone has had circled in on the calendar and we have it for you right here at twitch.tv slash IIHF hockey. We will also have coverage on YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook for our featured matchups later. Happy to be here. Thank you to everyone joining us. Myself, Brandon Bigsby, my amazing partner and Nick DeMeo and Nick, we had absolutely amazing this yesterday. If today is anything close to that, boy, oh boy, this is going to be a fun one. It is this is it is if the shadows have parted. The skies have opened up. It is less cloudy outside. And there is only one reason I can think of that that is the case. It is because, well, it may be February and the groundhog may not have seen his shadow. What is true is that there is no casted shadow on this momentous occasion. That is the IIHF E-World Championship. And I will tell you what, if anything was an indicator of yesterday's performance Wait till you see what we have in store today. Lots of teams have already qualified to the playoff phase three round. We have more to come today. Four more teams are going to punch their ticket. And man, I am more than excited to see what's going to happen. Oh, man, I am absolutely pumped. You mentioned that a few teams, four teams exactly, clinched their place last year. And interestingly enough, all four of those teams, teams that were in the playoffs last season. So a lot of action from Group C and D. We'll start out with Group C. And that was where we opened our coverage yesterday. And man, oh, man, Nick, it was absolutely amazing. We saw that Czechia had that number one spot. But it was the battle from two all the way down to four. Germany having to play both Slovakia and Poland to end their group stage. They sweep it, win all four, and push their way in through the playoffs. Yeah, it was kind of nutty to watch their uh, epic performance. They only took one loss. They played out of their minds, 47 goals, four versus 18 against. They made a name for themselves even last year, but this year, man, they really punched their ticket, made an emphatic statement, and made two, three, and four seeds really fight it out up until the last possible second. We saw those heroics on air yesterday with what could have gone down, what did go down, and ultimately Germany making their way as the number two seed. Yeah, and, you know, we kind of talked about how deep this group was, and it proved to be exactly that. Slovakia with a chance to maybe get in from that three-spot team that was maybe slept on a little bit. Poland looked good early on, and it's funny, you talk about Slovakia, they had more goals scored, 10 more than Germany, just one less allowed, not able to get into the show. So it just goes to show you how good that Group C was, really from top to bottom. Yeah, Group C was really good, a, a great performance by everybody. And again, you had to qualify to get here. So that's like... Something we really overlook when we get into phase two. We don't really televise phase one. I know Finland did a couple of things, but uh, this is where everybody gets to see everything. But there's a lot that happened under the surface to get these teams to this stage. And they really proved why they were here. Rude why they were here, and they have to do that. We'll talk about that a little bit more as the broadcast goes on. But we did just have exciting action in the table for Group C, but we did in Group D as well as we transition over to the results in Group D. Sweden, for the second straight year, win their group. Might actually be the third straight year they've won their group. Gets it over Switzerland, who had nine points, and it was really that two versus four battle yet again that made the difference. And Nick, we saw in live time how the Swiss got themselves into the playoffs in really just about a five minutes span alone yeah we really did and it was a lot of back and forth high octane action it was fun to watch switzerland not necessarily make their own destiny they had to win their games but a lot had to happen between that last match between norway and france that ultimately decided switzerland's fate which was that number two spot i think everybody kind of knew sweden was going to be in there some way but ekins dropped four three in that game versus tron did open up the question mark. And I think those are the kinks you have to work out when you get this far into the playoffs. And I think for here, Sweden's got some things to clean up. Switzerland is feeling pretty good. I, I, I'm confident that they're going to ride into next week looking strong, feeling okay, and might surprise a few people once they get up. 
Yeah, I, I'd have to agree with you. And, you know, you kind of talked about that one game that Ekin dropped. You have to remember, it was 4-1 to one at the last minute. He put two goals in in the last few seconds of that game to make it 4-3. to three. But I think Tron, I don't know if we're talking about him enough, really, in this, because he had to win that game. Didn't necessarily know the situation completely, but had to win that game to get in. And for Norway, a chance maybe get in. Razor play, spoiler a little bit for France. And just the way that that all transpired, I think, like you mentioned, everyone had a feeling that Sweden was going to be in, but it was really Switzerland all the way down to France to where it was like, who is going to be able to squeak in and get that number two spot? And it really came down to those head-to-head -head matchups. It did, and that's what we talked about. The, the goals for matter if the question mark is on the table, and not everybody can remove that question mark. Not everybody has the ability to say, okay, it doesn't matter for us. It probably does. You probably need to score just in case it opens the door. And we saw it almost come down to it yesterday, but hey, that was yesterday, Brandon. We have to turn our attention to today. And boy, oh boy. I mean, Tim the Tapman would have said it. We have some bangers for you all today. Banger after banger after banger and the IIHF E-World Championship does it better than anyone else. You get a look at Group A, Finland, Latvia, Denmark, Italy, and Ukraine. Each group from this point forward has five teams in it. Finland more than likely the favorite, but a few teams like Latvia and Denmark that know they can make a mark in their sim. Yeah, they really do. This is an interesting group because there are three top competitors now in this group. Obviously, you have your odds on favorite. <coughs> you have the spoiler in Latvia, but then you have the sleeper dark horse, I'd, I'd say, in Denmark. And then you got Italy and Ukraine, who we saw Ukraine last year make a little bit of a mark, put an impact on their performance. They represented their country well. So this is a handful to contend with if you're anybody, especially if you're Finland looking to lock in that top seat. And Italy especially interesting because they did not have a team in 2022 returning for the tournament this year. We turn over to Group B to get a look at the standings there, the teams that are marked in the Group B. And this could arguably be the most stacked group of them all. U.S., Canada, Great Britain, Austria, and Hungary. And Nick, everyone obviously the attention going to those top two teams on the board, the U.S. and Canada, matching up in the same group together. Yeah, the rivalry upset from last year with Latvia versus Finland is on the table for something later on. But after that, the featured matchup, U.S. versus Canada, they are getting this one done early, my friend. They are here in the group stage to get in, will it be U.S. and Canada? Will Great Britain upset one of those seeds? Will Austria-Hungary sneak their way through? A lot to tell here in just a few short moments. But nevertheless, uh, we, we've got the action. We're going to bring it to you right here in, in a few short seconds even. In a few short sec seconds, and you know, you talked about the U.S. and Canada. How about Austria and Great Britain both being in that group? Remember, both of them just barely missed the playoffs last season. Austria barely missed it in Group D by six points. They were right behind Sweden and Czechia. Well, for Great Britain, missed it by just six points behind Canada and Latvia. So both of those teams were in really tight groups last year, just around the outside looking in by a little bit. It's going to be a another really tough road for them. Could maybe one of them spoil it. We're going to have to find out out but it's group a that's going to get the attention first we start out with the man himself one of the legends in the eu and the nhl community Eki, going up against hannes stole for italy as Eki moving into the offensive zone and nick we talk about Eki, one of the more illustrious players that you will find on any continent in any place in the world he is back looking to get the three-peat here in this iihfe world championship he really is so ecky has got a lot to prove a lot on the table and I think he's going to start putting action into play as soon as possible. We saw that with Ekin uh, last night. But we'll see it again today, I'm sure, with Eki as well. We will. Ezeki was on Team Finland in both 2020 and 2022. Finland has won both of the two events. And Eki being on the team with two different teammates as a third different teammate this year with Jesse L. We'll talk about and see here a little bit later on. But Hannes Stoll tried to maybe play a little bit of spoiler, moving it into the offensive zone. Didn't have a lot of space, and he'll circle all the way back. And we talked about Italy a little bit, Nick. Didn't have a team last year. A pretty interesting story with different countries participating that we didn't get to see last year. But they're a team that can shake things up a little bit in that group as it's pretty wide open really after that first spot. It is, and I think that's what's going to make this group specifically interesting in Group A. Anybody can get in, and two are going to get in, so you have to see what's going to happen there. 
Yeah, you look at Hostel, he's a newcomer to this, but did play a little bit of the ECL Pro on the Sixes side back in 2017. Started playing in NHL 12, also plays for HC Pustodol. So he's a guy that definitely has the experience, has some hockey IQ to him, trying to prove that against arguably the best in the world in Eki. And he's given a good spice here so far. So maybe making a little bit of a statement on the Italians here early on. Eki moving it into the offensive zone, gets it all the way up to Sillinger, past the blue line, gives it back to Mercer, passes across. Oh, what a break up there by Hanestol. There was a wide open net. But the pass break up there on the poke check took it away. It's a shot on right after for Hanestol. Saved by Dreiger for Eki. Really back and forth so far. I'm not sure if anyone necessarily had this penciled in on their bingo cards. But Hanestol keep it up with Eki. A really even back and forth game. It's Eki trying to change that right now. Moving it up the ice. Takes it up the left boards. Between the legs moves, just trying to find some space. Eki so good at being able to just slow the game down and just cycle that puck around and get you out of position. But Hanna Stoll doing a brilliant job on the defensive end, but a turnover on his own end. Gives Eki another possession. Holds it, gets it to Wall, puts the shot on, blocked to the side of the net. But Eki still holding on to that possession. Holding it behind the net, wasn't able to find anything. Six minutes to go here in the opening period. This is... Finland versus Italy on the side of Xbox for Group A. Eki moving into the offensive zone, gets the pass to Comtois, and he scores. Eki gets the scoring start. It may have taken a while, but you know, after a while, he's going to break it open. Yeah, with Jesse L up 2-0 over Luki in his teammates' matchup between Finland and Italy on the PlayStation side. Good to see Eki. Kind of getting the thing started. Took him a little bit to get going, but those wheels will turn up here for Eki shortly. Yeah, Eki's one of those guys is that even though he may not score for some time, you know what's going to happen at one point or another. Almost got a second one right there as he's back into the offensive zone and operating the offense. As it was Severson who moves up from the right point. Eki just trying to get that shot on. Does so there. Saved by Dreiger for a stole. Zeki's still just holding on to possession. One of the best possession players you'll find. Had a good chance there. Wasn't able to get it home, but he still holds on. Barzal has it. Pass across to Dubois. Little backhand saved by Dragger. 2.13 to go here in the first period of this one. And Zeki up one to nothing, looking to extend that lead. Aggressive zone face off here for Eki at the right side. Doesn't win it. And Honestol tried to get it out. His goalie actually got a piece of that. There's a battle for it, and Eki's going to come up with it. Eki holds it to the right corner boards. Looking around for a pass. Finds Lowry over in the slot. Tried to skate in. Didn't have anything, but it passes out to Severson. Now it's back to Lowry skating around. Eki just trying to find something, cycling it around, looking for an option. Gives it over back to the right point. That's Severson who has it. Gives it back to the left point now. Thought about the shot, passes it over, four seconds to go. Got to get something off, three seconds now. Pass, no good, turned over, and that will do it. And one nothing lead for Finland on the Xbox side. Eki getting the opening goal, but the Italian, on a stole, playing well here, keeping up one of the best in the world early on. Yeah, we'll switch it over to the Jesse Ellen Luki feed. You can see 3 nothing there on the PlayStation side of this Finland-Italy matchup. Jesse well in control into the first period. As we haven't talked too much about Jesse L. We pull him up on our sheets here and we see that, you know, this could be his chance. He beat Artuzio, who was a two-time Finnish champion, one-time European champion, in that PS4 qualifier. He said it's an honor to represent Finland on the PlayStation side, and we'll see that happen here. Obviously, honorable indeed, as he's up 3-0 here with another chance to pour that on. Yeah, Jesse, he's a guy that I'm familiar with from the Sixes side of things. But let me tell you, I think that this is a guy that could really break through in this tournament. In my opinion, one of the hidden gems of the EU community in terms of his play. I think he's a guy with a lot of skill. He's a smart player. And he went up and beat a guy in Artusio who, like you mentioned, two-time Finnish champion, one-time European champion to get to this point. So for him to be able to go on that big stage, beat one of the best, not just in Finland, but in all of Europe and Artusio, that's extremely impressive. And I think that Jesse's a guy that maybe not everyone is familiar with in terms of keeping up and knowing every single player in the community. But I think there's going to be a lot of guys that did not know him before this tournament started. They're going to be plenty familiar with his name at the end of it. 
As we move it back over to the Eki and Hannes matchup as that last game went to the end of the period. As we mentioned, Jesse up currently one, or excuse me, three to nothing in that game while Eki holding on to that one to nothing lead early. He has possession of the puck right now, trying to extend that. Hannes Stoll keeping himself in this game here as we inch towards the halfway point. Eki trying to cycle it around, couldn't get that pass over to Batherson and Almost turned over again, but he gets it back after Honest Stoll couldn't get it past the neutral zone. Eki with it now. Pass across God to Batherson, but a nice pick off there from Honest Stoll using Barzil to get to that. Honest Stoll just trying to find some offense, and he turned it over. Eki was all the way back in his own zone. And now he's going to hold possession, so the pass goes awry. Eki had a man in position to get it. He took advantage. Holding it with Barzil at the left side, looking for something. Doesn't have anything so far, just work its way around. It goes down low. Gives it back to Barzil after Anderson has it. Holds it near the high slot. Gives it up to the point to Graves. Shot on, blocked in front. And Hanna Stoll will keep it. Something that Hanna Stoll is in a good job. Really denying that space for Eki down in the slot. Not really giving him a lot of room for those signature passing plays that he loves to set up. Yeah, the defense going really well for Hanna Stoll right now. And that's something that Eki likes to pick apart. He's really methodical, but Hanna Stoll's just not giving it to him right now. Defense wins championships. Could defense maybe win a game here for Hanna Stoll? Needs to get on the board down one to nothing. But in his own end, he has been plenty solid so far. As another great defensive play. Eki trying to drive in, but just did not have the space. And I think that's really def becoming the story here of this game. The defense of Hanna Stoll kind of stalling Eki out a little bit. As a shot on, big save there. Blocker side for Dreiger. Maybe trying to tie this up here. Hanna Stoll is. Holding it in the offensive zone, goes over to the right corner board, couldn't get that pass across to the point as Anderson picked that off for Eki, and here he goes down the left side with Cousins. Back to Anderson, holds, gets the shot on, and he scores. That is Eki once again, and he's a guy to where he has that transition opportunity. He is so, so dangerous, a prime example of it on that play. There's the Eki that we know to see, the patience there, and that's something that's remarkable about him. Nothing phases him, even when he goes down, loses a game, loses a series. He's patient. He doesn't rush it. He plays his game knowing that eventually it'll open up and it'll work for him. Trying to maybe get a third goal with Zeki here, holding it at the right point, moves in, gives it back. Has Mercer to roll to Wah. Wah holding it, trying to get something. Eki goes behind the net, still has it with Wah. Doesn't have the space, and once again, Hannes Stoll just doing a good job defensively. Eki using that little bit of room to get a dangerous chance. Still has possession, Sillinger pass across, picked off by Hannes Stoll. Four minutes to play, two to nothing, your score. Here between Finland and Italy on the Xbox side of things. We will also have the matchup with Denmark here momentarily. Give them a look. The semifinalists from last year, shocking the world, beating Sweden in that quarterfinal. So we'll see our first of the Latvians here in just a few minutes, but right now, Eki trying to increase his lead over Hannes Stoll. Looking for it. Ashabat, the left point, moves inside to the corner. Looking for space, doesn't have it, circles back around. And Eki with that patience that you mentioned. Has one minute left here in the second period. Eki has it, skates in, couldn't get the shot off. May have had the open net, but he does get the puck back. Has it again. Puck, puck, puck battle in front, 10 seconds left, and Hannes Stoll will come out with it, trying to get a score here before the period ends. Trying to move his way around, Comtois could not do it. Eki holds it, two seconds to go, rushes his way in. Quick shot on from Johnson, not in time, was saved by Dragger anyways, as Eki up two to nothing after two periods for Team Finland, and it looks like we're going to go ahead and transition over to that Latvia matchup, as we mentioned, so two to nothing here. Eki versus Hannes Stoll, the Xbox side between Finland and Italy. You can see the stats there. Eki dominating the time on attack, but the opportunity is just not there so far with the defense that Hannes Stoll has been playing in his own end. Yep, and scores around the league right now. We talk about the tournament six nothing for Jesse L in his matchup with, against Italy is Luki. Two to two in Raw versus Pro Am in the Denmark Latvia matchup on the Xbox side, but here it is. Chibra versus Burka. Latvia versus Denmark happening on the PlayStation side right now. Third period. This is where the action's going to be right now. That's where the action's going to be. That's where it is. And it's Denmark's Birkadal that is up one to nothing over Chibra. Looking to steal three points here potentially is looking at the side 
of Chibra wearing the away kits of Canada going north on your screen. Burke it all in the signature red home kits moving downward. Chibra holding and trying to get the tying mark. Has it behind the net looking for options trying to get something just does not have the space and it's been a common theme here in the two games that we have seen just trying to shut down that slot as Chibra gets a little chance there a little backhand but saved by Thompson the net as another chance Bathurst is a shot save Dubois gets it back pass across another save by Thompson that time was Barzal Chibra getting chances but just not able to break the goaltending stellar goaltending right there the opportunities of plenty and Chibra just getting denied right now Burke all trying to hold on to this lead. Can he? Chibra has it in the offensive zone again. Has it with Mercer. And he's hit from behind. Nice defense there from Burke at all. Buck puck battle for it, and Chibra wins it. Holds it still. Trying to deflect himself away from the pressure. Does not, but gets it back over to Lowry still. Now back to Mercer at the left corner. Holds it. Pass back. Looking. Goes behind the net. Tries to get a wrap around. Doesn't connect. Now Barzel has it. Gives it to Mercer behind the net. Shot on, he scores. Chief wow. retires it. He had the pressure for a while. You were just wondering if it was going to finally break open, and it did. We are tied at one now. How many times did we talk about it yesterday? If you pressure, you pressure, you pressure. Eventually, that will open up and favor you. We saw that here. Behind the net, wrap around, put it in front, cross the ice. It gets in. It's 1-1 here, which is good because in the other matchup on the Xbox side, Brandon... Rouse is down against uh, Denmark's Pro-Am. 4-2 right now at the end of the second. Yeah, Pro-Am, another player that might be a little bit slept on in this tournament. We'll talk about him a little bit more later. We have big action here on the PlayStation side of this Latvia and Denmark matchup. Chibra getting the tying goal, looking to take the leading goal here as he's in the offensive zone. Mercer holds it, doesn't have anything. Nice defense there from Birkenau to get that out. And if you're Birkenau, you're trying to just kind of get a little bit of momentum. In this third period, it has been all Chibra so far in the offensive attack. Trying to move it in now as Birkenau does so down the left boards, right side of our screen. Birkenau holds it, looking, trying to find something over at the point. Goes down low instead, and he finds his man down low. Birkenau shot, could not get it off, but he still has it behind the net. Looking for something, holding. Looking, trying to get a pass option, doesn't have it. Cheaper trying to get it out of the defensive zone, and he will momentarily, and hasn't broken the blue line yet, but finally does after the four check breaks down from Burkadol. Cheaper moves it up, looks, has it up right boards, trying to pass it back. Nice pick off there from Ber from Burkadol. Cheaper finds a way to get it back. Holds it the left corner board, looking, spin move, finding some space, going behind the net. Looking, holds backhand, trying to find that pass still. Nothing there still so far. Battle for it to left boards. Cheever comes out with it, pins himself to boards. Pass Johnson to the slot. Passed it over left side, but picked off by Berkadol. Less than five minutes remaining. We're still tied at one and a third. Berkadol in the offensive zone has come to a shot across. Pass, he scores! That's Dawson Mercer for Berkadol. Retakes his lead, makes the defense, takes it to the offense, and takes advantage Berkadol gets his lead back less than four minutes remaining in the third period. Denmark making a mark here in the third period and a, a, a very statement goal there, picking up the rebound right there in the slot area. He drives it home as they're making adjustments on that side. Uh, we could probably jump over to the... Oh, no, it's 5-2 on the Xbox side. Pro-Am well in lead now, 15 to play against Rouse in, uh, in that game between Latvia and Denmark on the Xbox side. On the PlayStation side, Brandon, 8-0 for Jesse over Luki and 3-0 Eki over Hannes, middle of the third period. So some updates over on that side, but we have just as much action happening here as it looks like after the goal, Birkenau going to get another chance after Cheever takes a penalty, a power play for Birkenau, and a big chance here. For the man from Denmark on the PlayStation side. Talked about Denmark just lost out on the playoffs last year. It was a last minute goal from Germany that got them in. They had the same points, but it was because of the direct competition in the matchup with Germany that they got in over Denmark. Trying to rectify that here and get in. And a tough group is a chance there from Cheaper on the penalty kill. Save from Burkadal. He's going to hold on. A little bit of a power kill 
from Chiba here in the first minute. I'm going to attack on your screen. Chiba with nearly 15 minutes. Berkadol with a little bit under 10 minutes. Face off one by Berkadol in the defensive zone. He'll take this up. And it's interesting, if you're Berkadol, you can't really afford to just lay off and play it defensively with the one goal lead. Every goal matters in this competition. There is that goal differential goals for goals against head to head that does matter for tiebreakers so want to try to get that advantage as much as you can two to one lead for him right now and 15 seconds on the power play cheaper has it moves up the right boards passes over to come takes it in shot on save rebound pops out but nobody home for it as we have one minute to play in the third period cheaper down by one but moving the puck in the offensive zone trying to find the tying answer has it, moves in, goes behind the net, holds, looks, trying to find that pass across, couldn't get it there as it was a nice pick off there from Bergadol who has some skaters with him to move. Dubois has it over at the left side, right side of our screen. Goes behind the net, 40 seconds left. Bergadol holding, pressure, goes around, couldn't get anything, and here comes Chibra after the turnover. Speeds his way past with Barzal, has a chance, poked away from Bergadol, a big time play. 25 seconds to go, still a one goal lead for Bergadol. Can he hold on for Denmark? Severson gives it over to Dubois. Dubois pumps it off the board to get that space and goes behind the net. Holds it, trying to find something. 13 seconds, now 12. Berkadol turns it over. Chibra has it. Maybe one more chance for the Latvian. Can he get the tying goal? Five seconds now. Has to move past the blue line. Three seconds. Shabbat gets a pass. Moves it back. And that's going to do it. Berkadol defeats Chibra 2-1. to one. The goal with 417 in the third. Pushes him through to a victory. A big time win for Denmark. And Latvia down a little bit early in the standings. Down early in the standings, but still a lot of games to play. They've got a series of matchups as they're going to play everybody else in their group. But you're right. A good performance by Berkadal to start things off here as we look at a couple of replays. We'll give you some score lines around the league. 10-0, Jesse L over Lukey. Eki won his game. And in that Pro-Am versus Rouse game, it is now 6-3, but time is winding down. Time is winding down as, you know, it's it's fun with this tournament because you never really know when that time hits. And it feels like the time kind of hits immediately, but every point does matter. But that pressure time, you never really know when all of a sudden you go from, hey, we've got some games left to, oh, if we lose, we're done in this next matchup. So it's just how quickly things shift and change. And you kind of get the feeling that Latvia and Denmark they're two of those teams that are going to be vying for those last playoff spots. And you kind of wonder how maybe this matchup with Denmark getting those points, how big does that affect things down the line? I know it's the first matchup, but those are the matchups that a lot of times we see come back to make a difference later on. Yeah, and uh, speaking of those matchups, Denmark versus Finland coming your way in just a little bit. Italy versus Ukraine. We'll see Ukraine for the first time today in this year's competition, Phase 2, the Group stage, Nick DeMeo, Brandon Bigsby alongside with you. I want to thank our presenting sponsors in Skoda and Strauss for all they do to make this tournament happen. We're glad to be here and nice to have you there from all across the entire globe for this competition. So we'll see more. Don't forget our featured matchup of Group A, Finland versus Latvia coming up in about uh, 45 minutes from now, give or take. But nevertheless, we have plenty of action coming up for you here shortly. Do not go away. You're not going to want to miss out. You're watching the 2023 IIHF E-World Championship presented to you by Skoda and Strauss. We'll be right back.
Thank you for sticking with us. We are back. The 2023 IIHF E World Championship presented by our amazing sponsors in Skoda and Strauss. And a big shout out as well to our amazing friends in Bloody LP and Sports Gamer GG. They have the German and Finnish sides of their cast. And Nick, that was something that was so unique about this tournament last year. We got to talk to Bloody after their amazing win, Germany getting into the playoffs. Sweden, or excuse me, Finland doing a great job on the Sports Gamer side of things last year as well. So, so cool to see that element back in this year yeah it is and i know he's on cloud nine for germany getting in yet again we have action taking place right now in one of our featured matchups but real quick here's your standings your standings finland at that number one spot how about this nick 15 goals for none allowed and denmark making their mark early both players winning for them six points for them eight goals for four again so right now finland and denmark in the early going locking in that spot ukraine yet to play their action is about to pick up in a matter of moments latvia and italy both dropping their game so they have a little bit of work to do but right now finland and denmark in a great position we'll see if ukraine can match them and if latvia and italy can get themselves back in the conversation and speaking of finland and denmark the two teams that won nick they're picking up action right now proam and eki those are two familiar your names facing off against one another the number one seed trying to baby be the side of here right here in this game pro-am trying to continue what he accomplished here in his previous matchup now on the xbox side eki and pro-am denmark and finland your featured matchup obviously finland versus latvia coming up a little bit later we'll watch the italy versus ukraine coverage in just a moment as well and we'll keep you abreast of everything going on the uh ukraine Italy match on Xbox just started, and the PlayStation side for both of these matchups are still in their loading screens. So, we'll bring you Eki and Pro-Am right now. We're going to be watching Eki going north on your screen. Everybody's playing as Canada. And uh, maybe at the stoppage, Brandon, we could talk a little bit about why that is in this group stage. But right now, the skill stick skill of Eki at work here as that pass as Broadcaster's Curse finally affects us. It only took five hours, but we're finally there as that one was interrupted. But here's a chance there. That one's shut down. Puck will trickle back to the goalkeeper, picked up now by Pro-Am. <clears throat> All four games have now started. We'll give you action as that goes on. Looking to feed that pass through. He does. That one worked around, shot there, blocked. Left side boards. It's from the corner, picked out. Pro-Am will continue on through center. Defense goes for the line change. Puck stripped from him. He'll still recover it from behind the net now. Behind the net play, kind of the meta in NHL 23. We'll keep an eye on how that shakes out as well with some of these veterans versus newcomer storylines that we talked about yesterday. Some of that will continue on today as well. Loose puck in the middle. That slot area dangerous if it falls to a stick of an offensive player. So Eki will make quick work of that halfway through the first frame of this one match contest between these two countries on each side Xbox and PlayStation in this group stage. Like he's got it now. Back on his stick in the offensive end, looking to get a scoring opportunity. He had one a little bit ago, but it didn't result in much generated offense. He'll look to make an improve on that here in this go. Circling around with it, that pass will fall away from a would-be intended recipient. Come all the way back outside to his defensive end. They'll start again. Seven left here in the first period. Back through. Looking to dangle his way through two defenders from Denmark. That'll be stopped short. And they'll reset for Denmark. Pro-Am. Puck on his stick. Couple of quick passes. Gets wrecked there. Luckily, is able to hold on to that and start his offensive breakout successfully. But not before it crosses the blue line and goes offside. Yeah, and a very back and forth between Denmark and Finland. And Nick, you mentioned something there about why both teams are using Team Canada. And to explain it in short, it's all about competitive balance. If both sides were forced to use the teams of their home country, it would kind of force that balance to go out of the window, right? With the overalls being the way they are in the game, if let's say Team Canada was playing against Team Austria, it would be about an 85, 86 overall team compared to about a 61 overall team. And we want to see the best players play skill versus skill, knowledge versus knowledge. We don't want the overalls to be overly impacted. So both teams using Team Canada to assure that balance as Eki says the overalls don't matter for him. He gets the opening goal against Pro-Am, puts it in on that pass across. Two opening goals now, one for Finland Xbox, one for Finland PlayStation. It's one nothing for both of them right now as Eki gets his first marker of game number two for him. 
That was a good start to this game. As we'll see how Pro-Am can respond. And you're right, that competitive balance really makes it uh, not only that little bit of home ice or familiarity with console, but really your skill. Really your ability to manage the game. Really your ability to get those line changes, the strategies, all the meta about the game, not the team. And we hope that we see an esports mode soon from NHL 23. Maybe we'll get team balances and maybe some equality there as well so we can get team countries represented on the ice. But that's okay right now. Finland and Denmark are represented as the players on the ice are in Pro-Am. Here comes yeah, Pro-Am. Good. Something to keep in mind as well. Remember, with the playoffs, it's not going to be that all team can the matchup. There is that strategy that plays in. You can only use a team one time. Once you use that team in that round, you cannot use them again for the remainder of the tournament. So it's not going to be this way the entire time in terms of Team Canada versus Team Canada. But a little bit of that strategy in the playoff rounds have to decide what teams are going to use when. Do you save Canada for the final? Do you go ahead and use them if you have a tougher matchup at the beginning? We saw that play out in the Sweden Latvia matchup last year. Not really developed into a story so just something to kind of keep in mind in the back of your mind here as we transition to the next week we got Luki and Tom Riddle on the PlayStation side of this matchup between Italy and Ukraine Ukraine representing again this year as you would say Brandon we love to see that we do love to see that as Italy and Ukraine trying to get themselves in the playoffs. Italy did not participate in the tournament last year. As I mentioned earlier, while for Ukraine did participate, represented their country rather well, missed out on the playoffs, but looking to write that this time around as down one to nothing right now is Tom Riddle against Luki, but here comes Tom Riddle moving it down the ice. He's moving downward on her screen. Luki moving upward as a shot on, saved by Thompson. In favor of another save at the buzzer went off the glove and it was a dangerous chance but we're going to switch over to the xbox side of this matchup hottest stole versus ukraine hc keg and this is a big matchup as well ukraine yet to play yet italy dropping those first two games could very well decide whether or not one team stays in that playoff conversation because like you said nick time runs in very quickly here in this type of format yeah time runs down you have to get in goals early and as we talked about yesterday you have to get goals i mean if you don't, you run the risk of that question mark. And I don't think any team wants a question mark, especially if you're Denmark or you're Latvia. Those are probably your number two favorites for that second seed. So you got to get goals now, and that's going to be the key. For Italy and Ukraine, hey, you're representing your country here. You want to make your team proud. We're on the world stage as Luki on the other side just got his second goal against Tom Riddle. So Italy up 2 nothing on the PlayStation side. Here's your Xbox speed, though, with Hannes Stoll. And Ukraine, heck, heck, are we going with heck? HDK, we have to get a little bit of clearance on that. I'm not <laughs> sure which, but nevertheless, representing his country both in play and in name, as it looks like we're going to get a penalty here, and that is going to go against Ukraine. So a little four on four action, not something we see too often this tournament, but opens up the ice, especially with it being international ice rather than the regulated Major league ice or minor league ice. Maybe a little bit more space for these two players to operate. So here comes Ukraine. Running it up the ice. Trying to get something. He stops at the point. Circles around. Works his way through the slot. Gets a pass over. Backhand. Another chance after the original shot. Two big saves for Hannes Stoll. As now he'll be on the power play after his penalty expires. He has about 15 seconds. Gets in the offensive zone. Buck loose in front. And Ukraine will pick it up and dump that around. But it's caught by Bathurst. And he's going to have some space to operate. Looking, drives in. Nice poke check there from Hannes Stoll, but a potentially dangerous chance. And now another transition opportunity for Hannes Stoll this time. Spins his way, looking shot on, saved by Thompson. A near pretty move from the Italian. Here comes Ukraine, moving it up the ice. Another chance. Oh, he missed it. It was a wide open dead. I think it might have been blocked in front and gone wide. The near game opening goal inches from going in. Still pushing the issue as Ukraine couldn't find the space. And now Hannes Stoll looking to try to get something. I know that there was a massive sigh of relief all the way from Italy. I don't know if you heard a slight brisk of wind over in Florida, <laughs> Nick, but I think that might have been what it was. Yeah, I think the Chianti uh, chilled a little bit there as they were enjoying their afternoon 
uh, uh, cappuccinos or light libations, if you will. But things got a little bit brisk for just a moment. I felt it. Oh, and a chance to the score! Hannah stole on the rebound. That's Kent Johnson in front. Takes the lead and breaks things open. It was back and forth action. You just got the feeling someone was going to get the opening mark. And it's Hannah stole for Italy that gets it on that play. Hannah stole for Italy, and it's 2-1 between Luki and Tom Riddle midway through the game there, too. So they're at the same part of their games, respectively, and they're both in the lead. And it's big for Italy because, remember, they played two games already and lost. Ukraine just opening up. So Ukraine, they have more chances to get points. Italy cannot afford to drop too many here. If they do, they'll find rather behind the eight ball. And that's the last thing you want is round robin. This Ukraine gets the goal. That's Pierre-Luc Dubois on the one-timer play. And we're tied at one. And that's controlled by Andre Derun. That's Ukraine hack, the newcomer in the IIHF E-World Championship tournaments. Playing NHL since 04. His favorite player, Mario Lemieux. Lemieux-esque there, I'd say, Brandon, to tie this game up in the second period. Oh, I'd have to agree with you. Both players for Ukraine this year, new to the tournament. It was their first tournament in this IIHF E-World Championship last year. Looking to make a bigger impact here this time around. Maybe squeak their way into the playoffs. Says, here goes on a stole. Chance has numbers. Nice play there from Ukraine Hick. So he'll try to move it up in the offensive zone. Doesn't have anything. And nice job, Ron. So this has been one of the more back and forth games we've seen so far in the early going. Chance for stall pass across, but it's deflected in front. How to open that if the pass connected. Still has possession, however. Sonestall, nice play there from the point. Saved by Thompson, but he still has possession. Circling it around. Looking for options. Doesn't have anything yet. Is trying to find some space for a pass, and he does so with Holden. Moves it over to the left side. Circles around again, passing the right point, blocked in front there by Ukraine Heck. And here he goes on the offensive end. It's a two-on-one defense, has the favorable numbers, and he did not get any pass off there. That was a great job on the transition defense from Anastol. So Ukraine Heck has it, 30 seconds to play in the second period, tied at one between these two players on the Xbox side. As you agree, <laughs> what a chance on the backhand goes wide. One second left, has to get a shot. Will not as he at the wraparound. But to no avail, we're tied at one. Hanna stole at Ukraine Heck. And we said it was back and forth. We said it was been an even game all game long. The stats have lived up to that exact ability. And as we say that, the break open tie to get the go ahead goal again for Luki on the PlayStation side. The game was tied while we were covering the other uh, matchup there on the Xbox side. And then Luki gets the goal right there as I was switching, Brandon. And that's going to be uh, an early limelight uh, display of the theatrics there, I think, if you're Luki. He knew it was coming. He made it happen. He knew it was going, and he said, cue the celebration. And that's exactly what happened right there on that goal. Luki, another one of those youth newcomers of Italy not playing in the last tournament. Been playing since NHL 08, so he's been around the game for a little bit, trying to make his name known on this competitive scene. Tom Riddle has in the office of zone as time will expire. So three to two here in favor of Italy, tied at one over on the Xbox side of things between Ukraine Heck and Hannah Stone. Yep, and we'll give you some scoreline updates here. Eki over Pro Am, two nothing early in the third period. Jesse over Burkadal. Midway through the second, three to one, Jesse's winning. And like we said, in that Xbox matchup, we're tied in the third period. We'll keep an eye on that, but we'll keep the action right here as Luki's up three to two against Tom Riddle. And we're watching Luki move the puck forward right now as he's got it on his stick once more in the offensive end. I like this wide angle view. It makes me feel yeah. like we're watching a more traditional style broadcast. And as soon as I can get NHL spectator mode to show up in 23, I promise you, we will go back to that left and right, which makes my brain feel a lot better. This up and down makes my head hurt sometimes. But nevertheless, it didn't make Luki's head hurt as a good save there. He'll get the puck back on his stick through center ice. Now up the right side, and he's offside just barely. 16 on both ends of the colon in the third period. 
Yeah, and you kind of feel like Luki trying to get that second goal. He knows that one goal lead is not comfortable whatsoever. He is really trying to push the issue. Almost a sense of urgency somewhat, knowing that he needs to get that next goal to give himself a little bit of separation. Tom Riddle is showing that he has that ability to come back the way he did earlier. Has to try to get the second one to open it up for himself. Luki charging along now up the right side boards. He'll L skate, stop at that red line at the goal line area. He'll try a second shot there. That one saved his side. Spins around once, almost lost the puck, but recovers. Drop it off center point. Shot gets through to a man in front, and he scores! Off the block and in. A good shot off the rebound. It's 4-2. to two. And that's exactly what Luki was looking for. We were just saying it, needing to open this game up to try to shut the door a little bit. And that's exactly what he did. Maybe not the play that you'll find on the highlight reel, but it's the play that works. You know the old expression, Nick. They don't ask how, they ask how many. And the how many is four for Luki. A two-goal advantage on that rebound play. Meanwhile, the other side, we might watch that game here shortly too. Ukraine hack just got his go-ahead goal. It's 2-1. With about 10 minutes to go in that third period. We might cut to that here shortly. I'm keeping an eye on it. Nevertheless, we're here up by two is Luki. So they might split this series if the scoreline holds. Meanwhile, 5-1. Jesse L over Burkadal in the second period. 3-0 Eki over Pro-Am on the Xbox side. 10 minutes to go in the third period. So Finland might be getting two more games win. That's 12 points for them without uh, only giving up one goal. So that's a pretty good standard to start with if you're in the group stage for them. But the action's right here right now. Middle of this third frame. Tom Riddle down by two. Here he goes. Through the middle, through the blue line. Has the puck with Sillinger. Has it down low now. Going to try to work from behind the kitchen. Coming in front of the kitchen. Oh, that backhand chance. I thought he was going to dish it. That one got poke check aside. Good dangle through though. And that shot will get blockered away. Now it'll come up to Severson for Luki. Eight and a half. Time winding down here for Tom. He's got to get one here soon. Never say never. Good little feed pass through on the short side. Better save by the goalkeeper. Eki just got his fourth goal, by the way. So 4 nothing versus Pro-Am. There's another feed there. Stolen back. That's pushed aside. And Tom Riddle will clear it out. It'll go all the way down. No icing. Six and a half now. Left in this third period. On the PlayStation side, it is also 4-2. Four, to four oh, I'm sorry. On the Xbox side, it's Hannes Stoll down by one. We're going to cut to that game right now with three and a half to play. Now three minutes to play. So Hannes Stoll is looking to help out Luki by getting some points here, but the rebound might not let him. Ukraine hack putting the pressure on, and the limelight worked for him too with our friends from Ukraine. Three to one now for his team in this series. These players, when the light shines on them, when the spotlight is singularly on them, they step up and give us a play every single time. That play no different. How about Ukraine Heck getting that second goal of this game? Not over yet, but two minutes to play, a two-goal lead. If you can just hold on to that possession, not make mistakes, should be able to close this out and get Ukraine a big three points. Ukraine needs this right now, and they're going to get it now with a minute to play. We'll keep the action here about a minute and a half in the other series. Uh, with the PlayStation side, still a two-goal lead there. Two-goal lead here as well, but we'll keep the action right here. Under a minute left. That'll split this series if the scoreline holds. It might. We'll keep an eye on what happens. Finland's going to walk away with two victories for their matchup as well. Here comes Italy. Down by two. Shot there right in the bread basket. Saved and played on. It's February after all. And it's not near the end of the game at a tie game. So I guess we still throw that out. Moved along. They'll try it again. Coming down to uh, two handfuls, three handfuls of time left. Clicked out. Pushed along for a while. He'll drive that one across. Send it back to him. Shot there just to buy some time. Final 10 to go. And that is going to do it. We'll quickly send it over to watch the conclusion of the other Italy game where you see the scoreline as well. Italy wins this one, but loses that other one. So they will split the series, but a goal there makes it four to three as the limelight turned on again, Brandon. How does this keep happening? And 
I mean, let me tell you, I don't know if there's a team that thrives more in the spotlight than Ukraine. I mean, one man does it in Ukraine, heck, and then right after that, Tom Riddle, not to be outdone, 2.6 seconds left, not going to get the win. But let me tell you, that is an important goal for the goal differential. It because is. remember, it is. Ukraine just got that two goal win, but despite losing by one, they still will have the advantage in the head-to-head -head goal differential because of that goal. It would have been tied, if I'm correct, otherwise, potentially. That goal, I believe, gave them an advantage. I'll have to do the mathematics on that a little bit, but if I'm correct, that just gave Ukraine the goal differential in their advantage right there. Yeah, it actually did, and I think, you know, we're not doing aggregate here in the playoff, in the group stage. We are in the playoff stage, but here is it's more important, I think. I think you have to get goals because there's only so many games you can play. You're playing against other teams that are doing goals. Cutting into that deficit will help when we look over to the rule sheet on how they determine this. It's points, head-to-head -head points, and then head-to-head -head goal differential. So if you can keep yeah. that in a good shape with the result of the other game, this might be what you needed. And then not only that, but if you go down to the one below the head-to-head -head goal difference, it's head-to-head -head number of goals scored. So every single goal matters. And... If it comes down to Ukraine and Italy for that second spot in the playoffs, that's massive. I know it's a loss. It is what it is as three points drop. But when you look at things, that could potentially be a massive goal that Tom Riddle scored, even despite the loss, though. Just something to kind of bookmark there and keep an eye on, depending on how things shake out. Ukraine going to only end up with three to six points, but a potentially big goal there at the end. Just something to kind of keep in mind here as we move through our group stages and the table kind of starts to shape itself out as these matchups move along. Matchups will move along, will move right along. We'll get to that live standings in just a moment. But in just a little bit, we're going to be setting the stage. The featured matchup of today for Group A, Finland versus Latvia. We're going to take a short break. We're going to set up for that. When we come back, we're going to bring that to you in the only way Brandon and I know how, which is giving you as much uh, uh, gravitas and, and big stage feel that we are the only ones that know how to deliver. We're going to do that for you. We're going to tell you about the rivalry from last year. We're going to tell you about the upset that brought us to this point. And then we're going to set the tone for Eki and his squad versus Latvia, who's ready to come together and make another splash in this 2023 IIHF E-World Championship. You're not going to want to miss it. You're going to find us over on Facebook and Twitter as well if you're watching on there. We'll, we'll cue you to make your way back because you're not going to want to miss more action after that. But don't go anywhere. You are watching this tournament. It's going to be a blast. Stay tuned.
he's in, stops up, backhand, and he scores! Uh, I was screaming when I scored the goal. The game when he goal! How are you feeling? I'm ecstatic. Thank you for sticking with us as we set the table for our featured matchup, Finland versus Latvia, the semifinals rematch from the 2022 edition of this tournament. They meet in the same group. Nick DeMeo, Brandon Bigsby with you. And Nick, you just saw it. Finland won the championship last year, had to get through the shocking Cinderella story and Latvia to do it. Here they are meeting again in the same group for 2023. Yeah, and what better way to really start telling this story than to just go back a little bit in time. We talked about what could happen in the insanity that is the playoff stage uh, in a little bit. But first, what we're going to do is talk a little bit about uh, what happened last year and then bring you back to what happened this year. So let's do that right now. Yeah, I mean... Drives that far side, cuts into the middle. Here's Jost, back to where he scores, and we're going to overtime as Jost <laughs> ties things up in the aggregate, and this thing isn't done yet. And now on the breakout is Eki. Eki now across the line, still has the puck. Shot, oh, he scores! Eki's going to end it in overtime, and Finland is your 2022 IIHFE World Champion. As we are live on Facebook and Twitter, we want to welcome everybody. Do not forget that the action, if you're on there, will continue. Uh, look below me, right like, right down there. Go over to Twitch and YouTube after this if you're on social media and come watch more action. But hey, that's what can happen in synchronous overtime. But we're not even there yet, and things have happened that are just insane as it is. So let's go ahead and talk about what we're going to see here. The featured matchup coming up in literally a minute between Finland and Latvia. First starting with the team that we know and love in Team Finland. Yeah, Team Finland, the back-to-back -back champions looking to make it a third straight IIHF E-World Championship. And the common denominator of all those championships is the man on your right in Eki. He has represented Finland in 2020, 2022, and now 2023. He's had a different teammate every single year. And this year is Jesse L. We talked about him a little bit earlier in the broadcast, if you were not with us. Jesse L., a guy that beat Artuzio, a two-time Finnish champion, a one-time European champion, to make it into the PS4 qualifier and get in to represent Finland. He's a guy that might not be known on the biggest stage, but he is a skilled player, both on the sixes and 1v1 side. Him and Eki should be a dynamic duo, and I cannot wait to watch them match up here in this great game against Latvia. Of course, they're going to go against Latvia, as you said. And on my notes here, Brandon, it says surprise semifinalist, but I think... The word surprise is a vast understatement for what they were able to accomplish last year and what they're trying to do this year. Yeah, I think Cinderella's story is definitely what you would call it. And even before that surprising win versus Sweden, you have to remember they finished second in Group B just barely. In just a matter of points, yeah. they got them in. They squeaked their way in. Many people didn't even expect them to get to the quarterfinals. It was, oh, Latvia got to the quarterfinals. That's a win for them. They weren't satisfied with that. They went and took down a giant in Sweden. Chibra was representing that Latvia team last year. Back again this year with Rousey's and this is going to be so, so interesting to see how Latvia does this year. Everyone knows what they did last year. The question is, can they do it again and do it on a consistent basis? Not going to catch anyone by surprise this time. They have a target on their back. It's going to be a lot of fun to see how they match up with this Finland team that kept them from the finals last year to keep that Cinderella story going. And dare I say, man, I, you know, the, the camaraderie and community support in the chat for Latvia last year, I think that was the highest amount up until the semifinals and finals we saw latvian fans come out in droves to support their team and i want to see it in chat right now finland or latvia who do you have please show your flags in chat as we take a look at the live standings here here's where it shakes out right now brandon 
And Finland currently manning that number one spot. Four games played, 12 points. And depending on the Denmark results, if I am correct, if they are able to sweep Latvia, that would clinch them that number one spot. But keep in mind, Latvia, two games played. They still have some time, but they're going to have to try to get some points here soon. Drop both of their games versus Denmark. You have to assume, Nick, and I'd love to get your thoughts on this, you kind of have to at least steal three points here in this matchup against the number one team in Finland if you don't want to fall behind the eight ball because after that, you only have Ukraine and Italy left and you're kind of relying on other results around you with Denmark for them to lose some for you to get in. Yeah, Finland has to lose or Denmark has to lose. And right now, Denmark's only lost two. You've lost two, but not have won any. You're two games in hand. So you have to at least split the series here. You have to assume you're gonna you might split the series with Ukraine. You might win your series against Italy, but is that gonna be enough? Is nine points enough to get you up into number two spot when you got Denmark also going against against Italy as their matchups? And this is what we talk about. Everything shakes out and it becomes the witching hour. And we'll start seeing that take shape here. After these third set of matches, we have two more sets of matches to bring you in Group A. And simultaneously, Group B will be kicking off that last uh, block there for Group A. But that's okay. Right now, we're looking at Latvia and, Finmar uh, and, and Finland. And, I mean, you have to assume Finland's going to win most of their games. So what do you do as Latvia? You have to do your part. You got to walk away with at least three here, I think. Yeah, and something to keep in mind, too, is that Denmark has already played Finland. The results of those games, Jesse ended up beating Birkadal 11-2, and then Eki ended up being Pro-Am 4 to nothing. So once Latvia plays Finland, Denmark and Latvia share common opponents. Both of them have to finish off by playing Ukraine and Italy. So if you're Latvia, you're already six points behind Denmark. You have the two games in hand, but those two games in hand are the ones we're about to see right now. So if they come out pointless, they're down six points and they're going to have to not only essentially win out, but they're going to have to get some help from both Ukraine and Italy to try to knock Denmark off. And then even then, Ukraine and Italy are ahead of them. But the difference is that at least Latvia controls their own destiny within those two teams. They don't with Denmark. So if you're Denmark, you're feeling pretty good about where you are. If you can take care of business against Ukraine and Italy, you should be able to put in that number two spot. And I think you feel the same way if you're Ukraine, especially with having just two games played and just being three points behind. But if you're Latvia, a tough matchup with Finland, and it kind of has the feeling of a must-win situation because otherwise you fall a little bit behind and the catch-up may be a little bit too much for you to get back into that number two position with how even things are really from two all all the way down the five right now featured matchup about to get underway here shortly two teams are in the locker room readying up as we speak getting things in order we are ready to kick off in just a little bit you talked about denmark needing to do denmark things i'm watching off camera here as we're going to get an update on the score lines but i believe tom riddle up one nothing against Burkadal. And mm. Ukraine hack up heck up for nothing against Pro Am. So an upset happening Ooh. with Ukraine over Denmark right now on the secondary matchup. So something to keep an eye on. And yes, Tom Riddle just got the next goal. So it's two nothing now against Birkadal. So that changes what might happen in the two seed as well. So it's even more paramount oh, yeah. for Latvia to get ahead and, and at least get one out of this two against Finland. And keep in mind, when we saw the standings, we were talking and keying more on Denmark Latvia just because we're about to feature the Latvia game. But remember, Ukraine, three points, two games played. Denmark, six points, four games played. If those results hold, Ukraine will have sole possession of number two. So this is a massive, massive result. If Ukraine holds on, that is a massive developing story here in that group. So that's something to keep an eye on. We'll try to update that throughout. But if Ukraine holds on, that's a massive story. And that makes things a little bit tougher for Latvia as well, because not only do you have to get some results on the Denmark side of things, but then you have to get results then for Ukraine. They have to drop some. So you get a look at all the groups, things very evenly distributed. But if Ukraine holds on to those two results, that is absolutely massive. And in my opinion, it completely changes the look from top to bottom of the way we see this group outside that number one spot in Finland. Yes, it does. But right now, we drive our attention to our featured matchup of Group A. Presented to you by Skoda and Strauss. This is Finland versus Latvia. Puck drop underway. 
And it's the Xbox side, Eki versus Rao. We're looking at Eki's view, and he is in the away kit, moving north on your screen. Rao in the alternate black uniforms for Canada, moving downward. He has possession right now, trying to break past Eki, who has been nothing short of dominant so far in this tournament. Moving in the offensive zone, gives it over to Barzil at the top left. Pass over to the point, shot on, saved by Dreiger. And Eki's going to go ahead and play that one out. He does not want to waste any time. Here comes Severson, moving it up for Eki. Gets into Barzil to the left side. Holds, looks, pass to Batherson in the slot, does connect. And a nice defensive play from Rouse early on. Critical points here for both of these teams. Remember, if Finland wins both of these games, they will clinch the number one spot and will definitely clinch a spot into the quarterfinals. So a lot on the line for both of these two teams having to step up and play in the big moment. Zaki moving it up the left boards, looking, has a little speed. He's tripped up there after the poke check by Rouse. It's going to be a power play for the Finn and Eki. Patience of Eki starting off strong here. As we see it in action, the power play, a very, very dangerous thing for Eki to be able to use early on here in the game. Aggressive zone face off. Zeki couldn't get a handle of it. He'll have to go from the neutral zone and put it back into the offensive zone, but he will. But it's turned over right after. Nice job from Ralph dumping it, but Lowry picks it up for Eki. Eki up the right boards, looking for something, holds it, being patient, as you mentioned, Nick. That's a prime, prime characteristic of Eki's game. Cycling that puck around. Pass over to Comtois, but it's saved by Dreiger. Still has it. Another pass over, and it's going to just go right to the goaltender of Dreiger. It looks like Rouse is going to hold on as we are back to even strength hockey. Yeah, that one hit the post short side. That was an opportunity Eki needed to take advantage of and just missed just a little bit. But yeah, we've got a still another 50 seconds on this power play. Oh, excuse me. I thought that it was a back to even strength, but it looks like we do still have some time left on the power play. So my apologies as Eki trying to take advantage of that power play shot from a on angle and it's going to be held on to by Dreiger and saved. This is where Eki needs to kind of make an impact, and this is where Rouse has to kind of not play to, to, to survive, but just get out of this pressure situation and kind of relieve the valve and get some offense going. Sillinger holds for Eki. Pass across the Comtois, and he scores on the one-timer. That patented cross-crease play that Eki loves to try to break open. He does it, and that's the opening marker in this game. That's a huge goal for Eki, and that's exactly what I said needed to happen. That one, two that he does off that backhand, and he loves to go backhand cross crease, and it just opens up the door. And if you don't play that far trailer guy, you usually get bit. He doesn't go short side, so that's a good opening goal for him. Opening goal for Eki, and he's looking for more. Moving it down the left boards. Couldn't find any passing lanes. And it'll be Rouse to try to take it up. Has it with Dubois, working his way past the middle, and he gives it to the left side, but it's turned over, and Eki trying to take advantage. Moving it past the defensive zone, gets into the neutral zone now, and just holding and gets it to Cousins, and that's a great example. Little movements like that, if that pace is from Eki, it rewards him with a chance. Saved by Dragger, but Eki still has it in the offensive zone. Moving it behind the net, looking for a pass, holding it over to his forehand, turns, twists, looks, hit from behind. Nice job from Rouse, but it's given back over to Eki. Nice positioning there as he gets into the slot. Cousins holds it backhand, goes behind the net again. Still trying to find a passing lane. Over to the right point now, back over to slot, back to the right point, now to the left point. Shabbat holds it. Just looking to try to get something here. Eki trying to create some space for himself. Eight and a half minutes to play. Eki up by one. It's Finland playing Latvia here in group A. Action is a shot on. Saved by Dreiger. And Rouse, he kind of mentioned looking to hold on to an extent. Definitely has to feel like the pressure is on. It's a defensive zone turnover. Eki gets it, dumps that in, and Rouse is going to get it. So maybe not too much harm done right there. Rouse circling back and gives it over to Mercer to the opposite side. Twists his way to the slot. Pass over to the point. Shot blocked in front. And Rouse gets it back. Right shot blocked and saved by Dreiger. But Rouse still has possession. Another shot for the point. Blocked in front by Eki manually that time. But Rouse still keeps possession. Pass saved by Dreiger. And Rouse still will hold on to it. Pass to the point. Deep left side point shot. Saved again by Dreiger. Seems like Rouse is trying to really work into those defense. But that's where a lot of his opportunities have come from here early. Yeah, trying to buy Eki that opportunity and force it in through the defense. And so far it hasn't worked. But he's trying to get close. 
Trying to find that time mark, but Eki has him. Trying to make it two nothing. Shot from Comtois, and he puts it through. Maxime Comtois makes it a two nothing lead for Eki, and that has got to be derailing for Rouse after all of that pressure just a moment before. Yeah, that's a deflating, deflating goal. And exactly what Eki needed to do at that time. You have to take the the wind out of the sails when things get a little bit too choppy. He did so right there. Did so and did so to perfection. Both goals scored by Maxime Comtois as we're going to turn it over to the PlayStation side of this game. Jesse versus Chibra. Jesse up one to nothing as we start the second period on the PlayStation side of things. So right now, Finland looking really strong to hold on to that number one spot and Ukraine will see what their results are. But if they know what's happening, they've got to be smiling wide as a second goal for Jesse. That's Matt Barzal on the backhand across the slot. A 2 nothing lead for both Eki on the PlayStation side, or the Xbox side rather, and now Jesse on the PlayStation side. You know, granted, there's been like 120 goals scored in, in this weekend so far. But that's about the 11th time, Brandon, that we've switched over and a goal has occurred in the first minute of us coming to that game. So I'm happy that that happened. And now it's 2-0 in both games for Finland right now. They love the shine. They love the big moment as Jesse may be looking for goal number three, operating in the offensive zone over by the left corner board with Batherson. By the net, wraparound wouldn't go, but Dubois picks it back up for Jesse. Here's it Shabbat. At the right point, holds it, looks, trying to find some space, gives it to the left point now to Severson. He looks and gives it down low back to the left corner over to Batherson, who goes back behind the net. Tries to swing it back over to the right point, but picked off by Chibra, but immediately turned back over to Jesse. Jesse holding it at the right boards, trying to work his way through the middle. Back hands, goes behind the net, wrapper up chance again, saved by Dreiger. And Chibra trying to keep the momentum, going to play this one out. Moves it down the boards, holds, spins, pass across, goes a little bit outside Dubois' range, but he ends up picking it back up. Dubois holds it here for Chibra. Behind the net, pass across to the slot, save, pucks the loose in front, battle for it behind the net, and it looks like it's going to be Jesse to come up with it here for Finland. Moving up the ice, two on one, holds back and pass across, and it's a nice deflection there defensively from Chibra. 12 and a half minutes to play here in the second period. Jesse up by two for the Finns. Chibra moves it up for Lafia. Holds it, gets into the point. Looking for an oh. option. Pass across. He scores a pretty pass wow. over to Lowry. And Chibra cuts the lead in half for Latvia. That's an answer. Wow, what a beauty of a pass. Found it and threaded the needle. Got it behind the skate of Jesse's defender. And it found the stick waiting at the far side. Great goal there by Chibra. Right at the needle so pretty, you would have thought he sewed those jerseys together. What a play from Chibra to cut that Finland lead in half for Jesse. Still some work to do, but Chibra starting to feel himself. He's back in the offensive zone. Has a little bit of space, pulls it back in, passes into the slot, shot on. Looks like it was saved, but it was not the strongest shot that we've seen. And here comes Jesse trying to counter. In transition, gets into the offensive zone, but it's a hit. By Graves, but turned over. Breakaway nearly for Jesse, but a nice job getting back. Pass across, shot on, goes wide. And Chibra gets it back. Near dangerous chance, and here's Chibra now on a chance. One on two, spins. Oh, 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 oh. Chibra ties it up. The prettiest goal of the tournament right there. Two, two, Chibra with a beautiful goal. What just happened? A masterful goal by Chibra. L skating some sort of magic black magic harry potter sorcery brandon that's the best goal we've seen in the tournament so far and i don't think i just mean 2023 but i died jeff i mean this is crazy i i digress but that's in oh wow i'm i'm still trying to get over that right there jesse trying to respond holding it in the slot looks gives it to the point now the wall now down low to mercer we're tied to two six minutes to play in the second Jesse behind the net, looking, trying to get options, doesn't have anything right now. Still looking, works his way to the middle, passes the cylinder to the right side, trying his luck there. Holds it, gets it down low behind the net, still has it with cylinder, trying to find that pass, won't shoot. Looking opposite side of the net, gives it over the wall, and great defense from Chibra, trying to get out of the zone, but nice job from Jesse, just holding on. Tried that wraparound one again, and could not get it, but he gets the puck back. As it still goes by that pass across over to the left side of the cylinder and he scores. Jesse gets his lead back. Pretty play and all.
And that is a goal I think Jesse needed. After what just occurred on the other side of the ice with two unanswered goals, Jesse kind of taking the momentum out. A pivotal fifth goal of this game. A little fifth goal, and it was Sillinger that got it. Cheever going to get it back. Finds Dubois. Back his save by Dreiger. Cheever still has it behind the net. Looking for a play. Moves to the slot. Pass across Barzal, but it's blocked in front by Shabbat for Jesse. And he'll look to move it up the offensive zone. In the neutral. Gets it past the blue line. Lowry has it turned over and a breakaway for Chibra. This is Dubois. Jesse chasing off possession, but he got it back and he scores. Chibra and Jesse back and forth, tying it up yet again is Latvia. Well, that's a response. Chibra said, no, no, no. We will not go quietly into that good night. We are going to fight until the end of this game. And he did so right there. What a beauty of a goal. A seesaw of a game between Jesse and Chibra. We talked about the implications. These two teams met in the semifinals last year. Chibra represented Latvia on the PlayStation side, just fell a little bit short, trying to get his team back into the playoffs with the help of his team. And on the Xbox side, as he's moving in the offensive zone, four seconds behind the net, couldn't get possession of that puck, and Jesse will hold on and let time expires. Eki and Rouse playing on the other side, but boy, is this game giving us quite the show since we queued into it. It is. On the other side, real quick, scoreline updates. Eki 2 nothing over Raws. so we'll keep an eye on there as I think... Nope, that was not a third goal. That play went out of... Uh, out of the puck went out of play there. 7-2, to two, Tom Riddle, final score over Burkadal. Ukraine Hex, 7-2, 7-3 seven to seven to over Pro-Am in the third period, so... Looks like Ukraine's winning both of their games there. Finland winning with Eki on the Xbox side. Chibra, can he get the go-ahead goal and hang on to the lead? 20 minutes to call that one. Now about in dominant fashion for Ukraine, it looks like they might be in some trouble. Or excuse me, Denmark rather, looks like they might be in some trouble. And that could potentially be good for Latvia, and especially for Finland, who could very well be clinching their way to the number one seed, depending on some of those results. Back to take care of business here, though, first. As Jesse moving around the offensive zone, holding it, gives it back to the right corner, but nobody home. And Chibra trying to counter. Gives it up to the left boards, right side of our screen. Moves it across, nobody there, and it'll be Jesse to pick it up. Moves it to the middle, back to the left side. Here's Batherson for Jesse, has a little space. Pass across, and he scores! That's Pierre-Luc Dubois the pass from Drake Batherson. And Jesse, once again, retakes the lead, but can he hold on to it? Jesse now, the pressure's on him to maintain this lead. A beauty of a goal there as well, and a way to come out of the third period firing with full stamina. He makes that one look poetically easy as he just moved up the ice, got the pass across, and drove that one home. Jesse has possession with that one goal lead. And I think the key here, Nick, who's going to score that next goal, if anyone? You have a feeling that with the way this game's going, there's going to be another goal, but who is going to score it? They could very well decide where this thing goes. Cheever trying to be the man that does it. Pass over to the point, picked off by Kent Johnson. And here comes Jesse. Jesse looking, holding, turned over, poke checked. Gets it back behind the net. Cheaper trying to pick it up. Battle for it. Jesse comes out with it. Gives it to Johnson the slot. Back, Looking. It holds it over at the right left faceoff circle. He gives it back to the left point. White Cloud to Shabbat to the right point now. Down low to the right corner board to Lowry. Holding it. Goes down low behind the net. Gives it to Cousins. Trying to pass it across, but it hit off the pad of Dreiger. And Cheaper going to go ahead and reset things. Looking like he's going to maybe do a line change as well. Yes, he will. Moving it. Spacing things out, kicks it back to Graves. Graves over to Severson at the left boards. And it's not going to go anywhere, and he's going to have to try again. Gives it up to Lowry. Chibra breaking into the offensive zone. 11 and a half remaining in this third period. Latvia trying to snag some points, but Jesse up by one. It's a shot on from the left side faceoff circle. Saved by Dreiger and held on for a whistle. Brendan, you can almost feel the pressure switching back and forth. The momentum rolling to and fro. This is where Chiba's got to capitalize. And he do so here on the offensive zone face. I'll be wins it. Pass to Lowry. Shot goes wide. He had the open cage. Battle for it over in the left corner board. Chiba comes up with it. Lowry holds it. Looking for a pass. 
has the slot, or excuse me, the point, and that's where he'll give it. Finds Cousins there. Goes back down low, hit from behind by Jesse, and Law will come up with it. Gives it to the right side to Mercer. Battle for it. Jesse comes up with it again, trying to wait for some players to come back. It looks like they went for a line change. Eight minutes to play in the third. Jesse up by one, trying to extend his lead. Back and forth, seesaw the game so far. Dubois holds it at the high slot. Now up to the point, gives it to Shabbat at the right side. Gives it, holds it back over to Severson. Trying to just cycle it around to create some space for himself as Jesse. Moves pass over the corner board, goes back down low behind the net. Looking for something, circling his way around. Holds it still, trying to find anything he can, just wasting the time potentially a little bit too, knowing that he's up by one. He knows that that time is his friend. Cheaper ends up getting the turnover. He's going to try to take advantage on his end. Turns, gets past the blue line. Shabbat hits him in the back, and he's going to go ahead and turn that over. Nice defensive play from Jesse. Just controlling the possession so far here since that goal. Trying to get a goal here now. Goes by the net. Wraparound does not go. About the fifth time Jesse's tried that wraparound more than any other player I think we've seen in this tournament so far. Pass from behind. And is this going to be collected by Dreiger on that wraparound attempt? Pretty sneaky chance there from Jesse. But Cheever's going to get it and play it out. In the neutral zone. Anderson spins his way past. Shot on from Dreiger. Glove save. And Jesse's going to hold on with two and a half to play in the third. Time winding down here for... Cheever to kind of get this one going as we see a pause there. 2 nothing for Eki in the third period. 10 to go against Ross. So this is where Cheever's got to step up now. Shot on rebound goes wide. Barzal does pick it up, but not before you get a second chance. Barzal with it down low. Chibra holding past the cross. Oh, what a save by Dreiger! Holds on for the whistle. <laughs> Jesse's lead holds on by a thread. Nearly had it there. What a save. That Remember that play if this scoreline holds. Jesse wins the defensive zone faceoff. Less than a minute and a half to play. Has the one goal lead pass goes awry. And it's going to be an icing in favor of Chief Russell. Hold on. 58.8 left. Chi has an offensive zone faceoff, and it looks like Jesse is going to respond potentially with a timeout of his own. Yeah, timeout actually, no, needed. So Chi going to call the timeout, trying to get the energy for all four lines. 58.8 seconds to go. This is massive here for Latvia. Remember, Eki winning against Rouse on the other side, as Nick mentioned. Two to nothing. So right now, Finland could very well have three points back then. Latvia absolutely needs this win right here, right now. One minute Base left. Off. Tied up. One by Jesse for Finland. Holding it. Looking for something. Gets into the right boards. Batheson, but it's turned over immediately. Here is Chi, bro. Goes up the left boards, right side of your screen. Holds it. Goes back down low. Trying to find a pass. 42 seconds to play. Chi, bro. Applying pressure. Looking for space. Jesse defending the lanes well. Goes over to the right point. Moves back inside with Dubois. Goes to the left corner board. Trying to find something. Chi, bro. Holding 30 seconds. No shots yet in this possession. Just trying to find space. Locking down the slot is Jesse. Chi, bro. Still needing something. 22 seconds now. No shots yet. Has to pass over to Batherson, holds it back 18 seconds looking slot holds nothing there Batherson picks it off for Jesse gets it to Dubois 10 seconds remaining left side pass across Barzo backhand he scores Jesse puts it away a defensive play to an offensive goal and it's going to be a win for the Finn Jesse over Chibra on a clutch last minute situation in his own end I like what you did there under 10 seconds left Jesse survives the waves of pressure and gets that insurance marker to make sure Finland will get their three points in this matchup. Slap shot from Jesse with Barzil as time expires. That will do it. Locks in three points for Finland. Eki looking to do so here as Rouse has it in the offensive zone. Slap shot from the point. Blocked in front. Eki will end up getting a turnover and he'll have some numbers potentially over the left side of him. As Geeky spins, couldn't get anything to go there. It's a chance here for Rouse on the turnover. Spins with Gregor. No avail. P puck battle over at the left face-off dot. And Eki will come up with it. 
25 seconds to play. Finland looking to bag all six points, and if Eki holds on, which it looks like he will, Finland to clinch the number one spot in Group A, potentially. He's moving it up. Here is Rouse holding, looking, trying to get something, trying to just find that goal to break the shutout. Let's see if he can. Slap shot, one second left. Poke check the front shot blocked in the slot for Eki. And that will wrap up the series. The Finns get both wins. Six points for Eki and Jesse. Three nothing here. Six to four there on the PlayStation side. Eki winning on the Xbox side. What a back and forth series. Amazing featured matchup that we had here at IIHF Hockey. Yeah, we're not even done yet. And that's probably one of my favorite matchups we've had so far. Uh, so that was really fun to watch. A great performance by both squads. Finland doing Finland things. Latvia fighting to the very end. And they're still not out with what we saw with the uh, mathematics and the matchup results that have transpired over the last 30 minutes or so. I'm just going to say, Nick, I am itching to see the standings when they are updated to see how those just shifted because this slate of matchups pretty much changed the scope of everything that we're looking at. I mean, you look at things with Ukraine looking like they're probably going to be at that number two spot rather comfortably. Latvia in a position where they have a massive hole to climb out of. And now you just kind of have to wonder, if I'm correct, Finland and Ukraine still have to play. I mean... Ukraine maybe not out number one. We'll see what happens, but <laughs> it's not impossible. I don't know if anyone had that in their predictions. I'm not sure what the line was for Ukraine finishing first in Group A, but it's possible. It is very, very possible. As if I'm correct, that is the last matchup that Finland has left. I think you're right. I'm looking at Ukraine versus Finland. That would be Finland's last match. That's where we're probably going to put our attention to here in a minute. But I got to go back here, if that's all right with you all. I, I, I have to go back. I have to pull up that goal that, you know, call it what you want. We got to look at this again, and I'm, I'm just going to pull it up and let the let the game be called here. Uh, I, I, you know, talk a little bit over this as, as we play this clip that our production team grabbed for us. I mean, this is nothing short of amazing. Down by one, Chibra finds his way through, spins with the L2 move, and just... I mean, backhands it in almost looked like a near between the legs. And they don't get prettier than that because not only is it a pretty play, but the awareness to see the space that he needed to know he needed to get that move is the only way that shot gets off in that position. There were two defenders, one Chibra, and that one Chibra put it past, <laughs> got that move, and put the puck in the net. It's a shame that it didn't end up meaning more in terms of the final result, but that is the best goal that I think we have seen, not just for this year, but definitely in our time of calling this tournament. It does not get much prettier than that. Much love to Chibra on that play. That's going to be on highlight reels all over the NHL community here over the next couple of days. Yeah, I think you're right. I think that's one of the best goals. Uh, <laughs> we've seen so many things transpire over the course of, the last year, specifically the last day, but man, Chibra, my my vote is my pick is in right now. Goal of the tournament, right there. Yeah, <laughs> has to be, and we'll see because we've seen these players. They love when we say things like that, and when we put the camera on them, and then all of a sudden they go through six five people and go windmill deep past the goal, like. We'll see something crazier just because that's how this works. But as of this moment, Chibra, goal of the tournament, hands down, is not close. Not no, even close. You're absolutely right. And I think we have the, the standings updated here shortly. I'll grab that uh, the second it becomes available. But, man, you know, despite the outcome, like you said, that was something uh, one for the ages, I would say. And, and you know, it's, it's, it's insane what these guys can do. And I've, I've said this before. One, sixes is its own thing. 1v1 is about individual micro movements that open up things, uh, exploits, slots, abilities. All of that is what 1v1 is about. Sixes is about the beautiful movements of everyone at once. It's a, it's a different mentality, but with 1v1, this is what you get. 
Yeah, and I mean, that's really the thing about it is that you do see a lot of that individual skill kind of show itself off a little bit. As you mentioned, the standings being updated, and there they are, the Ukraine results in. They are nine points back of Finland. <laughs> so like we mentioned, it would take a little bit of work, but it's not out of the picture for Finland to maybe drop that number one spot. It would take, let's see, Ukraine has two games in the hand. They'd have to win both and maybe get a Finland loss elsewhere. But yeah, Finland has to lose somewhere. Yeah, they, they have to lose somewhere. And let me see. I think that's actually Finland's last matchup in Ukraine. So maybe that is already locked in. Maybe Ukraine, unless they beat Finland both times and then win twice in their last matchup, it would take a lot. But Finland more than likely to clinch that number one spot. Ukraine with a glimmer of hope there. But... How about Ukraine, even outside the number one spot, holding down that number two position three points ahead? And not only that, but with games in hand over Denmark. And not only that, but Latvia just losing. Italy six points behind. This is becoming a very real possibility that Ukraine shocks the world. It, it does. It does. I, I'm looking at the math here. I'm going, okay, two games in hand. Yeah, sure. Okay, whatever. Still exciting to watch. And uh, just as a reminder, exciting to watch. Speaking of exciting to watch here. Down below, all my people on Facebook and Twitter, if you're watching right now and you want to see more action, our featured matchup is about to end on Facebook and Twitter. However, if you want more of what you just saw, I implore you, I encourage you, I strongly suggest do everything in your power to make your way down over to Twitch or YouTube and watch the continued coverage right here. Nick DeMeo, F5 Penguin, Brandon Bigsby, B Major, Bringing you the action all day long. We got matchups across the board here. Latvia and Ukraine, Denmark and Italy coming up next. Ukraine and Finland to decide who actually gets to punch their ticket in. That's a matchup now that becomes important where it didn't become important at the beginning of this broadcast. And then Group B underway here shortly. United States and Austria and Canada versus Great Britain to start the broadcast for Group B and our featured matchup later on today. We'll be back on social, but you're already going to be here. You're not going to have to worry about that. You're already going to be sitting with your popcorn, enjoying the chat that is Twitch. Let me see those flags up for Latvia, Finland, uh, Ukraine, Denmark, and Italy. I want to see it in chat. You come on over for U.S. versus Canada a little bit later on. But for right now, that's going to be it for our broadcast on Facebook and Twitter. We're going to keep our continued coverage right here on Twitch and YouTube. We'll be back in a moment. Don't go anywhere. You're watching the 2020. 23 IIHF E World Championship presented to you by Skoda and Strauss. We'll be back in just a minute.
as we are back and ready to roll. It's Latvia versus Ukraine. Rouse versus Ukraine. Heck, on the Xbox side, critical matchup here in the Group 8 standings. We are tied at two. We talked about Ukraine currently holding the number two spot, nine points, while for Latvia, pointless as of now. They have the same amount of games played as Ukraine, and Latvia must win both as things stand to keep their playoff hopes alive. Can they get the job done? We'll find out as the puck is loose in front. Almost capitalized on by Ukraine. Heck, we were watching from his perspective in the red Canada jerseys moving north on your screen. Rouse on the away side, moving downward in the white jerseys. Man, I can't Ukraine believe Heck, already I'm that we're 60% we're of the way through uh, this opening group a stage and already the madness has ensued with i'm sure plenty more to go right there as we see it happen on your screen rouse with another goal and he's up in the lead and that's exactly what rouse needed two to two you know your team is in a do or die potentially situation and what does he go and do he gets it in takes a nice little move three defenders draped wow. all over him he just puts that puck in the only place he could get it perfectly positioned perfectly placed and he just taps it right in with pierre luke dubois does not get much more textbook than that is exactly what lafia needed to get the lead As Rao's moving it into the offensive zone at the left corner board. And it's a goal. That was Ukraine Heck responding on the offensive zone. A pretty play puts it in. And just like that, we're tied all over again. Well, that's a response. Uh, we keep talking about it. Every time we switch, we get goals. Look at it here. 232 left. He responds back. Ukraine Heck representing Ukraine very well. And he definitely wants to try to get that number two slot. They're in it right now. They just have to hold it. And that's going to be pivotal for them. But here comes Rouse trying to respond, holding into the offensive zone, looking in the slot, goes to the point. Severson shot, saves, puck loose in front, picked up by Ukraine. Heck, but right back to Rouse. Rouse has it, looks, shot on, but big save by Thompson, another shot, saved again. And Ukraine Heck says, I've seen enough. He's going to hold on for the whistle. And we got to keep an eye on this. At the end of this period, we'll jump over to the other matchup in this uh, contest with Chibra versus Tom Riddle in just a moment. So we'll get a look at that, but right now, 20 seconds remaining. Ukraine Heck has it in his own end, pressured by Rouse. Moving it up, holding it as Ukraine Heck gives it over to the right side. Passes the slot, nobody there, and that will do it. A high-flying opening period tied at three, and we move over to the PlayStation side. How about Latvia? 2-1 lead for Chibra over Tom Riddle. As you mentioned, Nick, maybe some of these results starting to fall their way, and it couldn't have come at a bigger point. Yeah, with Tom Riddle going north on your screen here, jumped early, lost that pivotal offensive zone opportunity. Real time, 10 seconds will conclude this period as well. Two to one, Chibra in the lead. So Latvia coming back with a surge here, trying to get some points on the board. Time running out for them. Point shot comes in, that will go wide. Two seconds, one shot on last second, and that'll do it for them. So we'll flip it on back. Third period action underway here. 3-3 the tie. We'll keep an eye on what's happening for Latvia and Ukraine with Chibra and Tom Riddle as well. You're watching Ukraine going north on your screen. Andre in Ukraine. Heck, representing Team Ukraine right here on your screen. That's a chance there for Rouse that just kind of dipsy doodle dangle dinked and dunked its way over to the goalie. We'll get a stoppage here early on in the second. Faceoff will come out to his left. The goaltender here, and again, going north on your screen is Ukraine. Heck, face-off won by Rouse. Back to the point shot, and it scores! A point shot tipped in. A beauty of a goal set up there from the point to point. Hey, that's Junior Penns-esque right there on that D2D. -D. That shot goes in, and we now have a lead again in this contest. And we saw in the last game versus Eki that Rouse loved to try to use those points to get some shots off. He does it again here and finally is able to get it to convert. A nice little tip, as you mentioned there, Nick, that had it on that play. He hadn't had that set up yet. Got it on that one. Almost a response there by Ukraine. Heck, spinning around now as time now on the side of Rouse. If he can just get one more, it's what he's thinking. Meanwhile, five gone in the other matchup with Chibra and Tom Riddle in the third. Chibra up two to one. So 
Latvia in good shape right now against Ukraine, who has surprised us this series. Can Latvia have another surprise in store for us? Time will tell us. That's banked across the blue line. Now finally sent through for Heck. Rouse got it back through center. Spins once. Tries to feed that one along. That'll hit the left side boards. Poked once and twice. Backed out to the D. Trying to feed that one in down low. It'll bounce off the boards collected behind the net. Two men there and a penalty coming up here. Power play opportunity for Rouse with six gone in the second. Third, rather. Sorry. This is potentially a big chance here for Rouse to be able to extend on this lead on the power play. He knows that Lafayette needs these points. He has to try to convert here on this opportunity while he has it. That's what happens when you watch two Canada versus Canada Latvia versus Ukraine uh, games at the same time, one in the third period, one in the second. You get your numbers messed up here and there, but nevertheless, we are right here uh, in the second period of this game on the Xbox side. That pass through and a sprawling goalkeeper will make the save. will make a second, throw it out. Minute gone in the power play. He's got a wide open shot in the front and could not put it past the keeper. Shot there goes wide. Actually, that was bounced off the glove. And sent along. 2v2 coming in. Trying to feed that one in. Poke checked off the stick of the goalkeeper. Bars all get bumped off of it. And now Rouse trying again. Lots of room up the right side. Good feed out. Trying to send that one across. No, that's poke checked away. Out to his point, man. No, got to feed it in front and scores. So the patience paying off for Rouse. Team Latvia Two goal advantage in this Xbox side. And that is what Latvia needed. And Rouse is stepping up in the big moment when they needed him to. Two big goals back to back after it was a back and forth affair. And now Ukraine, heck, trying to find some answers. It's been all Rouse in the second period. It looks like we're going to transition over to Cheeber and Tom Riddle. is is a 2-2 two -two scoreline over there. Third period, things are starting to get hot and heavy here, Nick. Yeah, when points matter, we're going to switch to the games that are happening where they matter the most. That's right here with Chibital. Meanwhile, in your other games here, I do have a scoreline update for you in just a moment, but spin moves around there. That shot rips off the goalkeeper's blocker pads. And another shot there, gloved out of the sky. We'll hold on for a whistle. So that scoreline update, Burke it all down by one against Luki in the PlayStation side between Denmark and Italy. And then Pro-Am versus Hannes. That game is underway as well. It's the third period, four to two for Hannes. So Italy leading against Denmark in both of those games, Brandon. So this could go any way. Oh man, Group A is shaping up <laughs> to be a good one. We had it yesterday. We're getting it again today. My friends, you don't want to go anywhere. You're going to want to see how this shapes out. You can't get it anywhere else but right here. You know, maybe it's our fault. We said, hey, we got some bangers in Group A and B. Uh, but we mentioned some names that were not Italy. I guess that's our apologies. Uh, no slight there. They are definitely making a statement here. Maybe they, maybe they took that as motivation because they have stepped up in a big way today. And it's funny. You look at Italy, five goals for 21 against. They were one and three, but you know what they say. Sometimes it's just a matter of stepping up to the matchups that you need to. Denmark was right ahead of them. They have two games in hand on Denmark. That's exactly what Italy's doing right here. So give them a lot of credit. May have not mentioned them as much as we were talking about Latvia doing the playoff run last season. Denmark, because they came so close. But Ukraine stepping up the way they have. Italy stepping up the way they have. Group A, the group of the underdog. Who is going to take that last spot? We're going to find out here in just a matter of the next hour. Italy versus Latvia will be one of your final matches in Group A, and then Ukraine versus Finland. I think we got to we, we might have to four box that with what's going to happen, but we'll do the math later on. We'll figure out what matches to watch. But right now, a two versus two matchup: Chibra, Tom Riddle. A hundred seconds left, and time winding down. Here comes Chibra. Chibra up the right side. He's got some room, trying to find his way in. Else Gates on the back side. That was a good move there to buy some space, but. Couldn't capitalize on the open lane. That one stripped from him behind the net. Now Tom Riddle will move it out. He gets rocked in front of his own bench. Back down the other way. Now Chiba tries to one-touch deep that one. My goodness. He almost pulled that off under a minute here. 40 real-time seconds to conclude the third period. That shot, rebound, chance, another chance. And a good save there by Dreiger. He holds on behind him to stop and get a whistle. 
It's a game of inches, and that was a matter of inches right there. Can Chibra get a big win for Latvia to keep them in it? Can Ukraine snag some points? Nick, I'm handing it off to you. Final 30 seconds in this regulation period. Third period just getting underway in the counter matchup on the Xbox side. This is the PlayStation side. 20 seconds now. Chibra looking to get on some defense here. Get that puck away from Tom Riddle, who's on the attack, and he does. Still picked up, though. Loose puck at the right circle. Now here comes Chibra once more. Eight seconds now. Self-sauce. Got room. Shot score! Picks it up with six seconds on the self-sauce. And he takes the lead for Latvia. How about that Chibra Shades of 2022? A late goal keeps them alive, potentially. Oh my goodness. The short side snipe gives Chibra the lead late. And he wins it on the PlayStation side for his country. Unbelievable. If you want to talk and look at that goal Beauty. right there. Remember when I said someone was going to do a move where they went through everyone and then ended it with a windmill deep past the goalie? Guess who did it? Chibra. I need a I, you, Nick, I need a Latvian fan, friend. Brandon, to go in and grab me like the highlight compilation of Chibra over the last two years. <laughs> I mean, I'm telling you, man. Chibra heard us and he said, oh, you think that someone's going to potentially outdo it? How about I outdo myself? Not just with a goal like that, not just with a goal to get our team back in it, but a goal to win this game. Those plays, those moments can shift the way a group was. And how about Rouse up five to four, but it looks like Ukraine had just put one in the net, Nick. And Chibra said, I took that personally. <laughs> As he Insanity. put his country on his back again, again, another year, another pressure moment, another Chibra stellar performance as a move here by Ukraine. Heck, ties it up in the third period, and we've got a game on the Xbox side, Brandon. Oh, oh, oh boy, ladies and gentlemen, this is absolutely nuts. It does not get much better than that. A pretty move, a pretty play, and it ties the game. How about this, Nick? He was down by two before we tuned in. All of a sudden, <laughs> in just a matter of two minutes, Ukraine Heck ties this game back up. Not sure if he knows the results of what happened on the PlayStation side, but Ukraine needs these points. Latvia needs these points, potentially even more. And these two men decided right here. Denmark and Italy scoreline changes. Denmark now with the lead in both. Oh, sorry. In just one of those competitions, Ooh. four to three. On the PlayStation side, Burkadal over uh, uh, Burkadal over Luki. Sorry, and then on the other side, Pro Am tied four to four on the Xbox side. Wow! So we might have those to watch as well here, but we'll keep the action right here. Five to five, Rouse versus Ukraine Heck. Ukraine Heck going north on your screen. Barzal's got it in the slot area, pushed out to the side. He'll be hassled and bullied for the puck. And they'll move it on by Rouse. Rouse has it on the self-sauce. Tried to go down low. Faked it. Good shot there. And a pad save. Tries it again and scores. So Rouse now. He gets the go-ahead goal to put himself back in the lead. Team Latvia knocking on that spot. They want that seed to get back into the playoff phase. This Latvian team has ice in their veins in the clutch moments where they need goals the most. They just always seem to find a way to get. We've seen it from Chibra. Rouse his teammate this year getting an example. But Ukraine would have potentially to get a chance right back with just wide. This action is heating up left and right here. It's 4-4 four to four in the burkadal Luki match as well with five minutes to go. We'll keep an eye on that one as well. Bring you the scoreline update there. But for right now, we lock it in here. Pro-Am is in overtime in the Xbox side as well. Oh, my. There's, there's games afoot, Brandon. Games afoot, I tell you. 
And that's big because remember, the winner now only gets two points. So every point matters. That game going to overtime, either side going to get a point, but they also lose a point as well if they win. Oh, and Pro-Am just got the overtime winner. I'm going to try to get to that if we can. There it is. The overtime wow. winner, Pro-Am, gets it. Look at me. I got that one pegged that time. <laughs> but, man, Pro-Am gets the OT winner against Hannes. So two points over to Denmark. Italy gets one. Those two are third and fourth, respectively. Let's switch back, though, to uh, Ukraine and Latvia. Five to play here. I'm going to pull up the other feed for uh, the game between Birkadal and Luki to watch that one as well. But here we are with Rouse as we're cutting back and forth, baby. We got to cover everything. Point shot. No traffic in front. That's played out. Four to play here. It's 5-4 with three minutes to go in the burkadal Luki match. We'll keep an eye on that one as well. So we'll go back and forth if we need to there. But right now we'll lock it in on Ukraine. Heck, with the puck, down by one, trying to buy some time. Oh, he tried to. Did that, was that a Michigan attempt? I think it was, Brandon. It might have been. It might have been the flare showing out. Short side chance there. He tried to go far side, but I think it was picked up by the AI in the middle there instead. And here he comes. Rouse for Latvia. One minute to go here. Real time, 60 seconds to conclude. Two minutes in the Denmark-Italy match. We'll go to that after this. One minute now here. Point. Rouse. Center point. Holding. Trying to feed that one into the high slot area. Gets stripped three or four times. And out comes with it Ukraine. Heck, he'll skate through. Lots of speed. Trying to find that middle. Can't get there. He'll pull up. Back skate. Trying to drive it through. My goodness, a good chance there, and the shot bounces off the goalkeeper. As he picked it up with some authority, they're pulling out all the stops to punch their ticket, and time is winding down now for Ukraine in this matchup. We're on the Xbox side here. We saw Latvia step up with Chibra in just a few minutes ago. Now 15 seconds. Can Rouse hold on? He gets pushed along the boards. Final eight now. Ukraine. Heck. Has it. Left side. Dances. Finds way through. Loses the puck. Poke checks. Takes a penalty. And that's going to do it. So Latvia wins this one as well. And as I say that, we flip over to here. And if I'm not mistaken, that's a 6-5 with just mere seconds left for Birkadal against Italy. Shot there comes in. We're watching Birkadal right now. So Italy trying to climb back, going south on your screen. He's going to hold it, trying to get out of his zone. He will. 10 seconds now. Just trying to buy some time. Goes around the net, holds on. So Birkadal picks up regulation points there. Huge for Denmark over Italy as they go 6-5. to five. Lots of action happening right now, Brandon, as we try to take a breath from the four games we just witnessed. And that is massive. Everything you just saw in the last 10 minutes is massive. Ukraine comes out pointless in their matchup, if I'm correct. And then you have Denmark. They have the two from the overtime win, the three right there. That gives them five extra points. So from six to 11, did Ukraine pick up a point there? I don't think they did. Uh, looking here real quick. Give me one second. No, I don't think so. Either of those were not in overtime. So Denmark takes possession of number two with 11 points. Ukraine is in third with nine. Denmark, however, done for the day. They have to sit and watch the matchup of Ukraine to see if they win their last two games. If Ukraine wins one of those last two games, they will pass over Denmark but now you have to remember there's the Latvia factor they have six points they are now back in the hunt Italy I think with that loss may have been eliminated with not getting enough points to stay in competition but Ukraine a chance to take number two Denmark all they can do is sit back watch and hope for the results to fall their way Latvia still with a chance need to win out and get a couple of results in their favor as well the maximum points Latvia can have is 12 so it all depends on what Ukraine does. They cannot win more than one, if I'm correct. I don't know how the tiebreaker would go between the two. But Latvia, if they can win both and get a little bit of help, they can be in. Ukraine, if they win one game, they would pass Denmark. 
Looking at our sheet here, the witching hour is upon us. The mathematics will hold true. We'll look at the standings when we come back right now. Italy versus Latvia coming up, as well as Ukraine versus Finland. We will keep an eye on all of those matches as we need to now with what just transpired on our screens with Latvia's heroics there to hold on to the lead in both of their games. Meanwhile, Group B will be taking place to start things off. United States versus Austria, Canada versus Great Britain. We will probably not go to those games depending on what happens with the Group A, but then we will begin Group B coverage here shortly. We've got to reset. We've got to figure out the math. We've got to go to the restroom. You've got to get popcorn. You've got to get your seat. You've got to go and get your flags. Let me see what happens in chat. Who do you have? We need to know. You are watching the 2023 IIHF E-World Championship presented to you by Skoda and Strauss. Don't go anywhere. I promise you more action is coming your way. Stay tuned. For sticking with us, we are kicking right back in the action. Ukraine Heck versus Eki, and it's Ukraine Heck with the opening goal five minutes in. Remember the stipulation Ukraine could clinch a playoff spot if they get one win versus Finland. But Finland, the number one team in the group, they've locked that in. Could they bring down the Giants, shock the world, and punch their ticket into the quarterfinals? This is Eki with possession, or at his point of view, he's moving north on the screen in the black jerseys. Ukraine Heck moving down. Downward with the white away Canada jerseys. This is Eki cycling it around, trying to find the tying answer. So far, not able to do so. And a nice defensive play from Ukraine. Heck, it's going to be really interesting to see how he plays this. Not sure if he knows the situation or not. But remember, just three points could potentially lock them in. Four would definitely do the job. But here comes Eki after the turnover. Taking it up the left boards, holding it, giving the pass across. Nobody home. And it's turned over, but a turnover immediately afterwards by Ukraine Heck. Ukraine Heck, nice job there defensively, trying to hold Eki to the outside. Eki moves his way in, trying to find a passing lane. Just holding it, lots of space. Maybe shoots and does. Slap shot, another chance, and he scores. The rebound and hit off of the face, I think, of Cole Sillinger. And then all of a sudden, he got it right back on the stick, put it back in. And Eki ties this game up at one piece. Taking a look at the replay there, the slap shot. Looks like it did hit off a cylinder and then go right back down to the ice. Pretty difficult play there, to nevertheless. But Eki certainly not complaining. An unassisted goal to get this back to a 1-1 game. And Eki has possession here yet again in the neutral zone. Holding it to the right boards. Trying to get something. Finds his way over to the corner. Eki down low, pinned against the boards. Nice job from Ukraine Hick defensively. 
as they try to move it up. Ukraine Hack moving it down, spins, holds backhand, spins again, trying to get into the middle, did not have the space to make that second spin move work. Great idea, just a little bit off there from the bump. And here comes Barzil Ferecki, left boards holding back behind the net, backhand now to the right side, looking for space, goes behind again, holds it, looking for a pass, gets it across, couldn't connect to Batherson who was there and open, but the pass didn't get to him. Here comes Ukraine Heck now, over to the boards, tripped up from behind, there's going to be a power play for Ukraine Heck, 5-11 to go, tied at 1. Face off to the right side of Dreiger for Eki, right side of our screen. Wrestling zone face off here for Ukraine Heck on the other end, tied up, face off one by Eki. Eki trying to move things up here, a little bit of a power kill hopefully on his end, but Ukraine Heck trying to stop that. Trying to get the goal and take his lead back. A nice save from Thompson there for Ukraine Hack. Gets the puck back. Moves it up the boards. Holds it. Gets it over to the other side to Sandheim. Sandheim. Nice little protect puck move. Trying to keep it out of the grasp of Eki defensively. Ukraine Hack moving it behind the net. Back up to the point. Back over to the left side. From Batherson. Saved by Dreiger. And Eki's going to keep it in play. 30 seconds to go on the power play. Eki has it. Moves it to the left side, moves it up to White Cloud in the middle, toe drags, lost the puck, didn't keep it with him. Ten seconds on the power play, Ukraine Heck has numbers. Three on one, whole shot blocker saved by Dreiger. Five on five now is move, brave Ukraine Heck moves across and could get the shot off. Things happening with rapid pace, 2.30 to go, we're still tied at one. Eki has possession. Wild, wild first period to start here in both contests for Finland and Ukraine. Tied one apiece. Here we go, shot on after the play on the rebound, goes wide, hit the side of the net. One minute to play, fast minute here in the first period. Ukraine Heck holding behind, shot across, he couldn't swing it through. Nice defensive play from Eki out in front, could have been a goal otherwise, goaltender was beat. Eki holds it, six seconds, holding, moving back past the blue line, couldn't get his little poke check, and Eki is going to hold on to this and let the time expire. Tied at one on the Xbox side of this Ukraine-Finland matchup. Ukraine heck, Eki, a win for Finland of any regard, could push their ticket. And on the other side, Tom Rule and Jesse also tied at one. Nick, what more could you want, my friend? Yeah, what more can I say like a Jay-Z song? There's my first song reference for today. Uh, are you not entertained? Is this not why you are here? Another Jay-Z song reference. I'm just knocking them out one by one now that we're into the last uh, two matchups of Group A. Here in front of you right now, five to go on the Tom Riddle and Jesse L. PlayStation side of this competition. As they move it along, we are watching Finland's side going north on your screen in the red jerseys. Black for Eki. He likes to be a little different. Just keeping us on our toes, Brandon. That's what it is. They couldn't coordinate colors just because to keep us busy. But Ukraine's wearing white. That's what matters. There's a chance there on the short side from behind the net pass. Almost caught Jesse sleeping. As he gets clocked there at the left circle. Oh, my. I felt that one from here. I'm in Florida. I felt that 4,000 miles away. As Tom Riddle has it behind the net once more, looking to feed that one through a short side screen. And Jesse will hold on. I know we're just a period into both of these two matchups between Finland and Ukraine, but the one thing that's standing out to me, both Tom Riddle and Ukraine Heck going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Eki and Jesse. If anyone had questions on why they are at that number two spot right now in position to be in the playoffs, they're showing you why right now on your screen. Scoreline update for you coming in just a moment. I got it for you, but right now, last 30 seconds of this period, one-to-one. -one. Behind the net, Jesse trying to wrap that one in. They'll throw it out, loose puck at that slot area. That's dangerous, but they got it out without any harm done. Three seconds, one last chance, trying to put that shot on. They will, blocker up and wide. In the other game, 1-1, one, one, 14 minutes to go between Ukraine Heck and Eki. Meanwhile, Luki versus Chibra. <coughs> Chibra up 2-0 against Luki in the first period on the Xbox side. Rouse up 2-0 against Hannes Stoll. Group B competition has gone underway right now. Dodzi won nothing against, uh, in their US game, top shelf cookie up over Felix. Cad winning over Martindale against Great Britain for Canada. And Regs up one nothing over Bruce 
force for Great Britain and a score here as I got all that done and then now it's two to one and here we go. Yassi L with the goal. That is huge for Finland and Ukraine. And all of a sudden, the pressure shifting now a little bit more towards Ukraine. Jesse just, I believe that was 42 seconds into the period, getting that one. And he might not be done here. Next spin move from Dubois. Just couldn't get the pass off. Back and forth action between these two games. Kick that one along. Jesse still has it. Now he's got it. Short side goes for and scores! A great goal there across the mouth of the net. And Jesse puts a staple into that goal. It's three to one. And considering the circumstances behind this, I think Tom Rule is gonna wish he had Jesse's goal on that one. That is a beautiful move from Jesse. Starting to turn it on all of a sudden, this period looks like a totally different player from what we saw in the first. As our very good friend King Lime would say, heat up, and we're heating up. They get clocked a couple of times. We've got it again, and he scores on the backhand. Oh, my goodness. The floodgates have opened up for Team Finland, and here we go. How about that, Team Finland, with Jesse starting to turn up the heat. Three unanswered for him, and he's still pushing the issue for more. You kind of have to. We talk about it. Goals matter. And they matter for Ukraine as well. It's still tied in that matchup between Eki and Ukraine Heck. So we'll keep an eye on that one as well. But we'll focus our attention here at least for a little bit longer. We'll see if Tom Riddle can respond. Remember, Ukraine, two games in hand right now. The two games you're seeing on your screen, at least one of them for right this second. They're down two points. They have to win one of these games, or at least take one to an overtime win to even get close against Denmark. And he scores again, though. That might not happen, so let's turn our attention over, Brandon, to the other game here, Ukraine Heck versus Eki. Final two minutes of the second period. <laughs> Eki has it now. How? Just want to say, how about this story? Ukraine Heck against Eki, all the pressure potentially shifting to him. He has to knock off arguably the best player in the world to get his country into the playoffs. Nick, this is storybook written all over it. He's in position to do it. He really is. His time winding down here in the second period. 20 more minutes for Ukraine Heck to maybe get something going. Eki's not going to let that time run. That, oh, my God. I lost all my words as I thought that was going in at .1 seconds, but it didn't. The end of the second period right there. More scoreline updates for you. Chibra for Latvia over Luki 3-0 in the second. On the other side of that matchup, Rouse 3-0. They're just keeping it matched together. Good on Latvia for doing that. Over Hannes Stoll 3-0 as well in the second period midway 2. On the other side, Group B. Dodzi over Ty for Austria 3-0. Top Shelf Cookie losing 2-1 to one versus Austria on the Xbox side. Meanwhile, the Canadians, strong start here. Cat up 2-0 in the second. Regs up 6-0 to zero in the first against Bruce Force and Team Great Britain. We'll have more on that in just a little bit. First of all, 20 minutes right here. Brandon, what does Ukraine need to do right now? I think the biggest thing is just trying to find a goal and just trying to slow Eki down from that. If they can just get one, get that advantage. You can focus on the defensive end from that point forward, but you have to get at least one goal to get out of that tie situation. If Eki takes the lead, as he does on that goal, right on cue, Eki makes it a 2-1 advantage for Finland. Well, that's what you said that Ukraine needed to do, but Eki did it instead, and that was what he needed. Eki's patience, man. I tell you, there's nobody more patient in NHL esports than Eki. He just plays his game. It does not matter what's going on. It doesn't matter what the score is. It doesn't matter what the situation. He just does what he does. And if you do it, it's like a blackjack counter. If you're card counting in blackjack, eventually you will win at long scale. Never short term. Long term. That's what Eki does here as we see him masterfully do it yet one more time. Absolutely, as things shifting, Ukraine has to win this game to stay alive. 
shot across for Mackey goes wide. And if I'm correct, Nick, you said Latvia right now winning both games. If every result right now holds the way it does, Latvia would go from five to two just from the last two matchups alone. And they would snag that spot from Denmark, who was watching intensely. They hold the number two spot. As here's Ukraine Heck holding it, looking, trying to find something behind the net. No pass available. Nice job there from Eki. Oh, this turned over. Puck was in front. Held by Dragger. Ukraine Heck almost tied it up there. And it's still 5-1 to one in the Finland matchup against Tom Riddle. So coming up into the third period there, you're right. This has to be it for Ukraine right now. And if you want to talk about how important this is, we talked about how Denmark is watching. Remember, Nick, last year they were in the same situation with Germany. They held the two spot, had to wait and see Germany's result. Germany won an overtime that put them through over Denmark as a chance from Ukraine. Almost goes in, but a save by Dreiger. So if you're Denmark, you're kind of having flashbacks to what happened last year and hoping that you don't have the same thing happen. Yeah, you hope not, but we'll have to see what happens. Denmark is done. The other four teams are playing right now. And as we mentioned, Group B is underway. We'll switch to Group B here in just a little bit. You're not going to want to miss that action. Featured matchup between U.S. and Canada coming soon. But here we are. It is Sunday. It is afternoon here on the East Coast in Florida. It is evening time across the pond. Happy to have you here. Nice to have you there as Ukraine hack. Had a nice shot right there in front. Try to get the second shot off. Can't do so. And Eki will move it along through center real quick. Nice pass up. He'll hold it. Takes that shot just to buy a rebound. He did. Has the puck on his stick once more. Stopping behind the net. Waiting. Three men in front there for Ukraine. He'll do it again. Time on his side. Up by one. Not trying to give up anything easy. Off the post there. Just trying to tuck that one home. Ukraine's got to get a little bit more aggressive now. Under six to play in regulation. He'll get rubbed off of it from the corner. And here comes Ukraine Heck. Representing Ukraine. This could be it for Remember. them if they don't get it going now. And remember, it takes three points for Ukraine to pass Denmark. So that's something to keep in mind. Two points would tie them. They would then come down to the tiebreakers. So three points passes them. Two points would just tie it. So an overtime win could help them. But a regulation win would clinch it unless something happens with Latvia. And this is what we talk about with game management. You got to pull out the stops right now. Will we see a pulled goalie? We'll have to see as he tries to go through his legs to score that one. And he was denied. I think you pull right here. Shot in, rebound, chance, pushed away. He couldn't put his stick on it. Oh, that was big. That's going to be one to look back on here if that key can close us out. Under 100 seconds now in regulation. Behind the net, Eki again working from his kitchen. He likes Got it back pressure. there. Yeah, you have to go for it. Got a pressure. There's You have to pressure. He's just going to hold it. You have to pressure here if you're Ukraine. You're down the points. You can't get in if you lose this game. I don't understand the strategy on this one. No, yeah, you're absolutely right. This is, you've got to go get it. And that 30 was about 30 seconds plus seconds the off there. The Ukraine now can't get that one scooped up. Eki's got it. Lots of space in front of him. He'll go behind the net again. There he is. 20 seconds now. Eki just trying to Not do what he's got to do. And there goes Ukraine Heck. One last effort. Bumped off. Eki passes it behind his net. He gets it out of the zone. No, it's still in. Three seconds. Holding, spinning, loses it, and that's going to do it. Finland wins this game. Two to one, Eki challenged, but comes up victorious. And Ukraine so, so close to the story of a lifetime. 
just gonna fall a little bit short. And if you're a Denmark fan, you're graying a little wider, but you can't get too happy yet because remember, Latvia, if they collect all six points, would pass Denmark. So we still have to find out those results, but Ukraine officially done. They are out of the playoff running. A great story for them after, remember, Nick, they were pointless in their showing last year. For them to even be in this situation shows the improvement that this group made. So Ukraine, maybe not in the playoffs, but definitely should hold their head up high, represent their country absolutely amazingly, nearly stuck in. But now, attention turning to that Italy and Latvia match because that is where we decide it's going to be either Denmark in that number two spot or Latvia in that number two spot. Six points would clinch it for Latvia, 11 would take it down the tiebreakers. So we'll switch gears here to Rouse. It is two to one, or sorry, three to one with a power play. Two goals down is Hannes. So now Latvia playing for points as well, Brandon. Latvia playing for every point they can get. They're up by two, as you mentioned, Nick. As we saw a little bit of both Rouse and Hannes Stalin. This Latvia team, you have to remember how improbable this was. Four games in, they hadn't collected a single point. They needed a lot to go their way, and they had to win out. Now they're in a situation that have all of those things happen, but they have to close the deal here. As here comes Hannes Stoll, 2-0, on pass across, he scores! Not so fast! Here comes Italy. It's a 3-2 to two lead in favor of Rouse, but the lead thinned a little bit on that play. So Rouse with the advantage as of now, but still some work to do with a little over eight minutes to go. Can he hold on? Still have Chibra playing against Luki on the other end as well. We'll get you the score of that game as soon as we have it. Remember, Latvia, they need six points. They have six points right now. If they win both of these games, they will go to 12. That would be one over Denmark for number two. If they just get five, they would end up being tied and it would come down to the tiebreaker situations of that head-to-head -head competition, both in terms of the goal differential and the results. But nevertheless, have to win both games in some capacity, does Latvia. Here comes Rowles. Shot goes wide on the backhand attempt. Finds it to the point. Moves in, has some room in a slot, couldn't get a shot off. And here comes Hans Stahl, but it's turned over at the blue line. Now Rouse has it. Back in the offensive zone, pass across. Back hit, saved by Dreiger. All for the right path. And here comes Hans Stahl. Five and a half minutes to play. Can Latvia hold on? Rouse moving it up after he created the turnover as Mercer to the right boards. Skates back a little bit, holds it, goes behind the net, tries to find some space, gives it over to Wong. Wong down to Mercer. Mercer looks, finds the slot shot over to <laughs> He scores! Rouse with the goal. It's two to four now. Could that be the goal that Latvia needed to stay alive? As Finland and Eki. Bring in their raid party of 76, the two goal marker to bring the lead to four to two for Latvia. It happens on your screen and Latvia really clawing to get some points right now. Thank you, Eki, for the raid. And for those that just joined us, we're about to find out who will be joining Eki and Jessiel in Finland in the playoffs from Group A. The situation, Denmark has 11 points. They hold the number two spot, but Latvia currently in their two games. If they win both, it's six points they would be in. If they win one in regulation and win one in overtime, it would come down to the tiebreakers. But nevertheless, Latvia has to win both games, at least one of them in regulation, to keep in it. Here comes Raus. Goal! for Barzal! The cross crease play! Rouse makes it a 2-5 to five game and that regulation win may have just been delivered. And that's happening on this side as well. Five goals here. Five goals for Chibra up 5 nothing in the third period with 35 seconds to go. So at least three points there and it might be another three on the screen you're watching right now. Can Latvia pull off the comeback of a lifetime? They had zero stage points in four games played at the start. They looked well out of the water, and it looked like they had no chance, but the results have gone their way. They've won out since that point. 
That's the chance for how the stall won't go. And now if they can close the deal with both of these games, they will move on to the playoffs. And if you're Denmark, Nick, we talked about it, they were in this exact same situation last year, holding the number two spot, waiting for results. It was Germany that had an overtime game-winning goal that pushed them over Denmark for the number two spot. Denmark was on the outside looking in. They're looking at the same fate now, but now that Hannes Stoll has something to say about a late goal, cuts that lead down to two with 51 seconds left. Getting a little bit spicy. Hey, I'm here for Italy trying to do what they can do for their country and represent it well. They are playing till the end, and they're trying to play spoiler. Here we go. Can they do it? Italy, no playoff implications for them, but nevertheless would love to try to grab some points, play spoiler. They've looked good so far on the group stage, despite not necessarily getting some of those results their way. And here comes Hanastoli yet again, but it's turned over immediately. Rouse has it. And if you're Rouse, I don't know if he knows the situation. You want to try to get those goals typically is the mindset, but he can just hold on to it here, knowing that he has the three points and that his teammate Chibra does as well. Pass it over at the left boards, moves it to the corner. Lowry holds it for Rouse, holds it, gives it to C C Cousins. Cousins, back over to the defender, and it's turned over to Hannah Stahl, but it's turned right back over to Rouse. Rouse has it, tries to give it over to Dubois, but it's picked off. Here comes Hannah Stahl, 16 seconds left. He's down by two, has to act quickly. Pass over to Mercer, saved by Dragger on stick. Another chance saved by Dragger. Another shot saved by Dragger again. Three shots, three saves with 10.1 to go. And that right there may have just shut the door. Yeah, that might have done it. But hey, that did it for both. That did it for Rouse and Chibra. And that's what's important here for Latvia. Rouse passes it over. Five seconds left. He's just going to keep this in possession. One second. Rao is going to get the victory over Hannes Stoll. Not sure if the Chibra and Luki game is finished yet, but three points in the bag for Latvia. They currently sit at nine with that win. So if it is a regulation win closed out for Chibra, it is. Latvia passes Denmark and they are in. Six points in regulation for Latvia right now. As I'm trying to get these standings updated, we'll get them to you. But that should move Latvia to 12 points, putting them in second place. And how big would that be for considering the amount of circumstances that had to go right? They had to beat Italy in both. They had to have Finland beat Ukraine in both. They had to beat everyone in front of them they had to beat ukraine themselves in both games i mean everything had to go right for latvia to get in and everything has gone right they've taken care of a lot of that on their own especially because remember when they had those zero points their two matchups versus ukraine so they had to do a lot on their own doing and guess what nick Three to two latvia win six to five latvia win it was all by just one goal just a play here and a play there. The difference between Latvia and Ukraine being in. And as of now, we're going to get the confirmation. But it looks like Latvia has clawed their way all the way from the bottom of the group table into the playoffs. Yeah, it looks like they did. I'm going to pull the standings up here shortly. Uh, I'm going to refresh one more time, make sure we got that incorrectly. I still don't have the final tabulation for Finland and Ukraine, but we'll mathematics that in just a second. But yeah. This is, this is, we looked at this coming into this matchup with Latvia having zero, zero points before the last match. We were like, wow, that doesn't look good for the story we told for them. We said that in the break. We're like, wow, I guess the story has changed, but maybe not. This might not be the case. Honestly, I think that if there's anything that we've learned over the past seven to eight months covering this tournament, Latvia is the team that just never goes away. It doesn't matter who it is. It doesn't matter who it's against. They are the team that just no matter the situation never goes away. You do not count them out. You do not eliminate them until it is over with and the buzzers hit triple zeros because they do things like this. And I think there was that question in the back of people's minds saying, okay, they had the great run last year. They squeaked into the playoffs. They weren't in the strongest group. They had a good series versus Sweden once in a lifetime, right? Yep. Can they do it again this year? And in those first four games, it looked like, no, they weren't playing well. They dropped though all four of those games, collected no points from them. And they were sitting dead last in the group with no points. Everyone they were looking up on. And then all of a sudden, 
They get a result here. They get a result there. Italy steals a few games from Denmark. Ukraine falls to Finland in both. Latvia takes care of business both versus um, Ukraine and versus Italy and earns their way in. I mean, if you have any questions on if Latvia is for real, they've answered those questions today. And Nick, I believe that we just got the confirmation. I think it has just been locked in. If we want to try to pull that up here really quickly, Finland at the number one spot. That was question confirmed. Perfect 8 0 0 and 0. Latvia, if I am correct from the looks of it, not sure if it's updated as Bang. there it is. Latvia officially in the playoffs from the cellar <laughs> to the summit, number five to number two from pointless to playoffs. Latvia is in. What a comeback and what a turnaround. Wow. When we're looking at literally 40 minutes ago, Ukraine, we're talking about, wow, they could split the series. They're tied at one. Denmark's got to really worry about Ukraine. They could take one here and steal it. And we're like, wow, Italy was up by two in both of their games versus Denmark. And then Denmark won those games. And then for that to happen, for Latvia to sit there in fifth and climb out, like you said, they're back in. And that, and you know what they say, Brandon, that you just have to get in. You just have to get through the group stage and anything can happen from there. Latvia is allowing that to come to fruition. They manifested it. It's a tall test. You're up against, you know, we, we look at the group settings and number two, group A will face first place group C, which we covered yesterday. And we'll go back to that. And that's Czechia. So like, it's not like Ooh, it's a walk in the park. One. Right, it's going to be a hard match, but you're in. And anything can happen in the aggregate when you're in. Yeah. And keep in mind, too, that this is going to be interesting because both Czechia and Latvia made it to the semifinals last year, were bounced against Finland and the USA. So these are two teams that return players in Pep Costa and Chibra that were on those semifinals teams last year. This time they meet in the quarterfinals to try to get their way. Only one will get their way to the semifinals, but that's going to be a really, really fun matchup. I'm excited for that, but I think the story, Latvia scratching and clawing their way from no points to the playoffs. And as a matter of fact, if you're looking at the chat on Twitch, Chibra says, and I quote, who would have thought? <laughs> I feel like he may have thought a little bit deep down on the inside, but I will tell you this, there are plenty that counted Latvia out after those first four games. Boy, did they go and flip the script completely from what we were looking at. We went from Denmark to Ukraine to potentially Italy to Latvia, who was last halfway through the group stage and find their way in. Latvia just doing what Latvia does. We've seen it from them before. We just saw it from them again. We did. And now we look forward. We see... Group B, here are your standings from what we did not see while we were watching Latvia do the unthinkable for the second year in a row. Your updated score lines across the board. U.S. winning both of their games versus Austria, 7-2 to two and 4-3. to three. And then emphatically, Canadians, the Canada, the Canadians 27 and regs, 4-1 to one and 10-1 to one respectively against Great Britain. We are ready for the second setup of matches between Group B, Great Britain versus the U.S., Austria versus Hungary. And as you look at it right here, anybody. I mean, I know we have our odds on favorites, right? We, we can look at the chat. I can ask them right now. I can say, hey, chat, who do we have winning Group B? And I think you're going to see about 70% Canada and about 30% U.S. But that does not mean there's not room for the same thing to happen. What we just saw in Group A happen again in Group B. And keep in mind, too, that both with Canada and the U.S. being in the same group, those are two teams that typically would be locks from, I guess, the public eye, so to speak, to win their group. So that knocks one team out of that potentially in this group. So if you're Hungary, if you're Austria, if you're Great Britain, you're going to have to go through the U.S. and Canada and beat them in order to get in. You're not going to be able to rely on just winning against themselves. They're going to have to punch up, go and beat. Canada 
go and beat the U.S. because they're both in that group. Only two teams get in. It's going to have to be an upset, but guess one of those two. Four one of those teams to make it interesting. It's going to be fun to see if it happens, but I think the U.S. and Canada are probably the odds-on favorites to make it out of that group, but we just saw some crazy stuff happen. I'm for it. Let's give us more. I'm good with it. I'd love to see it. Uh, me too. I I'm here. We're here with you for another four games of mat uh, four matchups, eight other games to play, 16 matchups if you times it by two. A lot of hockey to be played. I've got a full schedule list right here coming up on your screen in just mere moments. G U.S. versus Great Britain, Austria versus Hungary. Hungary's first time playing today will be coming your way in just a little bit of moments. Then Hungary versus Great Britain in our featured matchup for this group B live on social media and right here at twitch.tv slash IIHF hockey and on YouTube, U.S. versus Canada. I expect the chat to go ballistic for that matchup. Then we got Canada versus Hungary, Great Britain versus Austria, Austria versus Canada. And to finalize this day of group B play in the group stage of our group stage weekend, U.S. versus Hungary. The way this schedule is lined up, I got it all right here. It's all on this sheet right in front of me, Brandon. The way this schedule is lined up, anything can literally happen. And it's going to happen here in just mere moments as games are about to get started. Underway, we have one. Let's go to it right now. Our very good friend Cookie up against Bruce Force. It's U.S. versus Great Britain. Brandon, take it away. You mentioned that U.S. versus the U.K. Who's going to take this matchup? That's Top Shelf Cookie. We'll talk about him a little bit. One of the more well-known names in the NHL community, especially for his work in the GWC for the NHL. as a chance there from Brute Force. We talked about one of these two teams or one of those three teams outside of U.S. and Canada needing to do some work against the U.S. and Canada. Get in as TSC trying to get back that goal. He goes inside, puts the puck on, and it's going to be saved by Thompson and brought back out. A high-flying pace here early on. You can tell just both teams really just itching to kind of get back out there and play each other. So here's Cookie taking it up the boards. It's hit hard there after the toe drag. That's going to be brute force that picks it up. Gives it over to Sandheim. Sandheim holds, looks. Finds his way over to Dubois down the middle as Brute Force trying to keep it in and get this in the offensive zone, and he will. Gives it over, pass, and is saved after that pass over in front of Sutton. Now here's a breakaway for Cookie, backhand, and he scores on it. So uh, from a missed chance to a converted chance, it's Top Shelf Cookie that opens the scoring up for the U.S. versus the U.K. Top Shelf Cookie, the first time he gets to play in the IIHFE tournament, but don't get it twisted. He won the NHL GWC in 2019, so he is honored, he said, quote, to represent the red, white, and blue. And not only that, but you have to remember, this isn't his first rodeo necessarily within these big tournaments. It's his first time competing in this one, but he's entered just about every single tournament that you can find at the highest level, and it looks like we're going to see him show his skill off a little bit with a penalty shot. It's going to be Dawson Mercer that he will be using for his player. Here we go. Cookie skates in, slows it down. It's Thompson on the goal to the other side. Back for big save there made by Brute Force. It's one of the few times you'll see these guys use the goaltender. Looks like he has a little of that skill in him right there. Still a 1-0 game. Top shelf Cookie up. Right now for the U.S., but here comes Great Britain. Brute Force trying to spin his way past a pair of defenders. Could not do it. And it's passed over to Mercer on the right side. Cookie with it. Holding. Stop shot blocked in front by Brute Force. And he'll take possession now trying to move this thing up with 12 minutes to play here in the first period. Pass over from Cookie. Doesn't go. Picked off, and Brute Force now going to take it. Trying to move his way past the offensive zone as... Cookie, he's one of those guys that where the offense gets the attention, but the defense for him so, so key. And a defensive turnover there as he gets the shot on. Saved by Thompson. Another shot. That one goes wide. Cookie's starting to get the rhythm going offensively. He's still buzzing in the offensive zone. As it will come to all over at the left point. Passes the right point. Hold shot. Left pad save made there by Thompson. And here comes Brute Force on the other side. Moves his way past one. Holds it back over to the pass. Puck looks and he scores. It's an old goal, but it looks like they're going to wave it off. Maybe a kick it in front. Let's see. 
As we get the replay, they're gonna say that was goaltender interference. So no goal, wave off. It would have been the tying mark for Brute Force, but it's going to remain a one goal lead for Top Shelf Cookie. Unfortunate there for Bruce. I'm sure he wanted that one back. As Bruce looking to try to get that one back. There's Cookie currently in the zone. Nice slap shot from the other side. Got blocked by one of his own players. And here comes Bruce on the other end. Looking. Didn't get anything. Now Cookie's going to take it up. And let's pass it past the blue line. Now Sandheim has it back over to Johnson. Johnson pass across. Nice job from Bruce to deflect that and get it over to Thompson, who holds on for the whistle. Face off to the left side. One by Cookie. To the right side. Shot on, blocked in front. Jabot now has another block in front. And nice job there from Bruce. Really defending those points. As a spin move from Cookie to get back. And his own pass across. Dubois couldn't finish it. Would have been a pretty move there if he would have converted. But a nice save there. As another shot from an odd angle. Saved easily by Thompson for Bruce Forrest. He goes on the other end. Was hit hard as he turned it over. And he'll have to give chase to that. It's an icing against Cookie. And it'll be an offensive zone chance for Bruce Forrest on the faceoff. Huge chance here for him to get one past Top Shelf Cookie as the first period's winding down for him. Here we go. Gives it over. Bruce Forrest cycling around. Shot blocked in the slot by Batherson as it's turned over on the transition from Cookie. Holden has it, but he loses possession. And here comes Cookie now. This is to the right side. Hold, spins, looking for a pass. Spins again. Moves his way past. Oh, I think he was looking for that backhand to the left side, Nick. Would have been a great play, but a nice defensive effort from Bruce. Two minutes to play in the first period. Here comes Bruce Force. Moving it up the zone. Breaks it out with Barzol. Takes it in. Gives it to Dubois. Dubois to Batherson. Batherson looking past the puzzle. Trying to get the second pass over to Dubois. Couldn't connect. And a breakaway for Cookie. One minute to play. Has Anderson. Forehand saved by Top. <laughs> it on the left side but cookie holds on to it at the right corner Bruce behind the net passed over to wall on the left side wall looks cookie back to anderson back over to mercer to the right side couldn't connect pass a little strong four seconds to play almost turned over bruce force will keep possession and that will hit double zeros on the clock and we will immediately shift over to the martindale and dodds match of the playstation side of this great britain versus u.s matchup two to two on this and shot in front there from dodds Saved, rebound was there, but no one home. It's going to be a trip, and Martindale with a power play opportunity. We know Martindale very well from sixes. We know him across the European scene. Dodds fairly new, beat our friend Junior Pens in the qualifier semifinals 4-3. to three. He's represented New Jersey Devils in 2021. We'll talk more about him in a little bit, but yeah, he's got an opportunity here to represent the Team USA quite well in this 1v1 tournament. Yeah, Junior Pan, Junior Penn's rather the man who represented the U.S. along with Joss. On both sides. Oh! On, yeah, on both sides is a goal for Martindale. It's 3-2 to two in favor of Great Britain on the PlayStation side. Martindale must have seen two things. One, us going to this feed, and two, the raid from Sports Gamer, who was hosting the Finnish side of the broadcast earlier today. Thank you so much for the raid. Martindale up now by one here in the first period. Big shout out to our friends at Sports Gamer, and they're familiar with the man who just scored again. That's Martindale doubling his lead over Dodds as a 4 2 score. As our good friend Guido in the chat as well. We love Guido. Uh, worked with him many a times. Thank you, Sports Gamer, for all your continued support for the IIHF E World Championship. And I wish you guys nothing but the best during your World Finals uh, 6v6 competition next week. Wish we, we, we could be there. We will be there next year. Lock it in. Lock it in. But as time winds down yeah, here, sure to... uh, Brandon, we got a crazy matchup happening right now. So 4-2 on the PlayStation side for Great Britain and the U.S. However, we go back to Top Shelf Cookie, who's up by three against Bruce Force. We'll say Bruce Force looking to continue that, switching on for a goal trend, not able to find it. We'll see if Cookie can maybe respond as he takes a hit there at the right at the red line. And here comes Bruce trying to find his way. Shot on, saved by Dreiger. Not a lot of danger with that one as here comes Barzil down the left side. 
Turkey looking, holding, goes by the net, wraparound chance. Easy save for Thompson. As Bruce Force will just go ahead and toss that one out and give it over. But Cookie ends up getting it. Gives it over to Barzo at the right corner, holds it. Tight, nice little toe drag, pass over to Dubois. Shot a little bit wide, but he had the space. Lowry picks it up for Cookie. Goes down low, finds Barzo over to Dubois. It would have been a goal, but a nice poke from Bruce in front. And here comes Bruce on the offensive end. It's a three on three poke check from Cookie at the blue line. And a nice job creating that turnover there from top shelf. Cookie, so, so smart defensively. He has on the offensive end now. Shot off from Lowry. Saved. Another chance. Moving his way across. Puck in front. Saved again by Thompson. And Bruce will go ahead and toss it out. And he's going to be tripped behind the net. So the aggression to play that. He knows what Muffet is. And he gets rewarded for his cause. If it's all right with you, Brandon, you're absolutely right. If it's all right with you, I'd like to switch our attention real quick to the Xbox side of our second matchup today uh, in this time slot. Austria versus Hungary. Felix up by three against Berez Baldizar. And if I'm correct, he was a representative of last year. As Felix trying to make up for that loss in his last matchup on the U.S. side of things against Top Shelf Cookie. Now we go all the way back for an icing as we're starting to see Group B slowly but surely take shape a little bit as we talked about Benaz Benazar. He was the returnee from 2022, made it into the group stage. He's been playing NHL with since NHL 94, but he was born in 2001. Respecting wow. the originals, gotta love that. You know, that's, that, that shows dedication to the craft and the love for the sport. That's what we love to see with this global event. Look at the moves there. Uh, and I want to make sure we mention this, because we talk about it a lot as these games have kind of shaped out a little bit. We'll see what happens. We'll watch it on our screen. Uh, and you do your best job, so I love to give you the floor again as we have new viewers in we're setting the stage for us and canada everybody playing canada in this group stage and the reason for that is balance but then that changes in the playoff stage if you could dive into both of those here right now absolutely as is, is ben as well as are moving into the offensive zone but while we do have the moment we'll kind of tell you some of the strategy behind that. So the overalls for each team not balanced within NHL 23. There's no way to specifically balance them for competitive reasons. So if you had, for example, Canada play, or actually a good example, the U.S. playing against Great Britain, the overalls would be rather lopsided there. That'd be around an 83 overall against a 65 overall team. And we want our players to have their best chances, their best available opportunity to have an even match because you want that competitiveness. You want the best player versus the best player. No outside sourcing outside of that. You just want that skill versus that skill. So each team using Team Canada, so it's balanced overalls, same teams across the board, and then come playoff time, you can choose the team of your choice, but you can only choose them one time, and once you select them, you cannot use them again. So if you choose Team Canada for the quarterfinals, you cannot choose them whatsoever for the remainder of the tournament. Have to choose someone else for the semifinals and the finals, and vice versa. So, so just trying to ensure that competitive balance as it wouldn't be as interesting with some of the overalls being the way they are for our teams. It looks like we just had a goal Martindale. in the Martindale and Dodds matchup. It's six to four in favor of Martindale. Looks like Dodds made the comeback trail. It was four to two when we left. Martindale keeps that same advantage, but puts two more goals on top of it regardless. Yeah, I was watching off screen here and it was four to four midway through that second period, uh, midway through the second period. It's the new period started and then, yeah, uh, six four now. Two goals came in quick succession, as you see on your screen. So you mentioned two goals in quick succession. Still a lot of time here for Dodds. It's six to four, and we're just at the halfway point of this game. And here comes Dodds. Pass across. Doesn't get it to go. We'll talk a little bit more about both Dodds and Martindale here in a little bit. But right now, the action picking up on the ice. This is Dodds who has possession with it at the right boards with Dubois. Lost it. Got it back over at the corner. Holding it away from Martindale. Trying to find something. Didn't have it. A nice poke there from Martindale. But Dodds gets it back nearly immediately. Dodds holding it in the right corner. Finding a pass. Goes down low. Holds it. Has Batherson. Shot on and he scores. That patented short sight shot in the slot that you often see. And Dodds puts it home. Cuts that lead down to one. That's the U.S. side showing right there. That they're down, but they're not out. A great goal by Dodds there to cut into that lead. And you mentioned Dodds beat Junior Pens in the qualifier semis to get here. 
Represented the New Jersey Devils in 2021. The Tampa Bay Lightning in 22. Nick, I know you're not too mad about that Tampa Bay representation. Also finished top 32 in the GWC a couple of years back, trying to claw his way back into this game as Martindale giving him a tough fight. Here's Martindale with it, trying to get that two-goal lead back. Lost possession. Here comes Dodds. It's a two-on-three. Martindale has the numbers, but Dodds looking to rush this down the left side. Passes it all the way over to the opposite side point. It's going to trickle its way to the neutral zone, and Dodds going to have to reset. Finds Johnson with his face, finds a crease, goes across, pass, won't go through. Martindale picks it up, but Dodds gets it back. 3.30 to play. Tie, or excuse me, 6-5 to five now, your score. With Martindale up ahead. Dodds trying to tie a shot, and he scores on that same side. That's Dawson Mercer. And Dodds once again comes back from two down and ties this game up even. That pull around, lay it out, put it across. It works when it works well. And now we're tied again. Can they hold on to the tie and get a lead here for the first time this period? And you know, there are not many ways that describe the difference between the US and the Europe and Canada. But in terms of play style, plays like that, I think is where you're seeing the Dodds really trying to get those short side plays, working the post more or less, while we've seen a lot of the other competitors kind of try and try to work it behind the net and find those passing lanes. Very patient compared to the fast play style. Yeah, they like to, you know, we learned that from Junior Pens. D to D shots, D to D shots. He'll have 30 shots a game, win a game three to one. That's how he plays. Whereas Eki, like we, we've seen it, five shots a game and he'll win one zero, two one. Uh, it's a different play style. And I don't know what the right answer is. We've seen time and time again in the in-person lands that uh, sometimes that US style does work better. We'll see what happens in sixes here next week. But at least 1v1, we've seen the answer a couple of times now where the Europeans just cannot hold up to that onslaught of pressure by the U.S. counterparts. We'll have to see how this shakes out in this contest. And you know, it's, it's pretty interesting because the one example to where it held up pretty well almost was Finland. They were able to push it to overtime and won in that final against the U.S. last year. And what was, I mean, we saw it earlier on the throwback, a thrilling way to end that tournament but nevertheless we have a thrilling finish here on task six to six at the end of two periods martindale versus dodds great britain versus the usa on the playstation side of things and make you look at the stats dead even pretty much across the board yeah dead even but it's not the same on the xbox side top shelf cookie up five nothing against bruce forces for that u.s great britain matchup and then on the other side of this austria versus hungary berez down five nothing versus Felix make that six as I said that 20 minutes left in this tie game on your screen and how about that here we go Martindale and Dodds could be big if Martindale could steal this game as we mentioned that both U.S. and Canada being in this group it's going to have to take a team to steal a game from one of them or two Barzel with the hat trick Dodds with the lead seven six now your score early in the third well, that's what you want to see. If you want to get a strong start to your third period, you do it by doing that. They did so, and now they've got the lead. So how does Martindale respond? He's been out in front for most of this game. Can he come back from behind now? Dodds with three unanswered goals. Martindale does get the face off. Has it with Severson. Holds it at the point. Looks. Goes to the slot, trying to find a lane. Gives the Shabbat at the high right point, left side of our screen. And gives it back to Severson at the same area. Down the Barzel. Barzel holding, spinning, double team is poked out and hit out by Dodds. He's going to try to rush this up the ice. Can't get anything as it's poked. He'll go all the way back to his defensive end to reset. Gives it over to Shabbat, over to Severson, left side. Moves it back into the slot, pass across, and he scores! It hit off the pad of Thompson, but he didn't get all of it, and Shabbat cuts in and dies from two down to two up, just like that. That's a four-goal swing, four unanswered goals, and I would say he has the hot stick right now, at the right time. 
The hot stick at the right time, and now he looks to increase that lead. Dodds holding at 6-8 to eight with 15 minutes to play in the third. High scoring action here in this matchup between Martindale and Dodds. Martindale looking to mark the comeback that Dodds just did, trying to stop this run of four straight, as you mentioned, Nick. Here we go. This is turned over. Nice defensive play from Dodds, and I think that that's been the big difference. Dodds is finding his way defensively, not giving Martindale the clean looks. As Martindale trying to work through something, gets the pass over, but it's saved. Puck's still loose in front, loose, held by Thompson. Dodds going to pass it off, but Martindale picks it up, pass across. Oh, he missed the shot, didn't get all of it on the pass. As he had to bobble it, and he just missed that split second where he had the open net. Martindale still with possession, holding it, looking, gets it to the point to Graves. Looks, gets into the middle as the shot went and was blocked immediately. Shabbat over the one-timer! He scores! Pierre-Luc Dubois makes it a one-goal game for Martindale. Cuts that Dodds lead in half. This is one of the craziest back-and-forth shootouts I've seen in a long time in the IIHF E-World Championship tournaments. I think we're going to come down to the wire on this one. We're going to come down to the wire, and we still have 11 minutes. We could see both teams hit 10 at the rate we're going. Dodds looking to get a goal to get his lead back to double. As it's a turnover, Martindale takes up the boards. Martindale holds. He's bumped from behind, trying to find a pass. Could he get the goal to tie it? Graves in the corner, left corner, right corner of our screen. As it's Dodds that gets that puck out. And here's a two-on-one for Dodds. Dodds passes across, backhand to Dubois. Couldn't get it past Thompson. As he's passed it out, and it's put in by Batherson. Two hat tricks. He played it, and the month goes against them. Dodds takes the lead by two. You know, sometimes when it comes down to it, you don't want to throw it out. That is a good example of why right there and Dodds capitalizing on the opportunities. That's half of what you got to do in order to be successful here in NHL Esports. So a regrettable mistake for Martindale, and he's going to take a penalty right after. So right when Martindale seemed to be taking all the momentum, things starting to fall from the seams here for the Brit. And on the other side, top shelf, uh, sorry, on the other side here, yeah, top shelf cookie winning his game. 7-0 over Bruce Forces. So the U.S. picking up three regulation points right there to keep on pace with what Canada has done so far. Martindale trying to make up for things here. Moves into the offensive zone. It's given some space. Passes to the slot. Slap stop from Sandheim in the one-timer. Blocked in front. Potentially saved somewhat as well. Here's Dodds trying to move on the counterattack. Gives over to Sillinger. Moves to the slot. Can't find anything cleanly as Barzil picks it off. Great defensive play there from Martindale on the penalty kill. Halfway through the Dodds power play. Martindale getting the better of it right now. Moving into the offensive zone again as Martindale. Holds it in the middle. Trying to get to the slot. Gets it down to Comtois. Comtois loses after he was doubled there by Canada. And that's the one thing. Hard to... Play your game offensively when you're short like that. Sillinger shot saved by Thompson. Still has control, however. Goes to Lowry at the left side. Gives it to the slot. Shot on. Saved by Thompson. May have hit the back end of the stick. As we're back to five on five. But Dodd's still holding possession. Five and a half to play. He's up by two as the pass to Lowry on the left post goes in. He's up to ten. Dodds up by three, 7-10 the score, and that may very well just close this thing out in favor of the American. Yeah, you might be right there, and that's going to be the answer you need. You got to get points here, especially when you know the other side's got a favorite and two games in hand because you're going to be done with your games before Canada is. You got to get your points in because you can control your own destiny when you do that. Uh, still holding on to possession. He's not done. Up the right side. Slap shot saved by Thompson. Holds on for a whistle with 3.28 to play here in the third period. Coming up in just a little bit. Do not forget Hungary versus Great Britain, but our featured matchup as well. U.S. versus Canada. Coming up here shortly. As we get a look at the U.S., haven't seen much of Canada so far, but we can tell you they are dominating as much as they have in the past as the give over to Dubois in the slot won't go. And you kind of mentioned this earlier, Nick. I think that's the matchup that especially not just in this group, but definitely in this tournament, when everyone saw that the U.S. and Canada were in Group B together, that was the matchup that I think a lot of people penciled in and circled on their calendar. Yeah, I think it was. And we didn't get to see the same uh, hyper action that we got to see uh, last year with Canada getting knocked out a little bit early because of the decisions they made in their choices. 
So we'll have to see how this is right now. I know a lot on the line right now uh, as we are deciding who's better, U.S. or EU, or sorry, NA versus EU, but also U.S. versus Canada. That, that is a constant conversation that happens in North America, and at least for the group stage, we'll see that answer as to who gets the number one spot to take on. As I look at my thing here, Group B first place, taking on second place Group D. So that would be whoever wins one or two versus Switzerland. Switzerland, no easy matchup. We saw Tron knock off Ekin to get his team in yesterday, if you were with us. So definitely going to be a tough matchup there for whoever does get drawn Switzerland. I'm sure looking on, trying to get a look at who they could potentially be playing as Martindale moves in the offensive zone. Quick shot was saved by Thompson. Dodds will play that out. 16 seconds to play. A minute 30 to go on the power play. Dodds pass across. Pass save from Thompson. Puck loose to the right side of him, and he'll be picked up by Sandheim for Martindale, who's looking to get that one more goal and trying to get something. As three seconds to go. Players having a little bit of fun on the ice, and that will do it. Skies that puck up. Gives it to a kid in the stands to go home happy with 7-10, to 10, your final Dodds. Gets the victory over Martindale after being down by two, two separate times. Wins this one by three. Really impressive performance there after he was tested early. Yeah, that was a great performance. Somebody was a little bit worried. That was, you know, not only us, but everybody watching at home for Team USA going, oh, wow. Uh, don't want to go down early here. Two goal deficit comes back and puts four on the board and then wins by three. So that's a good fight of resilience. A test early. Four games now played out of the uh, eight that they'll play against here for the Team U.S. Everybody plays eight games in this group, so that's a good answer. I think that's a good way to play. Martindale put up a heck of a fight as well, so do not rule them out yet either. They're in Latvia's position where they played uh, Canada and U.S. early, and now they got to go up against Hungary and Austria. So if they can win those games, that's... Yeah. Four games, that's 12 points. You're in the conversation if Canada and U.S. slip a little bit. And you have to remember there, too, that I know that Martindale had the loss. Dodds did everything that he needed to do to earn that win. But seven goals allowed on 16 shots, that's not spectacular. So don't get me wrong. Great to get the win. But just goes to show you the U.S. <laughs> and no team, as a matter of fact, that we've seen, not necessarily unbreakable. So... If things can go the direction for Great Britain, I mean, they would have to definitely win out against Hungary and Austria. But if the U.S. or Canada drop both games in that matchup, we'll go to tiebreaker. You never know. Things could happen. You just never know. As we've seen. We've seen things can happen. I think that's what you have to worry about is what would go down if something does slip. At this point, though, what we do know is U.S. and Canada, both undefeated, U.S. now will be two games ahead. They are about to square off in our featured matchup. So that is going to decide who gets points there, which could ultimately decide who becomes that number two spot. Yeah, and that's something that you did a great job of kind of precursoring into, so to speak, is we still have to have those positions decided because remember, the second place in Group B has to go up against Sweden. So either Canada or the U.S. have to go up against a team to start out in the quarterfinal that is seen as a championship contender. So this spot for number one is absolutely critical. Not that Switzerland's an easy matchup, but I don't think that anyone is just jumping up and down to face off against Ekin and Antonio Man, <laughs> especially with how Antonio Manning looked yesterday. And Ekin being a man on a mission, being on the team last year that was upset by Lafia, being on the team that lost in the final of Finland in 2020, he does not want to be denied. I just get the feeling that they have a point to prove. I don't think anyone wants to run into Sweden, so... Getting this number one spot is absolutely imperative. This matchup right here could very well be what decides it. You know, we talked, I don't want to get ahead of myself, but yesterday, if you go clip it, the production team, I don't know if they did, you, you talk about how serious and how important. I think the most pressure of anybody, any team, is on Sweden. I really yeah. think that for this tournament, I don't think it's U.S. coming back and, and they lose in overtime, okay, whatever. I don't think it's Finland going for the trifecta. I don't think it's Canada for the redemption. I don't think it's Latvia for the upset. I don't think it's Switzerland for the Cinderella. I really think it's Sweden. 
Yeah. And I think with as hungry and as like rage angry mad fight that they put up yesterday, I talked about it in that diatribe I went on yesterday. They are scary. And I don't yeah. think you want to go up against them early. And now that we know what this looks like, U.S. or Canada or somebody else, or the second seed, whatever that second seed is, could be Great Britain, could be Hungary or Austria, against Sweden next week. If you're U.S. or Canada, first and foremost, don't want to get ahead of myself here, but do you pick Canada against Sweden or do you opt to save it? I think you have to go and put them down as hard and as early as you can because Sweden is so mad and so determined to move on to the finals this year. Yeah, and I would have to go back and look at that again. But if I'm correct, didn't Sweden against them, didn't they choose a different team other than them early on? I think they chose Czech. And rather than another team against Latvia, and that really made a difference in that game. And that's why we have the Canada versus Canada matchup in these group stages, so you don't have to worry about that. It's just that balanced matchup. But you talked about Canada. I do agree. I don't think it is the same pressure to the same extent because Sweden, they were so close against Finland in 2020, just fell short. And then last year, they were dominant, went undefeated, looked nearly untouchable in the group stage, and then lost to Latvia, who a lot of people were surprised even made it into that stage to begin with. I think for Canada, though, they lost to Czechia 9-11, to who is a good team. But Canada, they're just one of those countries to where they have a different standard than everyone else. They expect championships every single time they enter a tournament. And if you look at last year's roster, Cad wasn't there. But Regs was. And remember, it was Regs who lost to Pep Costa, or actually, no, tied with Pep Costa, won the one that got them that victory. It did. So Regs was the one that had to take that loss. And I know he did not take it kindly. I think that I don't think it's the same amount on Sweden, but I do think there is that little bit of extra, not pressure, but motivation, I think, for Canada, and especially Regs to go out and prove a point. Regs is a proven winner. He's won basically everything that you can think of, whether it be sixes or 1v1. This is the one thing that he hasn't won yet, and it is kind of the same thing for Ekin. I really think that it's kind of a similar instance, not to the same extent for Sweden, but I think that Canada is going to come out with a point to prove, especially with the featured matchup in a rival against the U.S., four guys that are very familiar with each other because all of them have played in the GWC plenty of times before. This is going to be a lot of fun. I can't wait to see it, and we're going to have that feature coverage as well, not just on Twitch and YouTube, but on Twitter and Facebook as well. That's right. We want to welcome all of our new audience from Facebook and Twitter to the 2023 IIHF E-World Championship presented to you by Skoda and Strauss. Nick DeMeo, F5 Penguin, alongside my very good friend Brandon Bigsby, a.k.a. B Major. We are here to bring you the action for the featured matchup of Group A, which has already started. U.S. and Canada, they're wasting no time here. They are right into it. There's your U.S. matchup. There's your Canada matchup. And we're jumping right in. It is Dodds versus CAD. We'll talk more about how this shakes out. You're watching the U.S. feed going north on your screen. And the action is underway right now. They have wasted no time. We'll get into the Xbox side shortly as well as the first chance comes in from Dodds. As he's got that behind the net and working. They'll bring it out now. Cad just straight through and he scores. <laughs> Oh my goodness, the flying poke check, the straight line speed. Cad cooks indeed. And that's the risk you take with that flying poke check. And you have a guy like Cad that has seen just about anything and everything. He's arguably one of the more technically aware players that you will find in the game as <laughs> Dodds responds with one of his own. Dodds with the answer just fired it back. And if this is what we're about to see in this matchup, sign me all the way up for it. Me too. Sign me up right now. Where's the pin? Where's the paper? Let me sign up to this. One to one, two goals in just three minutes. We're already flying, Nick. This is amazing. Who took the over in this competition? I got to know. Because if you did, you're probably in good shape. But yeah, U.S. versus Canada, the Xbox side not underway yet that buys us a little bit of time makes things a little bit more exciting we'll take a look at the standings here in a little bit as well we'll talk more about the players here shortly but cattle fish that back 
for him to start up again. He'll rattle that one off the boards, met by a poke check by Dodds as he'll steal that one at center ice. Now through the offensive zone. Loses that one at the blue line, though. It'll come all the way back to his defensive end. Five gone here in the first period. U.S. or Canada, who do you have in the chat? Faceoff will come out to Cad's right. One back by Cad. He'll fish that buck up to the center and through center ice. A lot of room. Stops and goes. Pushed off of it. Loses it. And he'll regain control. Not too far back outside the red line. Now he's got it back in the zone. Real quick, trying to dance around one defender. Does so. Tries to do it a second time. Back out front. Shot. Kick. Save. Good save. Rebound chance, though. And that one will be forced off to the left side. Good move there by Dodds to recover as he's tied 1-1 right now. The Xbox game just started. We'll keep you abreast of that score and also what's happening with Hungary and Great Britain as we have time. Fed along now. Anderson up the left side. Cad slowing down now. Not as fast as his first foray into the offensive zone for his team to get him that opening goal right off the rip from that flying poke check fail. But Cad tries, as he does, to try to get one more. Not if Dodds can help it, though. He says he works from behind the net. Outstretched stick will send that one back to the would-be recipient that passed it out in the first place. As Cad comes in two-on-one. Nice use of the poke there by Dodds. Back skating in. He's got it still, though. Cad in front. Good chance. And he fished that one through. Short side scores. The short side move from the slot area gets one past Dodds, and it's two-to-one. This quick passing operating in the offensive zone from Cad and doing exactly what he needed to do to open up that space. Got that pass right where he needed to for Anderson to just tap that in. Both of these players are so skilled when it comes to facilitating in the offensive zone. You're seeing the back and forth of it right there. TSC and Cookie, or sorry, Cookie and Regs now underway. I love Regs, one of my favorite NHL esports players. We'll see what he can do against Cookie and Team US. Right now, Cad's up by one here. Seven to play in the first period. Two games between U.S. and Canada. Out in front there. Tried to cross crease that one. Dodds will pick it up. That one's punched along. They continue on through center ice. Out to the right side now with a little bit of space. He'll fish that one around. It'll fall up to the half boards. They'll work that one backwards. Down behind the net now. There's the cycle. Switching to the front now. Looking for a shot. The iron and scores. A good move and pass, ultimately leading to a shot. High cheese, good goal. Dodds ties it at two. Dodds with maybe a little Latvian inspiration. Just feels like every time he goes down, he finds his way back in, whether it was versus Martindale the last game or against Cat now, just finding ways to keep himself in and tying the mark every single time. It's a good mark of a resilient fighter, but the ultimate answer is when you can get the lead for the first time in the game it changes the dynamic of the matchup we'll have to see if they can do that here but for right now it is tied at two with two minutes to play here in the first period on the playstation side of this herculean goliathan matchup between the u.s and canada in the group stage no less spinning there's cad he'll lose it from the check Last minute here, real time, 10 seconds to conclude the first period. Stops up short, loses it, almost a breakaway opportunity. Lots of speed though, but the back checkers are there. Final seven. Stops and turns, looking for a lane. That one's off a skate. And that'll do it for the first period, tied at two between Dodds and Cad. We will go over to Cookie and Regs. Lots to talk about with Regs here. We're watching Cookie go north, the US both going north. Good feed up there for the rebound. They'll play it out, Will Regs. Regs probably arguably the best overall player. Ones, threes, and sixes. A myriad of trophies, money, and accolades for this young talent in NHL Esports. Stapling his name onto the pinnacle and the power mount and the Mount Rushmore of great NHL Esports players up against Cookie, who's got a lot to play for for his country in Team USA. Here they go off the corner right now. They'll dish it along. Cookie will lose it. Comes all the way back. No icing. Oh, yeah, it will be icing. Scratch that. 
broadcaster's curse, but not in the bad way. It's something, too, to keep in mind. You're watching a matchup between two NHL GWC champions. Both of them have won regs multiple times. This is a matchup that isn't just U.S. and Canada. This is two of the best players in the world facing off right here in the group stage. Enjoy it. Embrace it. Nick, you've got the call, my friend. Brandon, it's always a pleasure to be doing these calls with you, especially when we're at monumental moments like this. About a minute 30 here in the first period. No score between these two on the Xbox side. Try to brush that one through, and that's Cad being denied once more by Cookie. Feet up there will fall back to Cad's defense as it looks like one last rush from behind his net. Five seconds left. Speed it up the left side. Maybe a shot on. He tries. Cookie rejects, and that'll do it for the first period there. No score. We'll flip back. Second period action. 12.40 to go. We got a goal as I switched over. We have the goal here. The go-ahead goal by Cad. It's 3-2, but we'll switch back because they did not wait any chance here to play. Second period underway here. Cookie versus Regs. We're wasting no time. On the Xbox side, PlayStation side, Dodds versus Cad. I would not mind to see a Cad versus Cookie matchup, though. I will say that. That would be enticing to see. And there's the opening goal by Cookie. He dishes it to himself off the self sauce, bounces it off of a skate, and then puts it across the net for the opening goal of this contest. Once again, just finding a way. Cookie gets the goal over Regs, and now a 1 0 lead. And you're looking at two contrasting score lines US winning one, Canada winning one. That could be big for some of the teams behind them. So, four minutes gone in the second period. We got our first goal. And on the other side, it is 4 to 2 for Cad now. Dodds dropping two to an amazing talent in Cad Cooks. Here comes Regs now. Great turn there, trying to tuck that one five hole. And he's denied by Cookie. Ooh, that was close, close, close there. Regs, he's one of those guys where you just give him a glimmer of space. He can take advantage in a big, big way. So very, very fortunate there for Cookie to not have that one go in. Face off one back to Cad. Cad looking for the one-time jail. He slid across. I think he controlled the goalie there, Brandon. And he took control and brought him across to make that save. That might be game tape reviewing to make that save. What a beauty of a save by TSC Cookie. Oh, and a steal here, though. Breakaway chance. Will he come out again? No, he won't. And a good save there by Cookie again. Poke checks there. Reg still has it. Up top on the right circle, driving in back down low. Oh, he's checked off the puck. And here comes top shelf Cookie. Fired one top shelf a little bit ago to give himself the lead. Four minutes into the second period, and he does it again. This time the other way, and it's 2 nothing for Team US in this matchup. How about Cookie playing up with Regs, makes some big saves on the defensive end, maybe a little goaltending, we're not sure or not, but nevertheless, how about Cookie using the defense, whether it's the storm that Regs was putting on, and on the other end, the first chance he got, put it past him to extend that lead to two. That's absolutely huge against a player like Regs that really can keep himself in the game, to have that two-goal advantage, absolutely paramount. So now down by two, we'll see how Regs responds as his partner in Cat is up by three, but that just got cut back to two. So Dodds just scored. It's five to three in the second over there. We'll keep an eye on that matchup as we're putting a midpoint shot through. A second shot there saved away. Now high slot center point. Shot in through traffic. That one get pushed off to the right. On your screen, at least, here's Barzil. Right circle, leading to the middle. Can't get that pass down low. And it's intercepted back the other way, but stolen back once more for TSC. Cookie's working now. 
Trying to get his line changed, trying to get his team in sync. But Riggs now has it on the attacking end. High point area, driving it back low, and a chance there! Just off the back of the cage. Wrapping it around, second effort! And the saves keep coming for Cookie right now, Brandon. They do, and we just got an update. Austria just won both of their games over Hungary. 10 to nothing combined score, two shutouts, and they have six points. Canada has two games in hand, but they're tied with six points. So this is a big result here if Cooking can hold on. It puts Hungary in the conversation. It indeed does. We'll keep an eye on that matchup, too, because that's going to be maybe the second spot here, depending on how this series shapes out in front of you. Our featured matchup on Facebook and Twitter, along with Twitch and YouTube. Final 10 seconds here. Real time to conclude. Stick lifts a plenty. Good work there by Cookie. Needs it to the left. One last shot on. That'll bounce off the pads and go off to the side. Let's flip over real quick to keep a look on what's happening with Cad and Dodds. 17 to play in the third. Up by two is Cad. Here's Dodds, though. Trying to put that one on short side. Was denied. We'll flip back, though. This is where the action is. 2 nothing for Cookie versus Regs. Like you said, two Goliaths squaring off on this Xbox side of this competition. Faceoff was tangled up for a little bit. Regs will come out with it. He's pushed away. Ping not really a factor on this side either, Brandon. Both teams pretty much connecting to a, a fair server there as Cookie throws that out and play continues. Feeds that one through across the left side. Scooped up. No, tripped instead. And a dangerous penalty here for Regs to get back into it. Yeah, and that's the one thing against a player like Regs that you cannot afford to do. You have a 2 0 lead, you're locking things down defensively. Can't give him an opportunity to open things up and get that rhythm flowing because once he does start to get it, it's really hard to stop. So, this is a critical penalty kill for Cookie, but a big chance for Regs to try to get back into it. He has to get a score and has to take advantage. Let's see what Regs can do on the power play. He's masterful with the puck let alone on the man advantage. Regs with it now. They've checked away. They'll meet at the half board. Regs has it again. Up to the far side. Shoots one, and that one sticked away. A good effort there. As it's now 6-3 with 11 to play on the PlayStation side between Cad and Dodds. So this matchup is important for Team US now. Cookie working on the power kill, and time expires on the penalty. They're back at full strength. Dances around one defender, tries to shove it through two. Dives in front, tries to pick it up. Still has it, shot there, goes wide. Now he's on the left circle, skating with it. That was a flurry of a chance there for Team US. Can they capitalize on this pressure? We talk about sustained pressure in the offensive zone for the team. Usually ends up fortuitous for that team. Point shot comes through with traffic. Loose puck. And Regs will swoop it up and slow it down. Line change now for Regs for his forwards. Defense has to get off the ice, but a poke check there might slow that down. Now they got room two on one if they hurry. Two, one. There's the backhand and he scores. Regs with time took advantage. And he's got the, t uh, the, the goal here to make it two to one. And that goal puts Regs in position to be in position to cut the lead in half, only down by one. The pressure alleviates itself from him a little bit, especially considering there's still over 11 minutes to play, so you can play your game. You don't have to get overly aggressive. As Regs has it back in the offensive end. Almost feels like the momentum shifted there from capitalizing on that pressure, the, the counter-attack, Brandon, from Cookie to Regs. We'll see if Cookie can respond now. Left point shot there. Bad save. And Regs will pick it up from the right side boards. Fed up now. Met there at the blue line. Now reverse on the counter-attack, the rush. For Cookie to build things. There's a shot short side, save. Regs has it will clear the zone. Left side with speed now. Here comes Johnson down the wing. Stop at the red line. Turn around. He's got it from the corner. Working, but that one's stripped away quickly. 
as Cookie kidnapped that puck and threw it back to net center ice. The neutral zone was recovered by Regs. He's got it on his stick now. 7-4 with two minutes to play for Cad on the other side. Right point driving in down low. No, he pulls better of it. Now left point. Sending it down. Now he's in down low working from the corner. Now behind the net looking for that backhand. It wasn't there for him. That right side was open. Couldn't get the feet across. Now he tried to, but that errant pass falls to the stick of Cookie from the right boards. Four and a half to play here in the third period. Team USA up by one. Cookie versus Regs. Right side shot. Brushed aside. As it's five to seven now. Dodds closing in on his matchup against Cad. They took a timeout in that matchup. We'll bring you more there with under a minute to play. Here though, two and a half to play. There's Cad with a shot. And he scores. Or Regs with a shot. And he scores. Regs short side gets a chance. And it's 2-2. This game is tied late in the third. And that's why the goal, the original goal, was so big when he scored it. 11 minutes, tons of time for Regs to chill, do his thing. He knows he's still in the game, and he was patient. He kept working at it, and he tied this thing up. Now the pressure shifts to cooking a little bit. How does he respond? Because Regs is starting to cook. Regs is cooking like Cad is cooking. The momentum has shifted. Cad, or Regs now, with a minute to go, had a chance there, but the counterattack is on now for Cookie. Wrapped around the net, sends one in down low, can't get the shot off. Puck still loose, but Regs has it. He'll send it back around his net to work from behind. He'll come out with 40 seconds to go. 6.9 seconds on the other game. Cad will win for, US, uh, for Canada against US, seven to five. Pending the outcome of that faceoff. Meanwhile, 30 seconds here. Regs. Will we see late stage heroics once more? Regs down low with 20. Back up right point. Driving in down low. Looking for that center pass across. Can't pull the trigger. Now left point. Shabbat. Back out left. Severson holding at the top of the circle. Half board spinning. Controlling. Final 10 seconds. What will happen here? Four. Three. Looking for one last effort. Bounce off a skate. And it's going to overtime. So at least four points now goes to Canada. The U.S. needs to win here in overtime to at least get two. If they lose, they just get one. A crucial moment here, Brandon, for Team USA. And if you're Austria, you are loving what you're seeing that Canada has the potential to still win this game because the U.S., one of those teams going to have to drop somewhat puts Austria still in position to compete for that number two spot. Cad won seven to six against Dodds in regulation. He scored off the offensive faceoff, did Dodds to force that game to a one goal deficit, but only with three seconds left, not enough time. Cad wins that game. Here we are with Regs and Cookie. Face off one in the offensive zone for Regs by Cookie. He'll drive that one out of his end. Face off, or that shot there, rebounded off to the left, scooped up there by US. Team USA starting to go here. Regs will strip that one away. Regathered and moved along. And he'll drive that one offside. 1740 to play in overtime. And something it feels like Regs has done. He is really, and he's gotten some good opportunities, but it's just been a matter of them finally finding their way in the net. You saw multiple big defensive plays from Cookie. I think he might have gone on the goalie. We still aren't totally sure on that, but it was just the back end plays from Cookie that put him in this situation. And Regs applying the pressure kept at it, and he puts himself in the situation to maybe win. Stolen here. Three on two if they hurry. Good use of the stick there by Cookie. Stops up short. Nice check there. Two men met in red jerseys. That's Regs with the puck again. Good use of the defense to come in down low. Here comes the fifth man off the bench from that injury. Wraparound chance, and that was a good effort. But Cookie's keeper keeps it away. Shot there goes wide, and that was sticked away. I thought that was it. Cookie trying to respond to that pressure. Can it go the other way? Rebound, chance on the back end, and he couldn't pull the trigger. It's saved there by Regs. Two goals, one for each side, both denied. I thought the game was kaput 
with that chance from Rags on the other end, but it's just sweeped away there from the goaltender. And then on that play, it was a little bit of a wide backhand for Cookie. He didn't get all of it. Face off one by Regs here. He'll push that one along. Through center up the left. That one's rescued quickly by Cookie. They'll come back the other way. Dropped off to his defense. They'll bring it through the line. Now they're attacking. Sent through. Intercepted, though, cleanly by Regs. Regs up now. Two on two. Down the wing. Couple of dances on the right side circuit. Outstretched stick trying to keep away the passing lanes. He had a man open on the right side for a brief moment. That one was taken away. Here comes that short side feed. That give and go. Regs was looking for it halfway through the overtime period. He was denied. Line change of foot. They will get fresh legs on for the offense. That defender still on the ice though. Fatigued. Toe drag. Found some room. Center pass. Good angle. And save. Regs up the right side now. Ooh, good way for the back checker to get into that lane. They'll take the puck away. They're on side. That was off for a second. Slap shot through traffic. Rebound chance. And Regs has it. He bring that one out safely, but not for long. Cookie trying to mount some pressure himself now. Backskate speeds that one across. That'll be picked up by the defender coming in down low. Four men up deep now, off the post. That might have not been the shot he wanted to take, but the shot he had to take. Four men back now for Cookie. Six to play here in the overtime period, right point. Working in, trying to get that one down low. Bounced off a stick, but Reg still has it. Team Canada working now, trying to pick up two points in this overtime to make it five between the U.S. Good stick there. Now the rush is on, two on one if they hurry. Self sauce, can't get that pass across though as Regs' defense is what makes him a champion caliber player. He's Over a guy that plays defense on the sixth side too. He's one of the best on that end. So you see that a lot in this one's game as well. Cookie overcommitted. That would have been dangerous. Coming back in front and a chance there. And that could have been it. Remember that one if this turns around. Here comes Regs. Regs is pushing now. You can feel the momentum turning back and forth. There's Regs' chance there. And he couldn't get it past Cookie. Wow. So close. And just so far, and it looks like Cookie may take the time to call a timeout. He wants to get the energy up and calm things down, but not your side going to take the pause. They want to get right back into it. Smart move by him, I'd say, to just to refresh things in overtime. He'll drop that one back with speed through the neutral zone. Now with space, left shot there, rebounded. Caroms off the glass and out safely to the corner. But picked up again by Cookie. Center point. Fires that one through and he scores! A huge D to D pass. Circa Junior pens. And US takes this one in overtime. Three to two. What a game. Cookie puts his way in. Two massive points for the US. Just keeping themselves in the hunt for the number one spot. And I mean. On a play like that, too, right after the timeout, he wins the defensive zone faceoff, gets it into the offensive zone, sets up, and you said it there, Nick, Junior Pens-esque on that play, a slap shot from the point, sets up the tip in front from Lowry, and he just puts it past Regs and Dreiger to put it home and give the U.S. that extra point. Here's the play here that Cookie is showing us. This was the game-ender for Regs. Just got a piece of it there. Oh, my goodness. I don't know how. Wow. I don't know how. But Cookie. Oh, Regs was cooking. My goodness. Regs was cooking, but unfortunately, cookies were not on the menu. It doesn't get much closer than that. There's nothing more you can do. Cad, it was well placed. He set himself up. Nothing more you can do. Just a great save. Cad may be cooking, but Cookie is baking. I like it. Thank you. <laughs> I like that. That was good. Oh, as man. we appreciate seeing some of these replays.
from a crazy, crazy overtime. Trying to see if we get another view here of that game winner by Cookie. That shot went up. That was a huge shot as well. Regs with the opportunities of plenty. No denying that. But Cookie able to hold on and get two points for his squad. As we'll come back to the studio here. Uh, you, you know, I wish we had a camera. I want to I wanna film next week off camera our reactions to what <laughs> happens on the ice. Because I watched you down Whoa. low, losing your mind from what occurred, myself included. Yeah. None of us could have expected that performance from Cookie and Regs. Hats off to both gentlemen. Like you said, two champions, two high elite class caliber players deservedly putting that one into overtime. Yeah, and what you just saw there, that was elite 1v1 hockey at its absolute finest. Two former champions playing championship level hockey against one another. And I mean... You could definitely say the regs might feel like he got a little slighted in the result. Some massive, massive saves there by the goaltender for Cookie in that game. But for regs in that game, just not in the cards. And you have to remember, Cookie was up for the vast majority of that game. It was a 2 nothing lead early. He kept himself in that 2 nothing lead for a good amount. And then regs in that third period, just slowly but surely inching and clawing his way back, got that goal for about five minutes remaining to tie it up. And that's kind of when you felt like, Maybe Regs is going to come back and win this one. Maybe this one slipped away from Cookie a little bit, not able to continue to weather that storm long enough for Regs to come back. But the overtime settled things in. And keep in mind, too, it wasn't just Regs that got all the chances. Cookie had some really good chances even before the goal that just didn't go in. Back and forth, both teams, both players, so close and so far on so many different occasions. And finally on that play, the shot from the point, the tip from Lowry, beats Dreiger, and Cookie snags that really critical extra point right there to get that number two spot locked in as of now, but still some other teams that could vie as there's still some work to be done for not only U.S., but for Canada as well. See if we can get an update on the live standings here. We do have it. Uh, keep in mind, though, before we go, you're watching this featured matchup on YouTube or on Facebook or Twitter. Come Remember, this is going to end here if you're watching on social media. Come on down, down below to... Uh, YouTube and Twitch. Come watch the rest of the matchups. We have Canada and Hungary, Great Britain and Austria, Austria versus Canada, and Hungary versus U.S. And we're going to decide who the number two seed is now as a result of this. So come on down. Come on by. Come check out what's going on here. You're not going to want to miss out. Come on, come on down to Al's Barn. We got discounts <laughs> on all the great games happening in front of you. It's oh. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. As we welcome in the audience uh, to this channel, if you're on Twitch and YouTube, thanks for being here. Nice to have you there. As we look at the standings one more time real quick, there it is. This is what it looks like right now. Two games in hand for Canada and Austria. Four points ahead is the U.S., so that at least they've got a regulation win ahead of Canada as it stands right now. Yeah, but the big thing to remember is that Canada overall did accrue more points. The U.S. got two points out of that matchup. Canada got four to three for the win with Regs and the one with the overtime loss. While for the U.S., just two with the OT win from Cookie. So with Canada having two games in hand, if they at least win one regulation game and then go into overtime or win one of those games, they would probably end up getting that number one spot, or at least as of now, would surpass for that number one spot. So if you're Canada, you have to feel good about the position you're in. If you're the U.S., you're not feeling bad, but you know that you have to have a little bit of help more than likely to clinch that number one spot since Canada is just four games or four points back and has the two games in hand over them. Yeah, if, all, if both U.S. and Canada win right now out from their series, uh, Canada would walk away with 22 points and U.S. would walk away with uh, 20 so that would put Canada in first place ultimately. But time, hey, never say never. Time will tell. What I'm going to tell you is time is telling us we have to take a break. We got to reset. We got to restretch our brain. We've got eight more matchups coming, four more different series to cover for you before we get out of here, rest ourselves up for the uh, group phase, the quarterfinals, or before the playoff phase, the quarterfinals next week. 
I'm Nick DeMeo, F5 Penguin. That's Brandon Bigsby, B Major, one of the up-and-coming rising talents in this commentary game. And this is the 2023 IIHF E-World Championship presented to you by Scotty and Strauss. Don't go anywhere. Promise. If you do, what are you doing? Come on back. Come over here. Because this is where the action is at. Stay tuned.
He's in, stops up, backhand, and he scores! Uh, I was screaming when I scored the goal. The game when he goes! How are you feeling? I'm ecstatic. We are back. Thank you for sticking with us. The 2023 IIHF E World Championship wrapping up the final games of the group stage with Group B. You see our standings down below. The U.S. currently at the number one spot, but Canada chasing them down just two games in hand or with two games in hand and just four points behind. Those two teams currently have the top two spots. The top two teams make it into the playoffs and chasing them down. Austria, four games played and six points and all of a sudden Great Britain, they'll need a little bit of help in front of them, but they have six points and they are in the conversation. It's Brandon Bixby and DeMeo with you. Live with coverage, our amazing sponsors Skoda and Strauss cannot thank them enough for their amazing support throughout this tournament as we have action going on. We talked about Great Britain and Austria. Massive, massive matchup in the standings. Three and four in Group B. It's Martindale versus Tigma, and it is currently Tigma that is up in that game two to nothing. We were watching on the view of Martindale. Both teams using Team Canada, as we mentioned. We'll go a little bit further into why that is a little bit later on, if you missed us earlier. But a chance for Martindale on that one-timer from the slot. It's saved by Dreiger as a all the way full length of the ice shot. Went on that, Thompson saved it, and that will do it. And we will transition over to the other Great Britain versus Austria matchup. Bruce Force versus Felix. This Felix tried to get a goal right as the camera shined on him, and he gets one right <laughs> after. That's Lowry. These men have a thrill for the theatrics. These men and women have a thrill for the theatrics. It's two to seven, and Felix, right as we switch to him, put one in the net. Look at that there again, another goal. That's like 19 on the night uh, uh, through the last two games, or uh, days of coverage of different goals scored whenever we flip to them. I love to see it. I know you love to see it specifically. Oh, you know I love to see it. I mean, almost another chance there for Felix, who is trying to keep his team in the conversation. Austria currently up. If they hold on to these scores, they will go up to 12 points, and that will make things quite interesting. That will put them in the race with Canada and with the U.S. They already played the U.S. The U.S. won both matchups, so that will set up a potential win and end situation between Canada and Austria if things stay the same. Canada also does have some games left in hand, but nevertheless, a chance for Austria to maybe pull off the upset and knock out either the U.S. or Canada, depending on how some of those results fall. But here we go, a chance for Taigama. All the way, backhand saved by Thompson. 
net goes loose, and that will stop play at 16.46 you know, to go. That's turn. one we don't see a lot, Brandon. The net coming off the moorings. I don't see that often yeah. in our NHL esports. No, it's very rare. It feels like that this happens. In sixes, you will see it every now and then, but in ones especially, not often that you'll see. Even when the net is crashed, usually it will stay on the moorings. As you mentioned, as there's a chance here for Martindale. Two on no. Holds. Passes. Doesn't pass it. Shoots it. Instead, the saved. Martindale keeping it. And it did not work out. Another save after a point shot from Martindale again. And how about that? Two chances for Martindale trying to keep his team in contention. Not able to get in the breakaway backhand. Another save there. This time from Thompson for Martindale. Back and forth right now. Meanwhile, an Martindale update score for you. Regs up 9-0 in his game against Hungary's Boldazar. So Regs looking to get another three points to give Canada 16 with six games played. If this scoreline holds, which it should. So that would be big. And you know the U.S. watching these results closely right now. It's just one series remaining, and that's against Hungary. One series remaining, one game to play as well. Something to talk about there. Just It's a three-point win, so they'll have 17 and a potential 20 to play for. As here we go. Martindale trying to get a play shot on on the pass to Gregor. Saved by Dreiger. Here comes Tagama. Looking. Trying to find something. Not able to do so there. And it's turned over in favor of Martindale. And we'll go all the way back to Tayama, who's trying to move it in. Spins with Johnson. Tries to pass. Hit off by Shabbat. And we'll go all the way in to the defensive zone. It's going to be a delayed penalty. So a power play for Martindale. And we saw a similar situation. Rex down by two in the third period. Got a power play and it turned his game around. Martindale hoping for the same thing. Got enough time, so they need one here. Let's see what Martindale can do with the power play. Here we go. Taigama with a chance. Or excuse me, Martindale with a chance. Taigama getting the save. Glove side. Dreiger makes a big play. On the other side of the ice, Bruce Force down now 8-2 to two versus Felix. So Austria... Looking to make three points happen on that side of this matchup. So here we go. Trying to get something as Martindale. It's going to have to be him that keeps his team in it. And if I'm correct, even with the win, if Martindale were to come back, Great Britain would be out based off of the point situation alone. So you have more games played. Here's a chance here. Ty Gamma. Partial breakaway. Keeps it out of the puck. Backhand. Pad save off the toe for Ty Gamma. Or for Martindale, rather. As now it's Taken up. Holding. Looking. Trying to find something. It's Martindale. Holding it still. Trying to find some space. Turning. Twisting. Going behind the net. Still nothing available. Still nothing there. Great defense from Taigama. The zone and finally breaking a pass. And he gets the pass over to Comtois. That is patience at its finest from Martindale. And he breaks things open and cuts the lead down the one. A, a much needed goal right there with 6.49 to play because on the other side, 9-3, to three, your final scoreline. Felix wins it for Austria. <laughs> so that is big for Austria to get those points. Hoping that Ty Gamma can collect three more for the Martindale, though. Having something to say about that. He has the puck now. Ty Gamma does, that is. And he's going to try to skate this into the neutral zone. Finds it to Mercer. Mercer takes it up the sideboards. Can't really get any room. But he finds it again. Chance of the slot puck. Loose kicked over to the right side. Battle for it in the corner. Found by Martindale. And he'll take this up. Four and a half to play here in the third period. Martindale with it, gets it in the offensive zone, but there was no help with him. Three defenders around, but he still gets it back. Backhand pass saved by Dreiger. And he'll hold on to the whistle with three and a half to play and a timeout to be called by, I believe, Ty Gamma. Yeah, timeout needed. Pressure now mounting for Martindale. Can he get some points in here and do some damage? Find out if he can do some damage as you see the time on attack numbers. Martindale with 6.49. Ty Gamma with exactly four minutes more at 10.49. Face off to the left side, right side of Ty Gamma. He'll tie up and win the face off in his own zone. Holds it, gives it back to Severson who will move this up the ice and break it out. Gives it to Barzil. Barzil turns it over. And here comes Martindale on the other end. Two and a half minutes to play now in the third period. Can Martindale snag some points here from Austria? Meanwhile, yes, it's going to be a power play for Ty Gamma. Nick, you go ahead. Sorry about that, Brandon. I was just going to say, meanwhile, Regs up 12-0 against Beres Boldazar. So Canada 
picking up six of their points there as expected. So that is massive. Six points for Canada. Hungary officially out. Canada passing the U.S., if I'm correct, with those results shaking the way they have. We'll have to check the live stains afterwards to see is a chance there from Dygamma. Would not go. Chance for Martindale with numbers. Breaks past the feather. All alone. Back hit. He scores with 131 to play. Martindale ties it up at two. Huge win there for Martindale to tie it up. Maybe force an overtime here, and we, we saw what happened. When we go to overtime last time, Brandon, this is where it comes down to. Can Martindale hold on to that momentum? Or will Ty Gamma take it back with authority? We'll know in about 109 seconds. Here we go. Face off one by Ty Gamma trying to get his lead back. It was a shorthanded goal from Martindale. The first, I believe, we have covered in this tournament. Here's Martindale, one minute to play, tied at two. Austria needs the three points. Can they get it? Cousins, I gave him a backhand, rebound loose. Puck picked up by Martindale, it's a one-on-one. -on -one. Dubois has it, holds it, left side, pulled back, trying to pass the cylinder on the cross crease, but it's picked off by Ty Gamma. 40 seconds to play here in the third. Goes down the left boards, pulls, shorthand, saved by the play in Thompson off the locker. Puck possessed by Martindale. Tried to dig it to himself off the boards and couldn't collect it. And here's Ty Gamma now. Holding it. Turned over. Martindale trying to get out of his own zone. Can he do it cleanly? He finally will. It's a little bit troublesome there for a second. Beast of the fender. One on one. Nice poke check by Ty Gamma to get away from him. And there's 15 seconds left. Still tied at two. Ty Gamma toe drag. Gets it across. Finds his way to the corner, picked up by Martindale. Seven seconds, last chance for either side. Martindale breaks it in, holds, trying to find a shot. One second, won't put it on net. And that will take this to overtime. And Martindale, not just stealing a point for Great Britain, but stealing a critical point away from Austria as well. Yeah, and I don't know if the math is going to work out in favor for Austria or Great Britain, but heck of a series we got right now in overtime. And... You know, they don't know what the math looks like on that side. They just know they have to win. So you're absolutely right. Two points on the table for either team here to walk away with a victory in overtime. Yeah, if I'm correct, we'd have to double check things. But time winding down in the group stage, only so many games to play. I think Austria would have had to have won both in regulation to stay alive for that playoff contention. Well, we're not 100% sure, so not confirming that yet. We'll know once the last things are updated. But a chance here is Martindale almost got the game winner. He holds in the office of zone. Austria 100% has to get a win of some sort. Can't just get the one point. So Martindale moves in the office of zone. Shabbat shot on, saved by Dreiger. Puck snapped over to the slot. And here comes Ty Gamma. Moving in the office of zone. Dubois has it. Looks over to the point. Holds, pass across, saved by Thompson. A sprawling save on the ice. Makes it happen, and here comes Martindale. Holds it to the right side of Soldier. Shot, rebound, picked up by Shabbat for Ty Gamma. It would have been a goal if it wasn't defended. And it's picked up by Martindale in the neutral zone as the breakout failed for Ty Gamma. Moving it in with Shabbat. Between Dig, another chance. Two stays, puck squeezed, and it's saved by Dreyer. He'll hold on. Second slot or not in the playoffs phase does not matter right now. These two teams are putting on a burner of a match. Tie up one by Martindale, holds with Cousins, gives it to Severson, slap shot, tipped in front, saved by Dreiger, and Ty Gamma doesn't want to waste time. He wants to go ahead and play this. Poke check from behind, but he still gets it back. Here's Shabbat with it over at the right boards, left side of our screen. Looks for the wrap, can't get it to go. Traffic in front, bump from behind, and Martindale will take possession. 13 minutes to play in the first overtime. Next goal wins it. Come to a pass to Cousins. What a save by Dreyer, but Cousins still has it. Martindale looking for the game winner. Can he get it here? Moves it to Graves at the point. Holds, spins, goes to the left side of the faceoff circle. Goes to Come at the point. Come looks back to the point to Sandheim. Sandheim to the right side, moves in. Martindale looking for something, anything. Can he find it? Gives it to Come at the left point. Now the new ball at the faceoff circle at the left side. Holds it and it's turned over. Great defense. Ty Gamma, he gets it back. Martindale back hit saved by Dreiger. Puck still losing. Martindale still has a pass across. Picked <laughs> off by Lowry and Ty Gamma with a multitude of defensive plays. Here he comes on the counter. Big hit from Martindale at the boards. And he may have had numbers. Could have had a breakaway, but he couldn't get the pass off. 
Ty Gamma has it. Nine minutes to play in the first overtime. Rapid pace for both sides. This is insane right now. It's Martindale who has it. Right side. Twirls, finds Gregor, holds LTs, couldn't get that one to pass. And Zari ends up picking it up anyways. Moving around to the right corner boards. Moving his way up, passes to Mayo in the point. Looking, holding, trying to get space. Seven minutes to play in overtime. It's turned over. Here's Ty Gamma. That's White Cloud on White Cloud. Spins. Nice poke check there from Martindale to get that one away. He's going to sauce this up the boards to Lowry, who passes it to Gregor. Right side boards. Martindale moving up, and it's off size with 6.09 to play. And breathe. Ooh. <laughs> 21 shots for Martindale, 22 for Ty Gamma. It's as even as it gets. One goal separates these two sides from a victory. Ty Gamma with it. Moves it in, holds, looks, shot on, goes wide, blocker side, but it's still had by Ty Gamma. He's bumped off the puck, and here comes Martindale. Moving it up with Gregor. Left side, holds, LTs his way, gets past one defender, passes, blockers there, excuse me, glove save on the backhand by Ty Gamma. Holding in the zone zone, pressured by Martindale, gives it up, and he finally has it. Ty Gamma breaking the offensive zone, but nice job from Martindale at the blue line to, po to poke that one away, and Ty Gamma gets it back. Turned over as he crosses the second time. The blue line defense strong for Martindale these last couple of possessions. Holding at the right side, face-off circle, low end of it, goes to the corner. Barzil gets it off his possession, and here comes Ty Gamma. Two minutes of play in overtime one. Can we see another one here? Ty Gamma moves it down low. Puck behind the net, scramble for it. Trying to come out with it is Martindale, and he will, but it's poked away. Ty Gamma shoots at the side of the net immediately. Don't think he meant to do that, but he has the puck regardless. Over to the left side, holds it, gives it to Dubois. Holds it at the highest face off circle and passes it down low to Barzil. Barzil open play in front, can't get the shot, poked in front, puck loose, picked up by Martindale. 90 seconds to go in overtime number one. Real time, minute and a half. Ty Gamma has it. Passes it to Batherson over at the right side. Spins, goes to Dubois. The slot saved by the blocker of Thompson. Martindale stays alive. Breaks it out. Holds it, gives it to Martindale. Stops and tried to get the pass across. Couldn't connect, but he still has it at the right corner. Spins it. He scores! Martindale with the pretty play. Takes out Austria. A 3-2 overtime win for Great Britain on the PlayStation end. It took 23 shots from both sides. And the third goal in is the charm for the great British hero. Martindale, the man of sixes and now ones, gets that crucial overtime win against Austria to make it three to two. And how about that? Martindale from two nothing down in the third period with eight and a half minutes to play, scores two to take at the OT grinds it out in the OT period and wins it. And if I'm correct, that just knocked Austria out. We're not 100% sure. We're going to have to see the live standings to see, but if you do the math, just two games left, they're more than six points behind due to Canada winning both of those games that you had mentioned earlier, Nick. I believe that that just clinched both playoff spots at Group B, and now it's just a matter of who is one and who is two. But Martindale potentially playing spoiler a two-goal deficit comes back, wins it in overtime after tying it up with 90 seconds to go in the third period. This is the stuff you love to see. This is great hockey. 2023 IIHF E-World Championship. Skoda and Strauss, the sponsors. Where else would you rather be? That is why you love to see these games. Huge. Absolutely huge. Honor, pride, and just ultimate passion to do what you love regardless of the standings to play for your country right here in this tournament absolutely unreal as we get a look at the ot goal look at that beautiful little l2 move there from martindale started out at the right corner as it looks like Ty Gamma thought he was going to try to cut immediately over to that opposite side. Just misplayed it a little bit. You can see he kind of bit over to the right side. Gave Martindale the lane to spin. Wide open play. No one else was there. Tough save for the goaltender. The AI goaltender and Dragger to make. And Martindale 
Made no doubt about it. Beautiful play. It was nearly poke checked there as well. Just a second too late. And a 3-2 come from behind victory for the Great Britain representative in Martindale on the PlayStation side. What a game. What a way to wrap that series up. Absolutely. And now it sets a table here. It, it, it makes things really interesting, Brandon, because... And I know, long shots are a thing, but we saw long shots with Latvia. What we do know is this. Canada and Austria are happening in just mere moments. U.S. and Hungary, three points already for the U.S. That gives them 17 with a potential three more to make that 20. If we get these live standings updated, which I think they are now. I'm waiting to see them hit. Uh, once they go... We will look at the math of what that means. If Austria wins both of their games, I'm not saying that it's a surefire bet, but I like to play what ifs. If they win, mathematically, that might give them enough. We'll have to take, it's a long shot, but we'll have to take a look at what the math looks like once we get these standings updated. Yeah, I believe it would come down to tiebreakers. I could be wrong on that, but ah. if I am correct, it would come down to tiebreakers. I believe Canada will have around 16 points. Austria would have 10. They would have to win both in regulation, and it would come down to those tiebreaker rules. And just for a quick refresher, it comes down to head-to-head -head points, then goal difference. Head-to-head -head number of goal score, and then everything outside of that, that's when you really get into the crazy, wacky scenarios that you really don't <laughs> want to think about unless you get there. But nevertheless, here's what we do know. It's going to take a lot, but Austria could be in. But like you said, Nick, we do have some things that are locked in and ready to go. Here's what we do know. Finland versus Germany, which is going to be just a barn burner of a match next week to start off our quarterfinals number one. Quarterfinals number two to be decided. The first place, Group B. Is that going to be U.S. or Canada against second place, Switzerland from Group D? Then quarterfinals three, Czechia versus Latvia coming from the bottom, and now they're here. And quarterfinal number four will be the other seed against Sweden. That's the scariest match that I'm looking for as we refresh one more time phase two. There is our, hang on, our points. Here they are. This is what it looks like right now. So it is true. Canada, 16 points. Austria, 10. And keep something in mind. The U.S., they have two more games. I believe those are against Hungary, if I am correct. Yep, so One that... of those is a win. Yep. So the U.S. really with 17 points, which means that Austria cannot pass the United States regardless. The U.S., they are in and they are clinched. They have no more business to take care of in terms of getting in the playoffs. The big thing for the U.S. is the number one seed, and they are going to have to wait and see how that other result of that hungry game goes. They can get no more than 20 points. So Canada, with four to five points, can clinch number one. With any points whatsoever against Austria, they clinch a playoff spot. So for Canada, the job is simple. You get a point, you're in the playoffs. You get five points or more, you are the number one seed. So here we go. We will follow the action. We have three games to cover. We have both Canada games and the U.S. game. We will keep you abreast as this goes down. Here you're looking at CAD versus Taigama. We're watching Team Canada's feed. Just to keep you abreast of what's happening. Felix right now is up 1-0 against Regs in his matchup against Ooh. Regs. And then over on the other side, Cookie with Hungary is no score. As we see a goal there, CAD against Taigama. So you're right. U.S. knows they're going to get in. Will it be one or two seeds? Austria essentially just has to win both, and Canada is knocked out. Crazier things have happened. But the direct head-to-head, head-to-head -head, head -head points against Canada and Austria would see Austria win. This could happen. This could happen. Brandon. Wow. Austria knows what they have to do. <laughs> and the thing is, is that 
with this situation, you don't have to worry about your teammate necessarily. You're just focused on doing your job. Win the job ahead of you, and that's all you can do. You can't worry about the other games. You know if you win both, you're in. So for Taigama, for Felix, their job is simple. Win and end, but they have to do it against two of the best in the world in Cad and Regs. It would be a monumental upset, a monumental story. Can they finish the job as it looks like Cad trying to deny that the happening? Trying to deny that happening at the same time, Regs ties it up against Felix and Cookie down by one early in the first against Baldazar. This is crazy. Wow. And keep that in mind, the U.S., if they want the one seed, they do have to have that win. They have to have it. And Hungary is out. So that would be <laughs> spoiler of all spoilers if he were to finish that off. Dashen with the two centermen tied up. As I'll lower that there as we have uh, James Sabalski helping us out for a moment there. But 1-1 <laughs> one, one on the Regs Felix game. Something interesting to you. Kind of look at Felix for him, three time German champion on the Six Society. Started playing NHL in the 02 year, returned from 2022, collected six points for Austria in the group stage last year. And he's a guy that has experience, wasn't able to get into the playoffs, but he's trying to do his part to make sure they get in his regs almost with a beautiful move, dancing and twirling his way through the defense. But nevertheless, big save there in favor of Felix. And you know, Nick, Austria trying to make things interesting. It's funny, their other player in Ty Gamma, he's a newcomer to this tournament. He doesn't have any notable NHL successes at the big stage, but how about this? He used to play competitive 11v11 in FIFA for Austria. Was third place in the World Championship, fourth place in the European. Well, Cad's not going to let him get 11 goals, that's for sure. He's up by three now as we see Regs take the lead here. So none of this matters at the end of the day if, Canada wins one game, which they might do here. At least they have a chance to do so right here. The game we're going to want to watch is the U.S. game as well here with Cookie deciding what seed they go against. And like I said, I don't think either team wants to play against Sweden right now. Yeah, I'd have to agree with you. And that is no slight at all on Switzerland, who are a tough matchup in their own right. But Sweden, a team that really, really is on a mission. They were bounced out last year early against Latvia in the upset. They were bounced out in the final, and Ekin was on both of those teams. I don't think anyone is looking forward to playing Sweden. If you can avoid that matchup in the quarterfinal, you want to do so. And I think Regs would concur a third goal for him against Felix in a row. It's three to one there. And Nick, you mentioned it, that matchup between Benes, Boldazar, and Cookie. Now one to one, Cookie has some business to take care of here. Yeah, now that there's a two goal and three goal lead on the Canada-Austria games, we'll leave them there for right now at least while we're deciding what happens with the number one seed. If Canada wins both, it's a non sequitur anyway. They'll get 22 points. Uh, but right now, U.S. has to win theirs in order to even try for the one seed. So Austria could play spoiler still and not get in. Hungary could play spoiler and prevent U.S. from getting their one seed, but not if Cookie has something to do about it. Cookie rising to the occasion. That is a big goal. Right when you were just saying, can they play spoiler? Can Hungary play spoiler? Beres Boldazar gets one against him, but here he goes on the counter. See what Boldazar can do representing Hungary quite well for his team. Only two goals, four in the entire group stage. So obviously he's got a third now, but there's Cookie with his own third in this game. And it's three to one. And all of a sudden, Cookie starting to turn up the heat a little bit here against Baroness Boldazar. And you know, Cookie's one of those players. He always is composed. He's always calm. He never gets too upset. He never gets too emotional when things are going his way. He is a very composed, level-headed player. You see that right here. Let that first goal go in. No worries at all. It's still early. Just continue to play his game. And he gets three unanswered to take that two-goal advantage. Yeah, Cookie is the closest, I think, to Eki in terms of Cool, calm, and collected. Maybe yeah. junior pens as well, but the U.S. style, the Canadian style, typically not that way. They will adjust their play styles to try new tactics. Very few players in the N.A. will just stick to the game plan. 
uh, for whatever good or bad that might be. Obviously, it's wor worked well for them on the grand stage, but Cookie, not one of the guys that will do that. He sticks to what he knows, and he just does it over and over again. It ends up working in the long run. We got 20 seconds here in the first period. And I think if this works out, we can show you at the conclusion of this period as a shot comes in there. <laughs> oh, man, that Ooh. was almost back in again. I mean, if there is a little more speed on that pup, it would have trickled in. Is Look at Nick. Great producer, great commentator, giving us the dual screen, the double box, both Austria versus Canada matchups. In Canada right now, they're in full control of their own destiny. They're in full control of both of these matchups. The PlayStation on your left side, the Xbox on your right. Cav, 4 nothing over Taigama on that left side matchup. And it's 6-1 to one on the right side as Cav said 4 nothing. No, 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 no. 5 nothing with that goal for the Canadians. And right now, Canada looking well on their way to coasting to that number one seed. Yeah, so the number one seed might be well in hand here unless something crazy happens. We've seen it, but like I don't know if that's going to happen with the Canadians here. And then TSC going for his 17th point. So, I mean, they're going to get that, but it's not going to matter because the U.S. is going to be second seed if these score lines hold. And regardless if uh, Hungary wins that game, it'll still be... Uh, number two seed because Canada wins both of theirs, giving them 22 points going undefeated in regulation. One overtime loss that loss against cookie versus regs. Not enough for us to get that one seed. So us, if this holds, will take on Sweden next week, uh, either Saturday or Sunday. Yeah, and if that is what happens, that's going to be a very, very interesting matchup because when you look at the comparisons, I'm, I'm pulling it up right now, you have Cookie on that Xbox side. Well, for the Sweden side, Xbox, Ekin, two of the top players in the world in NA and EU that would match up against one another. And then Antonio Manon going against Dodds, two guys that are quality, quality players, maybe a little bit underappreciated in their respective regions, going up and playing against one another. They both had success as well. That's exactly right. So we'll have to see what happens there. I mean, I'm looking at the score lines here. They are holding up 3-1 to one right now. Cookie over. Baldazar in the second. This is the games we're going to want to watch, though. So I'm leaving them up here just so we can keep an eye on the highlighted matchup. The one that matters, I think, most here is the result of this Canada matches. You see uh, Cad on the left for PlayStation. Regs on the right for Xbox. And, I mean, this is what it looks like. So let's talk about who Canada plays, right? So we, we go over to our standings and we look at the phase three and we see number one C group B is going to be up against Switzerland. So that matchup is also going to be interesting because Tron has been playing from behind this whole tournament and he stepped up and delivered in those circumstances. Yeah. And you know, this is going to be really interesting to watch with Canada as of now matched up to play Switzerland. And, you know, you've got a pair of clutch players, really, with Cad and Regs. They're two of the best in the world for a reason. And we saw that that was what the duo was going to be for the Canadian side. You just kind of sat there, smiled a little bit, and you're just like, that's scary. That's a scary thought for anyone going up against them. And remember, Canada, they've yet to win this tournament. So a lot on the line for them, a lot of pressure potentially after losing in the quarterfinals last year as two goals on both sides, one for Canada on the left side. Actually, both might have been. Yeah, I think both were for Austria, actually. So, yeah, two goals for Austria in succession. One on the left side for Taigama, one on the right for Felix, one to five. On the PlayStation matchup, two to seven on the right, and that makes it two to eight. Another goal for Regs over Felix, and a goal right after for Canada and Cad. So Austria and Canada back and forth in succession. Austria gets one with their two players, and then Canada gets another with theirs. How about that? As we look in to see both sides on your screen, and it's going to be very interesting. Like we mentioned, Switzerland getting it that two seed out of their group. Canada, as of now, if things were to stick, would go up against them. And kind of looking at Switzerland, they got in with the efforts of Tron defeating Ekin. 
in that final game yesterday, if you were with us. With his partner being Hofi, who's a newcomer in this tournament, but qualified this year, started playing at NHL 10, a guy that could definitely step up in the big moment. And that's going to be a lot of fun seeing an experienced guy in Tron, a newer guy in Hofi going against an ex two experienced players in regs and in cat on the Canada on the Canada side. Absolutely. And on the other side here, we're talking about, you know, matchups. Obviously, we know what US and Sweden's gonna look like here if this holds up. Six to one right now with five thirty to go in the second period between Cookie and Boldazar. So we kind of know wow this is gonna shape out at this point. Yeah, this is I don't want to say all but a formality, but we have a pretty good idea of where this is going to lead is it looks like a goal there on the left side for Ty Gama. A little bit of a little bit of insurance work there, trying to get himself another point. Not going to make a difference in the result of the table, but nevertheless, got to give a lot of credit to Austria making things interesting as they get a third goal. Hold on now. Three to six now to score. Maybe Cat letting off the gas pedal a little bit, but Ty Gama starting to rev up the engine. Yeah, starting to rev it up. Uh, that's why I'm cutting to the game directly. I mean, I'm not going to rule things out plenty of time left on the clock so whether that's cad taking the foot off the gas or just some momentum swinging the other way here we go and now we've got a little bit of a game and this is where the spoiler does come into play yeah we saw with martindale in the matchup previous to this with austria and ty gaba he was the victim of that unfortunately where martindale took it to overtime he was down by two ended up winning that game and that had a massive impact on the way this win is a chance there for Ty Gaba. Pad saved there from Thompson. And here comes Cat over at the left side trying to keep things at bay with a three-goal lead. And he'll extend that three-goal lead. Three to seven to score. Up by four. Cad cooking away here in the group stage. Yeah, so there's your insurance marker. Uh, you know, that that's that's the key factor right there is this one puts it to bed. As we are nearing five hours on air here, welcoming in everybody watching along. We'll run through the playoff situation once this all concludes. But right now, we do know, we happen to know what this is going to look like at the end. We'll go back to the, the dual box with Team Canada down there. As you see here, three to seven, four to nine from Austria to Canada. Here we know now what this is going to be, Brandon. Yeah, we know exactly what this is going to be, and it's, it's going to be a lot of fun to see these group stages transfer over into the playoff rounds. This is another goal for Regs, and that puts him in double digits. It is 10-4 to four. Regs with plenty of time, too, to keep on pushing it, but we were just talking. Every single matchup going to be intriguing, and we'll show those matchups as Regs off the faceoff goes through everyone right side of your screen. Puts it home. It's 11 to 4. I mean, the Canadians making an absolute statement. They knew what they had to do. They just needed one point. They're going to collect all six and do it in style. Yeah, I mean, why not, right? Score the goals of plenty. Don't make a mistake about it. Show why you belong here. And meanwhile, I got to I mean, at least I got to show this too. We're talking about emphatic statements all weekend long. Here's Cookie 8 to 2 against Boldazar right now. Boy, and the think, I mean, one to nothing in favor of Boldazar feels so long ago. You have to feel for him with just an unfortunate way for this to go. Not able to collect any points so far in the group stage. Hungary, a team that has shown some promise throughout the stages, especially with Boldazar, but unfortunately just not in the cards for him. And you have to give him a lot of credit, a guy that really has represented his country well. Coming out of Group B, so yeah, maybe he, not the result that you would want, but he represented them last year, representing them again this year. Still a lot for him to be proud of. Yeah, and I think that's what we need to talk about. Last year at the end of the group stage and at the end of the quarterfinals, every single player we talked to, the number one thing they said was, regardless of the result, how proud they were to represent their country on an international level. This is the only event where you really do that. Every other event, you're working with players that are of all nationalities and types, as we have a Penalty shot here. I'll let you have this call. Yeah, big penalty shot chance here for Cookie trying to extend that lead a little bit further. It'll be Dylan Cousins to have it. As we get ready, can Cookie extend his lead further? It was not confirmed on the last time we saw from him. 
Big play for him. Backhand. He scores just back and forth, back and forth. Got Boldazar to slide a little bit to his left, and Cookie puts it to a 9-2 advantage in the third period. Just dominant display after that one nothing deficit early. Yeah, so as we were saying, you know, representing their countries is, is a number one priority for them on this level. It's the only tournament you can do that in. So uh, I, I know you've talked to some of these players as well. It's like, that's the number one thing they like. They like being able to put on their team jerseys or at least their team logos, play for their country, step up in a big way, and show the world that hockey is across the globe. It's not just a Canadian sport or a Finnish sport. It is a global sport. And that's none truer than we see teams like Ukraine and Italy bringing a team out, fielding a team, and representing their country. Yeah, and I mean, that's so perfectly put. And I think the thing, too, that you really have to remember is not only is it for the players, but there's pride from the fans. They love to see their country represented. They love to see players representing their country, putting them in that spotlight, putting them in that position to compete and be on the big stage. And, you know, we've seen that from a few countries and we saw Latvia, they had a massive turnout last. We saw Sweden with a big turnout, Finland with a massive turnout. Uh, Ukraine had a nice base earlier today when they had that run. I mean, all of these different countries that you typically would not always talk about are being known, are getting that attention, are being represented. And not only do the players get to represent their countries and they love it, but all of the people in those countries galvanize and support around that. And just the mystique around that event, it just makes it so much different than everything else. There's nothing else like this tournament. It's why it's so, so fun to call, so, so fun to watch, and so, so fun to be a part of. As we see the end here, and thank you for all for sticking with us through this tournament. We'll see the end of the regs match up here, 14 to 5. My goodness. As he I was going to say, during that entire spiel, he just put up two touchdowns like that. Yeah, just, he just, that's what regs that does. That's regs. <laughs> uh, and, and Felix, as try as he may, falls just short. Austria falls just Ooh. short of the playoffs phase for this tournament. We'll get you back over to Top Shelf Cookie with Boldazar getting back on the scoreboard again. Hey, see, there we go. You're not going to give up, man. I know there's no playoff implications for this, but Bolazar, give him a lot of credit. Putting in three goals, getting that one late against one of, like we said, the best players in the world in Cookie. This is a guy that won the NHL GWC in 2019. He's always one of the last guys in that tournament more times than not. It's rare where he's not in that conversation. So this is never an easy matchup. I know that score says one thing, but Bolazar doing a good job keeping it in Still playing hard, trying to put pucks in the net. Got to respect it. Much love to him representing Hungary very, very well so far. Absolutely. And hats off to everybody who represented their nations in this weekend. Yeah. This has been a crazy weekend full of ups, downs, heartbreak, heartache, and elation for lots of different teams. And, you know, I can't be prouder of the 30-some-odd you know, different players that showed up. And some knew that they were going to get a really tough hand dealt to them and they still play their hearts out to represent their country. And I mean, that's a perfect thing to say because look no further than this group in Group B. I mean, you have the U.S. and Canada in the same group, and only two teams out of five can make the playoffs. Both of those teams in any other group would probably be the favorites to finish first. That is a really tough hand to be given, and yet every team in this group, Great Britain, Austria, and Hungary, still went out, competed well, Austria especially giving a good fight, and then you saw Great Britain spoiling the party for Austria when they had a chance to maybe get into the playoffs with that win from Martindale. And then you see Boldazar coming in, having the lead versus Cookie, making things a little bit difficult, a little bit scary. Obviously, Cookie coming up and rising to the occasion. But all of these teams, despite the tough position, and I'm sure that there's probably a lot of people that probably looked at this group and said, okay, U.S. and Canada, they're going to get in. They're the two best teams in the tournament. They happen to be in the same group. It's tough luck, but it is what it is. But... It was earned for them. Austria, they put themselves in a position. Great Britain had a little bit of a... I think you're right. I think ultimately you're right. And I think that's what it comes down to, is the ability to fight back when you know you need to and make a stand for yourself. And I think that's what ultimately is the best, the best thing. 
he would like to see in the table, but every single team fighting hard and bowl is a really tough situation, a really tough group, and you cannot commend them enough for their work on that. I want to thank Bloody LP for the raid. Thank you. I hope your German stream went well. I know you're ecstatic, and you have a first uh, quarterfinals matchup against Finland uh, right around the corner next week for you. So looking forward to that and how that's going to shape out as top shelf cookie goes top shelf once more and brings his team U.S. in firmly into that number two seed to take on Sweden. That's also going to be a heater of a matchup come next week. Yeah, we have a few really strong quarterfinals matchups. I don't really think there's one matchup that you can certainly decide the winner to say, yep, that team is winning, and there's no question about it. Every matchup, very even, very well balanced. And I think that you could say that the teams that got in are all very well deserving. And there are some teams that were just a little bit on the outside looking in that if this were a bigger playoff format, definitely could think about that. I mean, you look at Denmark earlier, you think about Slovakia yesterday just coming up short. There's a few teams, I think, that were definitely playoff caliber teams. It just were a little bit short. Only eight teams can get in. But nevertheless, we have four really good matchups on tap next week for the quarterfinals. I am ecstatic for it. Saturday and Sunday. Do not miss out. Be right here. We'll have some featured matchups. We'll have some great games. Aggregate goals go into effect. Talk a little bit about that here, Brandon, while we conclude this game on screen. Aggregate goals do go into effect, as you mentioned, Nick, which means that it's not just about the wins and losses. It is about the goals scored and the goals against. That is the key in the aggregate scoreline. So whatever the combined score is for the two players in their matchups, say it's U.S. versus Sweden, for example, the U.S. gets 10, Sweden gets 11, Sweden moves on via aggregate, even if the U.S. won a game 8 to nothing. So it just goes to show you it has that teamwork element. And that was a question that we had in our chat a couple of times, like, well, why are they not doing 2v2? Why is it just 1v1 and two different matchups? There is still that team element once you hit into that playoff stage because it's about the combined score. It's not just about the wins and losses. The aggregate, ever so important. We saw that no better example than our playoff series last year with multiple of them going into that overtime period. The aggregate is so important. The teamwork is so important. Both players have to pitch in. One cannot just carry the other. You have to have that dual contribution in order to succeed, move on, and potentially win this tournament. And what I think that happens, or that doesn't happen, that needs to happen often, we talked about it just a little bit last year. I want to get your thoughts on this as we uh, get the new standings in. We'll go over the group in just a moment. But, you know, we have aggregates. So when you're in that third game and you know you have a fourth game coming up and you're, say, down by two, but you're up by two in your game, I pull the goalie. That's when you got to get yeah. those extra goals because you're actually only in the third quarter of your full game. And we saw twice last year, Brandon, teams not do that when they needed to. And that goal came back to bite them. Yeah, and you know, it's pretty interesting because like we said, we saw twice. Remember last year, we talked about Sweden versus Latvia. Remember this, Latvia led and it was the last game. I believe it was Chibra versus Sebi Larsson. And Sebi Larsson got a goal to push it to overtime. He was down by one in the aggregate, and he had to win that overtime in order to tie it up. He ended up winning, and guess what? He tied it up by pulling the goalie. That is how he did it, if I recall correctly. And it just goes to show you that there is a lot different of a strategy within those group stages. Not only that, but... This isn't a situation where you can really play your own game as much. You kind of have to have that communication with your teammate saying, hey, what's going on in your game? What am I looking at situationally? You kind of have to have that communication. I remember last year in the final between Finland and U.S., yeah. Eki said that him and Vatu were in a Discord call saying, hey, I just scored. This is the time that you need to just keep it at where it's at and not allow a goal. Communication and teamwork becomes a factor in the playoffs. There's no more important time for it. That strategy becomes a factor with the team selection becomes a factor with the aggregate and this is where things get really really fun and it's like last year really really crazy and really really chaotic but it is so entertaining to watch i promise you you are not going to miss next week saturday and sunday you want to be right back here right back on youtube watching this stream do not miss it i promise you it is going to be an absolute dandy as we take a look at the standings one more time the official standings are in Canada and the U.S. move on to Phase 3 
Canada's got their matchup. Sweden, uh, U.S. has got their matchup. Sweden and Switzerland are waiting for them. And all this goes down Saturday and Sunday next week at 12 Eastern. You're not going to want to miss out. Uh, I'm looking forward to all of these, Brandon. I am too. I mean, every single playoff matchup that we have for the quarterfinals, like I said, you could flip a coin, pick one team as heads and our teams as tails, whatever side of the coin it lands on, you could pick them. And I think you'd have a really good chance to be right. All eight of these teams are so, so deserving. And like I said, there's teams left out that were deserving to make it, but just there's only so many spots available. But every single one of these eight earned their place. They deserve to be here. And now they have at least earned themselves a chance to go and win it all for their country. The IIHF E-World Championship. We saw wild things happen last year. I think we're in a position to be set up to see wild things happen again. And the first matchup on your screen, Nick, I know that was one that really appealed to you. This could be one that has a little bit of that shock value potentially to it. This could be a goaded matchup happening. Some might say arguably way too early in the playoffs, but quarterfinals with everything on the line and Germany doing what Germany does. This could be one that could shock some people if they get hot at the right time. Yeah, and I mean, Germany, they're a team to where how many times have we seen them just find ways to get the job done, find ways to show up in the big moment and really surprise people. I mean, you look back at yesterday with that situation in their group. I mean, it was really, really tight. It was between them. It was between Slovakia. It was between Poland and Germany being where they were playing both Slovakia and Poland, and they had to win. Every single game, the way they did to get in, they got in by five points. They beat Slovakia in both of those games. They beat Poland in both of those games, got themselves in. They just seem to have a sense of the moment, and they excel in that moment. So I'm not calling the upset per se. Finland, a two-time champion for a reason, <laughs> but it's one to look out for. It definitely, definitely is one to where if Germany does win, don't be as surprised by it as you may want to be. Canada versus Switzerland in your quarterfinal number two matchup, Group B versus Group D. And everybody last year said, Canada's going to win. And they closed their minds off to everything. And they were disappointed and defeated early with that chess style team selection. The same could be said here. What team do you pick against Switzerland? And will that impact you later? Yeah, that's going to be really, really interesting to see how they do that. And if I recall, remember last year, Regs, when they lost to Czech, I believe he chose the Czech team to use in that matchup. And when they did the interview, it was Cam and Grizz on the call. Regs said, if I could go back, I would change that decision. So it goes to show you what does he maybe learn? How do him and Cad talk through that? They have a lot of chemistry talking with one another and agreeing on some of those decisions. It's going to be interesting to see what they decide because Switzerland, that is no easy matchup. I know Hofi kind of struggled a little bit in the group stage, but Tron, we saw him go out and beat Ekin and do it rather convincingly despite what the final score said. This is a matchup to where it's going to be very, very interesting to see how Canada handles it. Both of these teams lost in the quarterfinals last year. This is going to be really fun to see how it turns out. The question also is, with the team ratings being a little bit different this year, how do they play with that as well? Is there enough depth on some of these teams to go beyond maybe selecting U.S., Finland, and, and Canada as your three options, not particularly in that order? Moving down the line, your quarter three Quarterfinal number three matchup, Czechia and Latvia. Latvia coming from the bottom. Now we're here one more time. Can they make fire happen again for two years in a row? Or was Czechia's wind blast from yesterday simply going to carry over and smother this Latvian team? And we had just talked about two teams that lost in the quarterfinals last year. This is a match between two teams that lost in the semifinals. Latvia had that upset that you kind of mentioned earlier over Sweden. Czechia had the upset that you mentioned earlier over Canada. So two of the darlings of the tournament last year have a player from each side come back representing their country in Pepkasta and Chibra back again, making the playoffs. And now those two stories collide against one another. One of these two teams going to make their second straight semifinal. And I mean, we talked about Czechia. They got their way to the one seed. There really was not much competition for that one seed with anyone else there. But Latvia, all the way from zero group points in four games to taking that number two spot. This team, that country, 
in this tournament every year just seems to have a certain magic around them. We're going to see that against a Czechia team that had a very similar element. This might be the most intriguing matchup of all of them, but the next one after this could be very well the most even and the most anticipated. The eyes are on Chibra to do what I'm calling Chibra things now with the entire Latvian country on his back and supporting him and lifting him up. We'll see what he can do. And last but not least, this quarterfinal four matchup, Sweden first place group D with a lot to prove in vengeance versus two newcomers in the U.S. to represent those stars and stripes well in group B Dodds and TSE Cookie. You said it, and with the way that Group B shook out with both Canada and the U.S. being there, we said it, unless something crazy happens and one of the three teams between Austria, Hungary, and Great Britain steal one of those two spots, we're going to have a great match between Sweden and the winner, or the loser, rather, of that number one seed. The U.S., just a little bit outside of that, they get the two seed, and you said it, Nick, we have a Goliath of a matchup. Antonio Manon and Dodds, two guys that I feel like are underrated in the community, matching up against one and then two players that are the best in the world in Ekin and Cookie, a GWC champion versus a guy in Ekin that every year is in that same conversation. It does not get much more high profile, not much more elite than what you see in this matchup. I cannot wait to call it. It is going to be absolutely fun. And like we said, just missing out last year was Ekin, and he just missed out the year before. Now, could this be the year that he and Sweden finally break through? It's going to be a lot of fun to see. So we're going to leave it there. The answers in the group phase are done. We want to thank our sponsors, Skoda and Strauss, for this amazing group stage. The last two days have been amazing this weekend in this 2023 IIHF E-World Championship next week. Playoffs, phase number three, the quarterfinals are afoot. All from the teams we had in the pool that we want to thank for their participation in this group phase. Now down to just eight. Two components, two opponents, two games each. Aggregate goals count. 12 phases of one full game to determine who moves on to the semifinals and finals the week after. We will have all that action for you right here at 12 p.m. Eastern time on next Saturday. Do not miss out. Find us all over the web. On behalf of myself, Nick DeMeo, F5 Penguin, and Brandon Bigsby, B Major, and everybody working offline and in the production team, I want to thank you all for watching an amazing coverage of these games. We'll be back next week. Who will become champion? We get one step closer in just six days. Good night, everyone. We'll see you next week.